Chapter 1, A Mysterious Arrival East Blue At midnight, 15 meters under the water, suddenly, a portal opened, and a man emerged from it. Since the portal was inside the water, the man woke up with a jolt. What hashtag dollar hashtag asterisk he clutched his neck because he couldn't breathe. After somehow getting his bearings, he thought, what the hell is going on? Is this a dream or a prank? Why the hell am I in the water? Shit. I don't even know how to swim. Am I going to die without even knowing how I got into this situation? He started panicking, which resulted in him losing more oxygen. No. I refuse to die like this. All of a sudden, his body was overlapped by some kind of aura, and he started ascending towards the surface at a 45 degree angle. Coincidentally, once he got out of the water, he flew up to 20 meters and started coming down towards a building. Shit. I am losing consciousness. Boom. And he crashed through the wooden ceiling of the building. What's going on? Are the pirates attacking us? Yelled a robust man. Stop yelling like a child, Patty, said a young man after kicking the robust one. Oi Sanji. Do you want a fight? Said an angered Patty. No. But are you itching for a beating? Said Sanji. Stop it, you shitheads, said a man. He was very robust and had a big breaded mustache, and one of his legs had a wooden stump from his knee downwards. Yes, Shep Zef, said Patty. But Sanji remained silent. Shep Zef stared briefly at Sanji, then proceeded. Can't you guys see there's an unconscious person lying in front of you? He looked towards Sanji and said, Sanji, go and check if he is breathing or not. TCH, Sanji clicked his tongue but proceeded to check. You better be alive, you shitty bastard, so that I can beat the crap out of you for ruining my sleep. He put his fingers on his neck to check and sighed with relief. He is breathing, but we need to change his clothes because he is soaking wet or he might get sick. Someone bring the first aid kit. Let's see if he is injured somewhere. What? But Chef Zef, what if he is a criminal? We could get into trouble with the Marines, said Patty. Yes, chorused the others. I don't care if he is a criminal or not, but right now he is a man who needs help, and we are going to provide it. I won't allow him to die on my watch, said Zef. This made Sanji's expression soften up. But how did he end up here? Is there a ship outside? Asked Sanji. No, there's none, replied an unimportant character. Wait, he broke the ceiling with his fall. Then he flew here, or someone or something threw him, speculated Sanji. Are you saying a sea king spat him and he flew here? Shut up, all of you. What's important right now is saving his life. After that, you guys can speculate all you want, said Zef, looking towards Sanji. Okay. Take him to your room, change his clothes, and see if he has any injuries. Inform me when he wakes up, said Zef. What? Okay, everyone, let's go back to sleep because we have a long day tomorrow, said Zef before Sanji could go on. Okay, Chef Zef, replied everyone. Wait up, you old bastard. Why am I the one to take care of him? I will throw him over. You better believe that. Only a beautiful lady deserves to have that kind of privilege, but Zef and the rest ignored him and kept walking. Oi. Stop ignoring me, you bastards. But nobody cared. Fucking bastards, Sanji cursed. But he picked the man up. So heavy. What the hell is this man made of? He looked at the man. You better be grateful for tonight, you sleeping shit, said Sanji, dragging the man to his room. Next day. Hurry up, everyone. Customers will be here soon for breakfast. Damn. I couldn't sleep well last night. Yes, me too. Hey, you too, hurry up and set the tables. Yes. Inside Sanji's room, man who left the TV on? A man can't even get a peaceful sleep. The man woke up because of all the noises. He rubbed his eyes, stretched his arms, and started looking around. But he froze, and his eyes widened for a minute. This is not my room, he thought after looking around. That means it was real and not a nightmare, and this doesn't feel like my body either. Reincarnated. But I don't remember dying. Well, whatever, it's not like my life was great at all, he thought. This body does feel great, and I have great biceps, triceps, even ABS. One, two. Eight packs. Let's see what I look like, he started walking towards the mirror. Hmm. Where have I seen this face? He started thinking after seeing his face in the mirror. Arg. All of a sudden, his head started to hurt, and he started to experience some unknown memories. After a while, his head stopped hurting, and his eyes almost popped out. Sun Gohan. Comment. Nine comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 2, Portals, Sins, and a Broken Vase. Sun Gohan. He started backing up but collided with the study table, causing the flower vase to flip over and fall to the ground. Oh, shit. The vase shattered, and a bunch of red roses scattered around the floor. That came from Sanji's room, someone said. 
So our guest finally woke up, said Zef as Sanji raced towards his room. No way, he thought, and a few seconds later, no. A scream full of pain rang out. What have you done? Said Sanji in full anger. Wait. It was a mistake. I apologize. Please calm down. We should solve this like civilized people, said Gohan while dodging multiple kicks. Yes, we should, but first let me beat you up, said Sanji. Dude, why are you getting violent over just a vase? Was it a family heirloom or an antique? Asked Gohan. Who cares about that shitty vase? You ruined my beautiful roses. Yelled Sanji while crying. Those are just roses. You don't have to cry like this, said Gohan softly. Just roses. You ruined my today's stock. Now what will I do when a beautiful lady comes here? Cried Sanji. What if the love of my life comes here today? Said Sanji after he slumped to the ground. That's enough, Sanji. Go back to your work, said Zef, while Sanji looked aggrieved. Or do you not want to cook today? Zef continued. Sanji got up and started walking towards the kitchen, but he looked at Gohan and said, I will make you pay, you ungrateful bastard. He finally walked off. Zef sighed softly and said, You brat, get ready and go eat your breakfast. We will have a talk after breakfast hours are over. Yes, said Gohan. After Zef left, Gohan started frowning. That was Sanji. Then that big old man should be Zef, he started smiling. One piece. This is great. That means goodbye to a boring life and hello to a life of excitement and adventure. So many islands, great scenery, so many species. It's gonna be so much fun. The more he thinks, the more excited he becomes. But after calming down, he thought, there are many dangers as well. Strong pirates, marines, and the world government. He started frowning again. But according to my memories, I am currently in 18-year-old Gohan's body. Then, that should be around the Majin Buu Saga timeline, he thought. He started concentrating. As I thought, I can transform into Super Saiyan 2 but not further, he sighed. It would have been great if I could upgrade to that form. What was it called? Mystic Gohan or something. It was a cool transformation. Hey. What's your name? Asked Sanji. It's. It's Gohan. Gohan. Sanji said, looking for more. Yes, Gohan. Just Gohan, replied Gohan while smiling. Okay. Stop daydreaming and go have your breakfast. I am not coming to remind you again, said Sanji while walking away. Yes, said Gohan, still smiling, and started following Sanji. You are Sanji, right? Look, I am sorry about the earlier incident. I will compensate you somehow, said Gohan. No need. Just stay away from me, and why are you following me? Asked Sanji irritably. But I don't know where to go for breakfast. You have to show me, said smiling Gohan. Tsk, okay, follow me and stop smiling. Yes, replied Gohan, while his smile got bigger. After a while, breakfast hour ended, and Gohan was called to a big room that looked like a restroom. Zef was already there. Sit down, brat. I heard your name is Gohan, said Zef. Yes, replied Gohan while sitting down. I don't care what your name is because to me, a brat is a brat, said Zef. Yes sir. Replied Gohan while smiling nervously. It's Chef Zef, not sir. We are not marines, scolded Zef. Okay, let's get to the point. How did you end up here in the middle of the night, even though you fell from a height that broke the ceiling and dropped to the floor? But miraculously, you didn't even get a scratch. How? Asked Zef, which everyone wanted to know. Well. Gohan started hesitating while looking around. Zef got the clue and said, Okay, everyone except Sanji and Patty, get out. Yes, Chef Zef, said everyone, even though they were disappointed. After everyone left, Zef looked towards Gohan for him to start talking. Well, I am an alien, said Gohan. Alien? Asked Sanji, but Zef indicated for Gohan to continue. It means I am not from this planet, or I should say, this world. I am from a planet called Vegeta. And how did I get here? I got here through a portal. Before you ask what a portal is, it's a technology that enables a person to travel very long distances in a short time, he stopped to breathe. I am from a race called Sien. We are known as great fighters and we become very powerful. For example, my father became as strong as gods. Gods. Yelled Patty and Zef and Sanji started frowning, thinking if they should believe him or not. Gohan continued, our planet was about to explode, so we started to evacuate, but something went wrong and everyone got separated. I ended up here. I don't know where everyone else is, if they are alive or not, said Gohan, trying to look sad. And for your last question, I'm strong enough that a fall like last night can never hurt me, said Gohan while smiling again. Comment. 10 comments. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 3, Cooking up trouble, Gohan vs. 
Sanji's fiery showdown. After Gohan finished his explanation, Zef had a look on his face that said, Do you expect me to believe that? But he sighed and said, Okay, so you don't have anywhere to go then. Gohan thought speechlessly, Is that all you want to say? But he answered, Yes. If you want to live here, you have to work. This is not the place for freeloaders, said Zef, but Sanji and Patty quickly interjected. What are you saying, old man? Do you believe that? said Sanji. It was full of it, said Patty. Hey, I was telling the truth. Gohan thought, well, some of it was untrue. Shut up. Shouted both Sanji and Patty. Chef Zef, we cannot allow him to live here. What if his goal is to get our secret recipes? Said Patty. Shut up, you two. This is my restaurant, and I will decide who's going to live here or not, said Zef sternly. Can you cook or cut ingredients? But before you answer, think properly because both of these jobs are very important. So you have to be of a certain standard to get my approval, asked Zef. I have a different proposal. I can work as a manager and server. I am very good at talking respectfully, I am smart, I am sophisticated, I am very well-mannered, and most importantly, I am handsome, said Gohan while smiling. What a narcissist, said Patty. Yes, approved Sanji. But they stopped talking when Zef looked towards them. Well, I am not lying. Shishi was very strict with Gohan regarding his education, and he was smart and always well-mannered in the anime series. And I am also very strong, so I can take care of troublemakers for you and protect this restaurant, he said full of confidence. We don't need a smart aleck for our restaurant, and we are strong enough to protect it, said Sanji irritably. But I observed during breakfast hours, many guys here like cussing and are foul-mouthed, said Gohan. You have to think about your reputation. There should be lots of children and women who come here to eat every day, right? Asked Gohan. Yes, replied Sanji. What if they stop coming here because of the behavior of some foul-mouthed people? Beautiful ladies don't like foul-mouthed guys, he said, the last part while looking towards Sanji. Come on, take the bait, anticipated Gohan. Sanji's face started to contort as he said, so that's why there are so few beautiful ladies coming here every day. Because you guys are driving them away with your behavior. Shut it. You're not a gentleman either, Brad, said Zeff. I can see you're well-mannered, but are you strong enough to say that you can protect my restaurant? Well, we can test you for that. Sanji, go spar with him and don't hold back, said Zeff. Huh. Are you sure, old man? Are you sure about it too? Asked Sanji to Gohan. Yes, and please give it your all. I want to see how strong people from this world are, said Gohan with a smile on his face. Okay, let's go somewhere spacious, said Zeff. Don't you think it's taking too long? Said someone. Yes, another replied. After getting kicked out of the room, everyone was waiting outside to hear about the result of the interrogation. Then the door of the room opened, and as everyone looked towards the door, Zeff, Sanji, Patty, and Gohan walked out. Hey Patty, what happened? Did this guy tell me who he is? Did he fall from the sky? Is he a criminal? Is he single? He he he, just kidding, nobody asked that, they joked. But before Patty could say anything, Zeff instructed, you guys, put these tables and chairs to the side and make some space. Why, Chef Zeff? Someone asked. Because these two brats are going to have a sparring session, replied Zeff. Okay, now stop asking questions and get the job done. Yes, Chef Zeff, replied everyone as they started putting tables and chairs to the side. Okay, you two, remember this is just a spar, not a fight to the death. When I say stop, that means the fight is over. Don't get injured too badly because I'm not paying for the medical bills. Do you get it? Asked Zeff. Yes, replied Gohan, while Sanji put a cigarette in his mouth and was about to light it up. But Gohan said, hey. You should quit smoking because it's a big no for beautiful women. A lot of ladies hate smokers, he said teasingly to Sanji. I am not some chain smoker, you bastard. I only smoke when I have to fight, said Sanji, full of anger. That means you love smoking so much that you can't even stop when you are fighting. Not a chain smoker, said Gohan, this time sarcastically. You bastard. Said Sanji, throwing the cigarette away. I am going to beat the crap out of you, said Sanji, kicking towards Gohan. Oh. You kick well. Did Chef Zeff teach you? Said Gohan, dodging Sanji's every kick narrowly but with ease, which resulted in Sanji getting angrier and faster. Good, good. That's it? Keep going. That one was close enough to brush against my clothes. But Sanji stopped his barrage of kicks and backed off. Hey. Why did you stop? You were so close to getting a hit on me, said Gohan, smiling. Hearing that, Sanji lowered his head and started trembling in anger. He erupted, you bastard. Stop dodging and fight like a man, said Sanji angrily. 
What do you mean by I am not fighting like a man? You should think before saying this kind of thing. What if you offend those women who are looked down upon by men? Comments like this can make you remain single for your whole life, said Gohan, looking like he was lecturing him. Everyone started to laugh at that, and that was it for Sanji. He started going berserk. I am going to kill you. It's you or me now. I didn't know I could make someone this mad just by talking, thought Gohan, while dodging the onslaught of Sanji. On the contrary to Sanji, Gohan was having the time of his life. Oh, his leg is starting to smoke. Is he going to hit me with that move? Waku Waku, shout out to Anya Chan, dot. As expected, Sanji raised his right leg, and his boot started burning. However, the fire didn't affect his pants or boot. He is burning and not burning at the same time, thought Gohan. That's it for you. Burning shot. Called out Sanji. So it's not that move. Well, let's see how strong this attack is, thought Gohan as he prepared to catch the attack. Sanji kicked his head, but Gohan caught Sanji's leg with one hand. The wind started to blow fiercely because of the shock waves of the attack. After the wind slowed down, there was pin drop silence in the hall. Everyone was gaping at the sight before them. Smoke was coming out of Sanji's leg, which was in the grip of Gohan's hand. He caught my attack like it was nothing. How strong is this guy, thought Sanji. Well, it didn't feel strong or hot at all. Is it because I am too strong, thought Gohan, feeling a bit disappointed. Sanji looked at Gohan's face and started attacking again. What's with that look, huh? You arrogant jerk, said Sanji, continuing the attacks. Okay. That's it. Stop. The spar is over. I have seen enough, said Zeff. But Sanji didn't stop attacking. Didn't you hear me, you brat? This time, Zeff's voice came from right beside Sanji. His expression changed. Shoot, thought Sanji. It is at this moment he knew he messed up. Bam. Sanji flew towards the entrance from Zeff's kick and stopped before the entrance door. When I said the spar is over, that means it's over, said Zeff. Oh. The old man Zeff is pretty fast and strong, thought Gohan, and started to smile again. Comment. Four comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 4, Selling Organs to Pay the Bill. After taking care of Sanji, Zef looked at Gohan and said, You are hired. Your uniform will be given to you shortly. As for your sleeping arrangements, there's a room that has been unused for a while, but you have to clean it up yourself. Are you okay with that? No problem, Chef Zef, said Gohan, but he continued, but I will only be working until I can pay for the damage and save some money, said Gohan. Hmm. Temporary worker? Why? Asked Zef. Well, I want to see this world. I want to be an adventurer. I want to go to new places, meet new people, make friends, and enjoy new cuisines. I am so excited to even talk about it, said Gohan. And I want to beat up some guys, he thought. Hearing that, Zef looked towards Sanji. Coincidentally, Sanji was also looking at him, but Sanji looked away and walked off. Stubborn brat, muttered Zef and sighed. Oh yes, do you have books and maps about the places in this world? Can I borrow them, please? This can be a great excuse for me to be knowledgeable about this world, thought Gohan. I have some in my room. I will give them to you after the lunch hours. But remember, this brat, realizing your dream is as difficult as becoming a pirate king. And before you ask what a pirate king is, you will know when you read those books that I will give you, warned Zef. And you will have to work here for a long time to save money for a ship that could help you sail on those chaotic waters, said Zef. You don't have to worry, Chef Zef. I am a very lucky guy. I have a feeling I might not be working here for long, said Gohan while thinking, I hope. Zef didn't say anything else to him and looked towards a man. George, give him a uniform and menu and tell him about how things work here. Then he looked at Gohan. Let's see how smart you are, brat. You're starting today's lunch hours, and you better memorize every dish on the menu before that. If you mess up, I will put you on cleaning duty, said Zef as he walked away. Okay, newbie, first of all, there are some rules that you have to follow even in your sleep. Follow Chef Zef's every order without questioning, don't talk back to Chef Zef, don't mess up, and finally, anyone who comes in from that door, whether it is a marine, pirate, civilian, or any other being, is a customer that you have to serve. Do you get it? Asked George. Yes replied Gohan, smiling as he followed George to get his uniform and menu. After some time, Gohan stood at the entrance, dressed in a white shirt and white pants with black boots. What do you think, Sanji? Don't I look dashing? Gohan smilingly asked as Sanji walked out of the kitchen. Who cares? You narcissistic bastard, said Sanji as he walked out of the restaurant. He is such an easy target for teasing, thought Gohan. Now let's just hope that a beautiful girl walks in as my first customer, as he adjusted his collar. He didn't have to wait for long as his first customer, or I should say customers, walked in. 
there were three men with unkempt hair and ugly faces. After looking at them, Gohan's smiling face started twitching. Be professional, Gohan, be professional, he thought to himself as he approached them. Hello, sir. Welcome to the Baratai. Let me show you to your table, he said with a smile. Okay, young man. Take us to your best table. Look, that one beside the window, said the man in the front. One of his teeth was missing. Gohan took them to that table. Please look at the menu and tell me what you would like to have, he asked the one with the missing teeth, while the other two looked around nervously. Hmm. Are they here to cause trouble, thought Gohan after seeing those two. Bring this one and this one and this one. Missing teeth started ordering. Okay. Do you want to order anything else? Asked Sanji. No. We have to sail right after eating, so we cannot eat too much, said missing teeth. Cannot eat too much. After ordering enough food for ten people, thought Gohan but kept a smile on his face. After that, he conveyed the order to the chefs in the kitchen and started welcoming other customers as the restaurant started to get crowded. But after some time, a commotion broke out. Hey, you guys have to pay for the food, said George. But I already told you we don't have money, said Missing Teeth as George was starting to get angry. Is there any problem, George? Asked Gohan. They are refusing to pay after eating, said George. We are not refusing to pay, but it's just that we don't have money. If you want to, we can wash dishes or do any other chores to pay for the food. Said Missing Teeth innocently, thinking, even if you asked us to do that work, we will just mess things up intentionally and you will have to let us go. Okay, George, I will take care of this. You go and serve others, Gohan said. Okay, dear customers, please try to remember, you might have some money between you guys, asked Gohan. No, we are sure we don't have money, replied Missing Teeth smilingly. Gohan suddenly lifted him and asked again, now you might remember properly. What are you trying to do? Even if you beat us, we can't pay for the food. Of course, we have money which we have hidden in our underwear, but do you dare to strip us just for a little amount of money? And if you beat us, we will create a ruckus which will affect your other customers. You have no choice but to let us go, he thought as he started to laugh in his mind. So you want to play, huh? Then let's play. Gohan thought and started smiling devilishly. Seeing his smile, the trio started to get worried. Hey. Mr. Patty. Shouted Gohan. Why are you shouting, Gohan? Said Patty as he came out of the kitchen. These people here have eaten the food but have no money to pay for it, said Gohan. What? Asked Patty, getting angry as he marched towards them. Yes, but you don't have to worry because they desperately want to pay, right? Asked Gohan, looking towards the three. Yes, they replied innocently. See. They even want to sell their organs to pay for the food. So, do you know any doctor who can do the operation? Asked Gohan as the color drained from the faces of the three. Yes, I know a man who can do that. He is a regular and he should be coming soon for lunch, Patty played along. Really? That's great. Now you guys can finally pay for your food, said Gohan. Huh, only an idiot will fall for tricks like this, thought Missing Teeth. N O O O. We have money. We want to pay. Yes, we want to pay. Please let us go. Boohoo. Cried the other two, which left Missing Teeth dumbfounded. These morons, he thought angrily. But didn't you guys say you don't have money? You showed me your empty pockets, said Gohan. We lied. We hide our money inside our underwear. Yes. Here, please take it. They both started taking out money from their underwear. They even put their hands in Missing Teeth's underwear and took out his money. Hey. That's my money. Shouted Missing Teeth. Here's the money. This should be more than enough for the food. Please take it, as they held out their hands to give the money. Gohan looked at the money with disgust and said, Mr. Patty. As he looked around, but Patty wasn't there anymore. Bastard, thought Gohan, but suddenly he saw Sanji walking in. Sanji, can you take the money from this customer? As you can see, my hands are full, said Gohan as he started cleaning the table. Okay. Said Sanji as he took the money. Thank you. Thank you. They thanked him profusely and ran away. Weird bastards, said Sanji as he started to walk away, but Gohan said, remember to wash your hands, and those bills as well because those bastards took out that money from inside their underwear, said Gohan with an innocent smile. Sanji froze in his tracks and started trembling. I am going to kill you. Come back here, you bastard. Shouted Sanji as he started chasing Gohan. Shut up, Sanji. And go do your work, shouted Zef. Note, sorry if this chapter feels like a filler. But this one and the next chapter are to establish the character of Gohan so that you guys will know what kind of Gohan you are going to get in the future chapters. So please continue your support for this novel. I will try to upload one more chapter today. Comment. 9 comments. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 5, Rising Fury, 
Gohan's unleashed power. Nothing else happened during the lunch hours after that. After lunch hours ended, it was time for the long break before dinner. So, Gohan went to his room to find that Zef had already sent the books, along with some other things like maps of the Four Seas and the first part of the Grand Line. There were also some wanted posters, but they were not useful to him because they were for small-time pirates only. Well, I'll just read these books. Who knows, I might learn something useful because reading manga and anime cannot tell me everything about this world, thought Gohan as he started reading. But after one hour, he was irritated. Useless. Absolutely useless. These are nothing but books with fake history, which were spread by the world government. I didn't learn a single thing, he exclaimed. Let's see if anyone needs help, or I might as well go outside for some fresh air, he thought as he went out. Once he was outside, he saw that everyone was busy doing something. There were people cutting vegetables, washing ingredients, and cleaning the hall. Patty was supervising the people who were cleaning ingredients, Chef Zef himself supervising the cutting works, and George was supervising the cleaning work. As for Sanji, he was mixing spices in the kitchen. So Gohan asked him, are you working on a recipe? Sanji looked up but got back to his work without answering. I think I have angered him too much, but this could be bad because I like his cooking. That lobster he made for lunch was godly, Gohan thought. Hey. But before he could say anything to Sanji, Chef Zef's voice rang out. What are you doing here, brat? Asked Zef. I was hoping to help with the preparations, said Gohan with a smile. No. There is no need for that. Go out and have some fresh air and don't come before it's time for opening, ordered Zef. But. Are you trying to argue? Asked Zef, this time more sternly. No, Chef Zef. Shouted Gohan and gave a military salute before running away. Old man Zef is more like a marine than Garp, he thought as he was outside. He was admiring the scenery when he suddenly heard a voice. He looked around but didn't see anyone. Am I that bored that I am hearing things now? He thought. But he heard it again. Where is it coming from? It sounds like a child's. Stupid. I am a Sian now, of course. I will hear voices from a far distance, he thought as he looked towards the docking station. He saw a ship docked there. What is that ship doing? It's way too early for anyone to come for dinner. There's no flag either. Let's go have a look, he thought as he started walking towards it. While inside the restaurant's kitchen, here. Test this mixture, I think I finally perfected it, said Sanji smilingly to Zef. Zef took the spoon and tested the mixture. Hmm. This is pretty good. But he sighed. So much talent. But he is wasting it here, stupid brat. What is it? Did it not taste well? But it tastes perfect to me, asked Sanji when he sees Zef's sigh. Test perfect? What would a brat like you, who is a frog in the well, know about perfection? Said Zef, looking down on Sanji. What did you say? You old bastard. Do you think you can discourage me with your shitty behavior? I will make you say that I am a great chef no matter what. And I am not going anywhere until I prove it. Shouted Sanji as he marched out of the restaurant. Wait, Sanji, said George, but he didn't stop. Let him go. He will come back when it is time for work, said Zef. While outside at the ship, hurry up and tie her up and put more clothes in her mouth, said a fat man. But boss, what if she dies from suffocation? Said a man who has lackey written all over him. Just do as I say, or we will be dead if someone hears her. In a while, this place will be full of ships, then we will be able to fill our stomachs and get away from here. This girl is going to make us millionaires, said the boss in greed. Boss. Someone is coming towards us, said Lackey as he started panicking. Hmm. Don't panic, just put her with the potatoes and close the sack. Act normal and let me do the talking, said the boss man. Yes, replied Lackey. As Lackey put the girl in the sack, she thought desperately, Mommy, Daddy, somebody help. Hey. Who are you guys? And why are you here at this time of the day? Asked Gohan. I definitely heard a child's voice from this ship, and this fat guy had a child trafficker written all over him, he thought as he started climbing towards the deck. The fat man didn't panic and said, we are merchants and are going to South Blue to sell our potatoes. We were hungry, so we stopped here to eat, but it looks like we are too early, said the fat man as their stomachs started to growl. We couldn't stop anywhere because of fear of getting caught, they thought, but just then, someone's stomach growled loudly again. So, hungry, thought the little girl pitifully. Where did the sound come from? Is there anyone else on the ship? Asked Gohan as he grew more and more suspicious. No. There's only two of us. That sound came from his stomach, said the boss, looking towards Lackey. Do you guys think I can't hear properly? That sound came from those sacks behind you too. Let me see what's inside, said Gohan as he approached them. Please wait. There's only potatoes, nothing else, said the boss. No, I just saw that sack moving. There's definitely something in it, said Gohan as he came in front of the sack. 
Shit. There's only one option left, thought the boss as he raised a big stick over his head. It's just a mouse, let me just kill it. Just then, Sanji came out to see that scene. Huh? What the hell is this idiot doing there, getting into a fight? Well, with his talent for annoying people, it's obvious that he will get into fights, thought Sanji. But he started running towards the ship. I better stop this before it gets out of hand, he muttered. On the ship, just as the fat man was about to hit the sack, Gohan caught the stick. Didn't you hear what I said? Said Gohan, but this time with seriousness. He crushed the stick, and the crushed part of the stick turned into powder. Seeing that, both the boss and the lackey fell to their butts, and Gohan started to untie the sack. Is this stick fake? Thought the fat man while looking at the remaining part of the stick. He then hit his leg to test it out. Ouch. This is definitely real wood, he thought, then he started trembling. Is this guy a monster? No normal guy can do this kind of thing, thought the fat man as he was afraid for his life. Gohan untied the sack and opened it to see a small girl of 4 to 5 years old. She was tied up and had clothes stuffed in her mouth. She was crying and trembling in fear. Don't worry, I am here to save you, he said with a smile. The girl looked at his face and stopped trembling. She allowed herself to be carried by him as Gohan took out the clothes from her mouth and started to untie her. As he was untying her, he started looking at her injuries. There was a small bruise on her forehead, maybe because of the potato sack, and there was a handprint on her cheek. She was slapped. He was getting angrier by the second but he controlled himself. After he untied her, he asked, Are you alright? You don't have to worry. Big brother will take you to your mommy and daddy, okay? Hearing that, the girl started to tremble again, then she threw herself into his embrace and started crying, Wayahayaya. At the same time, Sanji reached the deck and called out, Oi Gohan, what are you? He stopped talking because suddenly the wind stopped blowing, the sea water became still, and the sky started to darken. Why is the sky getting darker? and there's no wind. How is this possible? Thought the bewildered Sanji. Gohan brought his trembling hands to embrace the girl, and his face started to contort from anger. Suddenly, everything around them started to tremble. The ship's deck began to crack. What's happening today? The sky is getting dark, there's no wind, and now an earthquake. Thought Sanji as he started to lose his balance. At the same time, everyone was panicking in the restaurant. Everyone, get under the tables. Said Zef to the workers in the restaurant. What kind of earthquake is this that even the sea is trembling? Thought Zef. Outside, everything was becoming more chaotic. Ki started to pour out from Gohan's body, and the trembling intensified. Potatoes started levitating and then burst into pieces. Water drops began to levitate, and small drops condensed into tennis ball-sized spheres. Sanji finally put two and two together. Gohan is doing this? But how? This shouldn't be possible. Wait. That means he was telling the truth about his father having the power to fight godly beings. Damn it, this is not the time for that. I have to stop him, or he will kill us all. While everyone feared for their lives, the small girl in Gohan's embrace stopped crying. Huh? It doesn't hurt anymore, and I feel warm and comfortable, she thought. Hey, Gohan. Snap out of it, or you will kill us all. Shouted Sanji, but his voice didn't reach Gohan. Sanji and the other two were holding onto the railing to prevent themselves from being blown away. What kind of monster have we provoked? Thought the fat man with tears streaming down his face. Comment. 7 Comments. Vote. 0 Left. Chapter 6, Throwing People to Their Death. What kind of monster have we offended? Thought the fat man as tears started to trickle down his face. We are going to die. We are going to die, Lackey started to mumble as if he had gone crazy. Shut up. Stop saying these kinds of things, scolded the fat man. There has to be some way to stop this crazy monster, said the fat man. He suddenly remembered something and looked towards Sanji. This guy knows this monster. He is our last hope, he thought. Hey you. Young man, can you please tell your friend to stop? He is putting so many lives at risk. Especially mine. He shouted towards Sanji. Shut up, you shitty bastard. Do you think I can't tell that this is happening because of you two? If you dare to open your mouth again, I will kill you both before Gohan can. Shouted Sanji, full of anger. Oi Gohan, don't you care about the people inside the restaurant? If you don't stop, everyone will die. Patty, George, even Chef Zeff. Stop it already. Shouted Sanji again, but Gohan didn't hear him. It was as if he had lost control over his power. The ship started trembling more violently as it started levitating. Multiple times more amount of ki gushed out from Gohan as his pupils started turning blue. Sanji's legs started to tremble because of the sheer amount of ki. Sanji finally sat down in despair, as he looked down and thought, is this it? Am I going to die like this? How would I repay the old man for his kindness? What about my sister? And what about my dream? 
What about all blue, thought Sanji as he waited for his death to come. Boom. Suddenly, lightning struck 20 meters away from them. The little girl in Gohan's embrace shouted and covered her ears. Triple A. A loud bang startled her, which got Gohan to snap out of his angry state. Key around him suddenly disappeared, trembling stopped, and everything that was levitating started dropping. The ship dropped down to the sea with everyone who was on it. Sanji started breathing hard, clearly, this ordeal was too much for him. The other men on the ship were in much worse condition, as they were still trembling non-stop, and both of them had already wet their pants. Shit, did I lose control? Of course, I would inherit Gohan's berserk mode with his body and memory, thought Gohan. But suddenly, he remembered that he was holding a small girl. Are you alright, little one? Are you her anywhere? He asked while inspecting her body. Mika is brave. Mika doesn't fear lightning, mumbled the little girl, almost pouting. Well, I was not asking about that. Anyway, she seems fine, so that's good. So, your name is Mika? He asked as he looked around himself. It seems like this ship has survived a terrible war, he thought as he looked at the devastating condition of the ship. Yes. Mika's name is Mika Cooper. Mika is four years old. Mika likes to eat tasty food, and Mika also likes to travel with mommy and daddy, even though they are idiots who get lost easily. But Mika loves them, said the little girl. Mika sure does like to talk, and you are the one who got kidnapped, so how come your mommy and daddy are the ones who are idiots, thought Gohan but kept smiling kindly. Suddenly, the keel of the ship broke into many pieces, and the ship started to go down. Time to get off, thought Gohan. Hold tightly, Mika. We are getting out of here, said Gohan as Mika nodded. Gohan disappeared and appeared beside Sanji, saying, Let's go, Sanji. He picked Sanji up like a sack and jumped down. I don't care anymore. I am too tired right now to beat you up, thought Sanji as he let himself be carried out. Hey. Please take us too. We can't move our bodies. We won't be able to swim. Please save us, said the fat man as he and Lackey were still trembling. Gohan jumped down on the wooden platform of the docking station and said, Hey, Sanji, hold her for a second, as he handed the girl over to him. Don't worry, I will be right back, he said to Mika as he disappeared. Mika looked at Sanji's face closely and said, Why did you make your eyebrows like that? They look so funny, uncle, said Mika, finally smiling. Uncle? Funny eyebrows. No, don't get angry. She is just a brat, thought Sanji as he let out a breath. He looked at Mika's smiling face and patted her head as he thought, You don't know, little girl, but you saved our lives today. Then Gohan appeared beside them. He wasn't alone, he was holding the fat man and the lackey by the back of their necks in each hand. Now that I think about it, how is she alive? I was holding her when I lost control. Some key must have gone inside her body, and there are no bruises on her face anymore, thought Gohan. According to Gohan's memory, a normal human will die immediately if that much key gets into their body, he thought as he looked towards her. Huh. Does she have key now? It's only a short amount, but she has it now. Did I do that? But how did her bruise disappear? Wait, everyone here has hacky. So did the hacky and key get combined and have a healing effect, thought Gohan, with a look of realization. I will think about it later, but let's take care of these guys first. Mika. Do you want to see some magic? Asked Gohan. Magic? Yes. Mika loves magic, said the excited Mika. Now, look closely. Big Brother is going to make these bad guys disappear into the sky, said Gohan, smiling. But to the two in his grasp, he looked like a demon. Mika got down from Sanji's hands and started looking without blinking her eyes. Okay, Mika. Count to three, said Gohan. Mika's eyes started to shine as she started counting excitedly. One. But to those two guys, she had become an angel of death, and her counting sounded like funeral bells. Two. Mika continued. And. Three. Mika jumped in excitement. Please be a good person in the next life, said Gohan as the faces of both men went white from fright. Way, a a a a a yelled the fat man as he was launched into the sky towards the ocean. N-O-O. Yelled the lackey as he was treated the same. Wow, they disappeared. Will they turn into stars? Asked Mika in anticipation. No. Only a good person can turn into a star. Bad people like them just disappear like that, replied Gohan. Then Mika will remain a good person and turn into a big star, said Mika and looked at Sanji. Curly brow uncle. You also have to become a good person to become a star, she lectured him. What? Curly brow. Sanji was about to reprimand her, but suddenly, her stomach gurgled. So, hungry, said Mika while grabbing her stomach. Comment. Three comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 7, Rescue, Reunion, and a Furry Friend. Gohan looked at Mika's pitiful face and said, Don't worry. Sanji is a great cook. 
he will make you something delicious, right, Sanji? He said while looking towards Sanji. Sanji looked annoyed but sighed after looking at Mika's hopeful eyes. He slowly got up and started walking towards the restaurant. Seeing that, Gohan smiled and picked up Mika, putting her on his shoulder, and started following Sanji. So Mika, how did you get kidnapped? Asked Gohan as Sanji slowed down to hear the reason. Mika was out to have lunch with mommy and daddy. After we ate, we were strolling around as Mika was holding their hands so that they wouldn't get lost. But Mika wanted to eat ice cream, so daddy bought it for Mika. But to eat ice cream, Mika had to let go of their hands, and after a short distance, both of them got lost. Mika called out to them, but it looked like they couldn't hear Mika's voice, said Mika. I have a bad feeling about this, thought Gohan. So, Mika decided to ask other people. But when Mika asked that bad, fat uncle about mommy and daddy, he blocked Mika's mouth with his hand and took Mika away, said Mika with a sad voice. They were such meanies, they didn't even give Mika anything to eat. It's good that big brother Gohan made them disappear, said Mika, this time happily. But Gohan was frowning. Mika. Do your parents get lost a lot? Asked Gohan, full of doubt. How did you know that? Big brother, you are such a good magician. You even know that without Mika ever telling you, said Mika with awe. Don't tell me. Sanji. Wait a moment. Said Gohan as he put Mika down and said, Mika, go follow Uncle Sanji as he walks, okay? I am not an uncle, you bastard. Yelled Sanji. You shouldn't say bad words in front of the children, uncle. What if Mika becomes a bad person because of you? Said Mika. What? Sanji started taking deep breaths to calm himself. Listen, Mika, you should call me big brother Sanji, not uncle, okay? Said Sanji. Really? She asked doubtfully as she looked towards Gohan. Yes, yes, after all, we are both the same age, said Gohan. Really? Okay then. But big brother Gohan, why do I have to follow this big brother curly brow? Asked Mika. It's big brother Sanji, not big brother curly brow, said Sanji, getting irritated with the situation. We can decide that later, Sanji, but this is more important, said Gohan. And Mika, if you follow big brother Sanji for a short distance, he will give you an ice cream later, said Gohan. Really? Asked Mika, looking at Sanji. Sanji's face started twitching, and he looked at Gohan's face. But looking at Gohan's serious expression, he eventually nodded. Yay. Ice cream, ice cream. Mika started jumping with joy. Okay. Let's start, said Gohan as Sanji started walking. Gohan then signaled Mika to follow Sanji. For the first seven to eight steps, Mika walked behind Sanji properly, but she suddenly turned left and started walking away. After four steps, she stopped and said, Hmm. Where did Big Brother Curly Brow go? Don't worry, Big Brother already found him, said Gohan, as Sanji stood beside him, looking at Mika and thought speechlessly, How can someone get lost so easily? How can someone get lost so easily? Said Mika, giving Sanji a look of disappointment. So she is the same as Zoro, well, that explains everything, thought Gohan. Do you know the address of your home? Did your mommy and daddy tell you what to do when you get lost? Asked Gohan. Yes, mommy made Mika remember what to do when she gets lost every day. But Mika never gets lost, she said, raising her head high and spoke with pride. Now, even Gohan's face was twitching, hearing all that. So, what did she make you remember? He said, finally seeing hope. She said, if Mika gets lost, Mika should find marine uncles or aunties and then give them her pendant, said Mika, expecting to get praised for remembering so many things. Gohan patted her head and said, can you show that pendant to big brother? Mika hesitated but showed him the pendant. Gohan bent down to have a closer look. It was a heart-shaped pendant with her name written on the front. Gohan looked at the back of the pendant, and there was an address engraved on it. Sanji, take a look at this, said Gohan as Sanji came close and looked at the address. This island is not far from here. I will tell someone to contact the marine branch of that island, said Sanji. That's awesome. Did you hear that, Mika? You will be able to go home very soon, said Gohan as he raised Mika. Yay! Yelled Mika in excitement, but she suddenly stopped and asked worriedly, What about mommy and daddy? Will the marines help Mika find them? She asked worriedly. Gohan smiled, put her on his shoulder, and said, They will. If they didn't, then big brother will help you. Really? Thank you, big brother. You are the best. Said Mika, full of happiness. Okay. Let's go and eat while we wait for the marines, said Gohan as they started walking towards the restaurant. When they walked inside, they saw that everyone was cleaning the broken glasses and arranging tables and chairs. Is everyone okay? Asked worried Sanji. Patty looked towards them. Everyone is shaken from the incident, but nobody is hurt, fortunately, said Patty. Who is that little girl? Asked Zeph as he came out, 
hearing their voices. Mika is not a little girl. Mika is a big girl, said Mika as she straightened up to look bigger. Oh. Then what are you doing here, big girl? Asked Zef, looking at Mika. Mika was looking for mommy and daddy, but two bad guys kidnapped Mika. However, big brother saved Mika and made the bad guys disappear with magic, replied Mika while comically waving her hands. Zef looked at Gohan and Sanji to see if the girl was telling the truth or not. They both nodded in agreement. Okay. But we three are going to talk after closing time about that weird earthquake, said Zef in a low voice so that only the two of them could hear. But before they could reply, Mika's stomach rumbled. Okay. Go cook something for her first. Can't let a kid starve here, said Zef. Sanji, that address. Reminded Gohan. Sanji took Zef to the side and explained the situation. After hearing him, Zef called over George and said something to him as George left the hall in a hurry. Then Sanji started walking towards the kitchen. Don't forget the ice cream, reminded Mika. After a while, Sanji cooked a three-course meal for Mika, and she started eating quickly. Don't eat too quickly or you will get choked up, reminded Gohan. But Miwa Don Don't talk while there's food in your mouth, said Gohan as he wiped the food from her face with his handkerchief. George came back and said, Chef Zef, I have contacted the Marines, and they were already on the way here. Someone was suspicious of the two who kidnapped her because they saw the potato sack moving, and the two were acting weird. They will be here anytime, he said. Oh yes. And her parents are also with them, said George. Really? Mommy and Daddy are also coming. Said Mika with a pleasant surprise. Okay. Eat your food first, then you will be able to go home with your parents, said Gohan while patting her head. After she was done eating, Gohan asked her, Mika, when Big Brother was holding you on the ship, did you feel anything weird in your body? Mika started thinking and said, Mika remembers that it stopped hurting, and Mika started feeling warm. Do you still feel it? Close your eyes and try to feel. Said Gohan as Mika closed her eyes to feel. Yes. Mika can feel that warm thingy in her tummy, and it's moving like this, said Mika as she raised her index finger and started moving it in a circular motion. Mika, try to move it faster, he said. Mika complied. After a while, she said, Big brother, it got bigger, said Mika. People of the One Piece world sure are lucky. What would take a full day for a normal human, they could achieve it in a few minutes, thought Gohan. From now on, do this every day, and you will never get hurt, said Gohan. Really? Thank you, big brother, said Mika. As they were talking, suddenly some marine soldiers rushed in, and a man and woman came in after them. The man was wearing a marine uniform with a marine jacket and a cap. A marine captain? Just to take a small girl to her home, thought Gohan. As for the woman, she was beautiful but looked tired and worried as she looked around for something. Mika suddenly started running towards them and called out, Mommy. Daddy. The marine captain picked her up as the couple called out, Mika. He gave her to the woman as she started crying while holding her. Mika. But suddenly, Mika looked at them and said, How can you guys get lost again? Said Mika as the couple's faces froze. The marine soldiers started sweating, and the restaurant staff started looking at them weirdly. The couple became embarrassed. Mika, how did you get here? The man asked to change the subject. Mika was worried for you guys, so she started searching for you too, but two bad guys kidnapped her. What? They dare. The woman calmed him as Mika continued, but brother Gohan saved Mika and made the bad guys disappear, said Mika while looking towards Gohan. Gohan smiled at them, and as they bowed towards him, thank you, Gohan said. You have done a great favor to our family, said the man. You don't have to thank me. I did what I should have, said Gohan with a smile. No. I insist. Please, I will leave my contact number. If you face any kind of problem in East Blue, please call me. I will try my best to help you, said the man with conviction. Gohan didn't care about that because if I couldn't handle the problem, then how would a marine captain do? By the way, can I have a word with you? Said Gohan, asking the man to come to the side. As they got away from others, he said, you should know your daughter's problem, right? Asked Gohan. The man sighed with sadness. Yes, we have consulted many doctors, but they couldn't figure out what the problem is. Well, I don't know the cure, but I know about one more person with the same problem, said Gohan. Really? Who? Asked the man. Well, he is a pirate hunter. You might have heard his name. His name is Rorano Zoro, said Gohan, which shocked the man. That demon? Asked the man. Yes, but forget about him. While I don't know the cure, I might have a solution, said Gohan. What is it? The man asked with hope. Why don't you get a dog for her? Marines should have some well-trained dogs. Just get the most obedient one, he said and continued, once he remembers the smell, he won't forget it. Whenever Mika gets lost, it will help you in the search. And when you go out with your family, 
you can let Mika hold the dog so that she won't be able to walk in the wrong direction, said Gohan. The man looked shocked and thought speechlessly, how did I not think of that? Thank you, Gohan-san, he started thanking him. You don't have to thank me. It was just a suggestion, said Gohan as they walked back. Okay, everyone. Let's get going. We should not disturb their work anymore. Yes, sir, replied the soldiers. He took Mika in his arms and said, Okay, let's go home, but first say goodbye to Big Brother Gohan. Okay. Bye bye, Big Brother Gohan and Big Brother Curly Brow. The food was super delicious. You are a great cook, Big Brother Curly Brow. Sanji's face twitched, but after hearing the second part, he started smiling. Goodbye, Mika. Said Gohan with a smile. Mika, do you want a dog? Asked the man as they were walking towards the ship. A dog? Yes, Mika wants a big dog. Mika wants to ride on its back, said Mika, already getting excited. Okay. Daddy will get a big dog for you, said the man. Comment. Nine comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 8, Clashing Worlds, Gohan and Luffy meet. Nothing eventful happened during dinner hours. After the dining hours ended, everyone ate and went to their rooms. But Gohan and Sanji didn't have that luxury because Zef had called them to his room. Once they got outside his room, Sanji knocked on the door. Come in, said Zef. Once they got inside, Zef looked at them and asked, so what happened? Why was there an earthquake? Sanji looked towards Gohan, so Zef also looked at Gohan for answers. Gohan sighed and said, it was my fault, I lost control of my power. I am really sorry, Chef Zef, as he bowed down. Does this happen regularly? Asked Zef with a calm voice. No. It only happened because I got very angry, and I rarely get angry at anyone, said Gohan. So what was so different in today's situation? Is there no crime in your world? Like murder, kidnapping, human trafficking, etc. Asked Zef. Yes, there is every kind of crime in my world, but... Gohan's thoughts interrupted him. All I could do was get angry and curse at those filthy scums in my mind, but now that I have the power to do something, I am losing control over it, thought Gohan irritably. But? Asked Zef. Sanji was also looking at him. Whenever I see a crime happening against children, I get really angry, said frustrated Gohan. After hearing that, Zef started rubbing the bridge of his nose and looked at him seriously. I am giving you one last chance. Learn to control your anger. If this happens again, I will kick you out, said Zef with seriousness. I will. Thank you for giving me one last chance. I will not disappoint you. Please deduct the money for all the losses that the restaurant had suffered today because of me from my pay, said Gohan, feeling guilty for his actions. You don't have to worry, I have already decided to deduct it from your pay, said Zef as a matter of fact. Gohan scratched his head while smiling in embarrassment. At this rate, it will take forever to get out of here, thought Gohan. Hearing Zef's words, Sanji started smiling. And what were you doing? Shouldn't you have stopped him from going out of control? Asked Zef, now looking at Sanji. Sanji looked indignant. It happened too quickly, and I couldn't even get close to him because of all those shockwaves he was creating, he said. Zef looked at him with anger. If you are this weak, then how are you going to find All Blue, which is somewhere in the most dangerous seas? He said. Why are you saying all this in front of him? Asked Sanji, getting furious. What's wrong with that? Didn't he tell about his dreams in front of everyone? Said Zef. Or are you embarrassed to talk about your dream in front of other people? Said Zef as he was also looking angry. Listen, brat, if you are embarrassed of your dream, then that means you don't have confidence and power to achieve it, said Zef while looking at Sanji's eye. Who said I am embarrassed of my dream? You bastard. I am telling you I will definitely find all blue. Shouted Sanji, full of confidence. Okay then. From tomorrow onwards, you will train in your break time, said Zef to Sanji, then he looked at Gohan and said, Listen, brat, I have a proposal for you. If you help him train, I will not cut your pay. So that's what his aim was. He reeled Sanji in so he could trap him. And he had no intention of cutting my pay from the beginning. Such a cunning man, thought Gohan. But he said, I accept your proposal, with a smile. Be prepared, Sanji. From tomorrow onwards, we are going to have so much fun, said Gohan with a smile. But Sanji had a bad feeling about it. Okay, listen carefully, Sanji, and you too, brat. There are people who are way stronger than this brat. So if you want to find all blue, then you better become strong too, and don't get carried away thinking that you are the strongest. Now get out. Said Zef to both of them. As they were walking towards their rooms, Gohan said, Sanji. I am sorry. Sanji stopped and said, you don't have to apologize, but be careful next time. Hmm. I am not apologizing for that. I was apologizing for teasing you all day, said Gohan with a smile. 
but Sanji's expression became gloomy. But I can't help myself, you know. You are the only one who is in my age group here, and I like teasing my friends, said Gohan with a genuine smile. Who's your friend? You bastard. Said an irritated Sanji. Hey. Don't be like that, we should get along well. After all, we will be training partners from tomorrow onwards, said Gohan. If we don't get along, what if I beat you up too badly? It would be painful for you, so it's better to be friends, right? Asked Gohan with a miss. Chiavu smile. Who's beating who? I will show you tomorrow, you cocky bastard. As he walked away to his room. Don't worry, Sanji. I won't be gentle with you. He he he. He thought evilly. Once he lay down on his bed, he started thinking about the day. This is a grave problem. There are too many crimes happening against innocent people in this world. If I lose control every time, I might become a danger to people around me, Gohan thought. This absolutely cannot go on. Let's try meditation from tomorrow onwards. Let's hope it helps me control my emotions, he thought. And people of this world can also cultivate ki. I have to figure out how I did that first, though. Should I try it out on Sanji? No. What if something happened to him? He decided not to do that. Let's think about this later, but first things first. I have to get rid of this anger problem. Well, let's sleep for now. Let's hope tomorrow is a better day for me, he thought as he fell asleep. He got up early the next morning and started training Sanji in hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques. It was easy for him to teach him because he has learned from the very best, like Piccolo and Gaku. Sanji loves to fight with his legs because he doesn't want to fight with his hands. My hands are only for cooking food, he explained when Gohan asked. So Gohan taught him some leg techniques, then he sparred with him, but basically, it was him beating Sanji up. After that, he meditated. After the breakfast hours, he beat him up again and left him to work on his form while he meditated. This process continued for the whole week as Gohan settled into the life of this world. Nothing major happened in the restaurant except for some small-time troublemakers. Shockingly, these troublemakers were not pirates. Most pirates who came there to eat didn't cause any problems. It might have been because it was the East Blue, which is known to be the weakest sea. Sanji also became somewhat of a friend to him, except for getting irritated by his constant teasing of him. Such an easy target he is. The only downside was that there were no holidays, so he had to work on Sundays as well, like right now as he was cleaning the tables. But suddenly, he sensed two powerful people outside. One of them was even stronger than Sanji, and the other one was at least as strong as Sanji. They were arguing with someone as he heard their voices, so he went outside to take a look. But just as he got out, he saw a cannonball flying towards the restaurant ceiling. It was only repaired yesterday, and you guys want to destroy it again, he thought angrily. He jumped up and swatted the cannonball with one of his hands. What do you guys think you are doing? He said with anger. But just as he looked at the people in front of him, he couldn't close his mouth. Because right in front of him, there were two ships. One was the Marines, and the other was a pirate ship. The pirate ship had the Jolly Roger, which he couldn't forget even if he wanted to, the skull with the straw hat. He looked at the people on the ship. There were four people, three boys, and one girl. The guy with an unnaturally long nose and the girl were looking at him with dumbfounded expressions. The guy with swords on his waist was resting his hand on the handles, ready to fight. And the last one was wearing the iconic straw hat and was looking at him while grinning. Yes, Monkey D. Luffy had come to the Baratai. Comment. Two comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 9, Start of a Chaotic Day, The Baratai Encounter. As he watched them, he saw two more guys behind Zoro. Hmm. They should be Johnny and Yosaku, after all, they were the ones who brought them here. While he was observing them, they were also looking at him. This guy is dangerous, thought Zoro as he prepared to fight. Impossible, mumbled Nami, while Usopp trembled in fear. Amazing. How did you do that? Asked an excited Luffy. But Gohan ignored him and asked, who fired that cannonball? While dusting off his hands. The Marines. They fired it, said Usopp. Yes, said Johnny, while others also nodded. He looked towards the Marines. What are you guys trying to achieve by firing that cannonball at the restaurant? Asked Gohan with a calm voice. But we fired it towards these pirates, but that guy wearing a straw hat deflected it towards the restaurant, said a soldier while pointing at Luffy. Gohan looked at Luffy, but Luffy looked away and said, they are lying. Everyone had black lines on their faces after hearing that. Gohan sighed and said, I don't care. You guys are not allowed to use cannons near the restaurant. Do you get it? Boy. Do you know who I am? Asked a lame looking marine. He should be full body, such a stupid looking face, thought Gohan. No. And I don't care. If you are here to eat, you better behave, or I will throw you out, said Gohan. So, tell me, are you guys here to eat or to create trouble? He asked both groups. To eat? 
shouted Luffy, while full body gritted his teeth with anger. Just as he was about to say something, a woman came out from his cabin. Are we there yet, Mr. Fullbody? Asked the woman. Yes, my lady, replied Fullbody. So, are you here to eat as well? Asked Gohan again. Yes, replied Fullbody, not wanting to ruin his impression in front of the woman. All right then. Welcome to Baratai. My name is Gohan, and I am a temporary manager of Baratai, said Gohan with a smile. Please follow me. I will take you guys to your tables. But remember that. If you guys cause trouble inside the restaurant, I will throw you out, he said as he waited for everyone to follow him. Okay. Gum gum. Said Luffy as he wanted to slingshot himself towards the restaurant, but Nami punched him on the head. Didn't you hear him say not to cause trouble? She said, her teeth resembling a shark. But, Nami, I am hungry. Luffy whined. Did you forget we are here to recruit a cook? If you create trouble, no one will agree to come with us. So you better behave yourself, said Nami. Everyone followed Gohan to the restaurant, and he showed them their tables and called out, Sanji. Please take their orders while I take these guys' orders, said Gohan, pointing at Fullbody because he had a feeling that Fullbody wanted to take revenge for the earlier incident, and Gohan didn't have the mood to play with him. Sanji looked towards Fullbody, but after looking at the woman beside the guy, he became excited. Yes, said Sanji as he got there quickly and started flirting with the woman. Okay. Please look at the menu and tell me what you guys would like to order, said Gohan as he gave the menu to Nami. But before she could even read it, Luffy said, meat. A lot of meat, and Zoro added, and booze. Gohan looked at Nami while she looked at him apologetically. Then she started ordering for everyone. Gohan took their order and told them to wait for their food to arrive. He went towards the kitchen and told the chef to prepare the order. But just as he was getting back, he heard a commotion. It was full body getting beaten up by Sanji. Well, serves him right, he started walking towards them, but he heard a gunshot. He looked towards the entrance to see a marine soldier lying on the floor and a man standing over him with a gun. Jin, huh, thought Gohan. Jin walked in and sat at the table. Gohan was expecting him to call for Patty, but Jin looked at him. Oi waiter. Jin called. Of course, he will call for me. I am the closest to him right now, he thought and started walking towards him. Straw hats were also looking in their direction, expecting an interesting show. Gohan walked up to him and asked, what would you like to have, sir? Hey, Gohan. First, ask if he has any money or not, interjected Patty. Gohan sighed but asked while smiling, Dear sir, do you have money to pay for your food? Asked Gohan. No. But do you take bullets? Said Jin as he aimed his gun at him. Silence descended in the restaurant. Straw hats leaned forward in anticipation. Gohan looked at the gun with a straight face, and before anyone could blink, he snatched it from Jin's hand. Please don't point such a dangerous thing at my face, said Gohan with a smile. Everyone in the restaurant blinked and rubbed their eyes as they couldn't believe what they were seeing. Was it a devil fruit ability? Asked Nami to Luffy and Zoro. I don't know, said Zoro. Me either, but it was amazing, said Luffy as stars filled his eyes. He snatched it. Said Usopp. Everyone looked at him as Gohan also looked at him from the corner of his eye. Impressive. As expected of a man who is born to be a sniper, thought Gohan with a smile. Did you see it, Usopp? You are amazing, said Luffy with a laugh. Of course. Who do you think I am? After all, I am Captain Us cut the bullshit and tell us what you saw, said Nami. I didn't see clearly. All I saw was a blur, but I am definitely sure that he moved his hands to snatch the gun, said Usopp. Who is this guy? And why is he working in this restaurant, thought Nami. As they were talking, Gohan was looking at the gun. Such poor quality, he thought, examining it. I hate guns, said Gohan as he crushed it with his hand. It broke into pieces, and everyone gasped seeing that. Oi. Sanji. This guy doesn't have money, and it looks like he might die if we don't feed him. What should I do with him? Asked Gohan. Leave him to me. You can go take care of other customers, said Sanji as he took Jin outside. Gohan went to get the food that Straw Hats had ordered. As he was going, he saw Luffy sneaking out. After a while, he got back with their food. Luffy was already back and eager to eat. Here's your food. Please enjoy, said Gohan. They started eating while praising. When they were done eating, Gohan gave Nami the bill. Nami took it, but after looking at it, her eyes widened with shock. How can it be this much? She yelled. Please don't yell, miss. You can calculate it yourself. You should know how much this guy has eaten, said Gohan, pointing at Luffy. Nami looked at Luffy, who had turned into a sumo and slumped down. But she suddenly stood up and leaned over Gohan's shoulder. Can't you give a discount for a pitiful girl like me? Said Nami, trying to seduce him. Gohan observed her. 
When he looked at her upper body, he was impressed, which made Nami happy. But when he looked at her lower body, he sighed. Such a shame, he said with pity. Nami started trembling and pounced on him, but Usopp held her. Let me go. Why did you make that face, you bastard? Let go, Usopp. I am going to teach him a lesson. But Usopp held on. Suddenly, Sanji came and asked, what happened? My lady, did this bastard bully you? Nami suddenly acted pitiful and said, yes. Sanji looked at Gohan with anger and started attacking. This idiot. Gohan sighed while dodging his attacks. Well, I don't care anymore, you can settle their bill, said Gohan as he walked away. Yes. Go away, you bastard, said Sanji. My name is Sanji, can I help you with something? My lady. As his eyes turned into hearts. This. Sanji, I can't pay for the food because some pirates stole my money, Nami said, acting indignant. What? They dare? You don't have to worry about the bill. How can I let a beautiful girl pay for the food? Said Sanji, trying to look charming. Thank you, Sanji, said Nami as she started dancing like a snake in happiness. Just then, Jin came back into the restaurant, and he was carrying a large man on his shoulder. Gohan looked over and sighed. Well, shit is about to go down, for them, muttered Gohan. But finally, I will get to see the coolest character in all of the anime, he said in anticipation. Comment. Five comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 10, I have a proposal. He was looking forward to seeing his favorite character, but he suddenly remembered, didn't Don Krieg was supposed to come four days after the Straw Hat Pirates? Is it some kind of butterfly effect, thought Gohan. As Gohan was thinking, customers and staff in the restaurant started panicking after seeing Don Krieg. After all, he was famous in the East Blue with a bounty of 17 million berries. But they realized that Don Krieg was walking with the help of Jin. Food and water. Said Krieg weakly. Please give us some food. We have money. Said Jin in desperation. Sanji was frowning and started walking towards the kitchen. As Jin was helping him forward, Krieg fell down. Please give us some food quickly. Or Don will die, Jin pleaded. Everyone calmed down after seeing that. Gohan wasn't interested in the drama, his attention was on Krieg's armor. If I remember correctly, his armor should have some diamonds around the knuckles, and if I could get his full armor, then that should be enough to cover the cost of the damage from last week, and I might be able to buy a small ship as well, thought Gohan as a smile started to form on his face. As he was dreaming about his ship, Sanji came out of the kitchen carrying a plate full of what looked like fried rice. He got in front of Krieg. Sanji. Said Jin as Sanji put the plate in front of Krieg. Everyone started protesting against giving food to Krieg. One of the chefs said, don't you know what kind of person he is? He raised marine flags to loot towns and raised white flags so that he could fool his opponents. Yes. He will definitely attack us after he gets some energy back, said a customer. What do you think you are doing, Sanji? It was such a good chance to get rid of him, said an angry Patty. Well, let's see if this past week's training was helpful to him or not, thought Gohan, smiling. Just as Krieg was done eating food, he hit Sanji with a powerful clothesline. Sanji got hit to the ground three meters away. Gohan's face twitched seeing that, and he started walking towards Sanji. He bent down next to him and whispered, looks like I have to be more strict with your training from now on, with a smile on his face. Sanji's expression changed, but before he could say anything, Krieg's voice rang out, this is a great ship. I will take this ship, he declared, while everyone started to panic. But didn't you promise not to attack anyone here? Said Jin. There are about a hundred people on my ship. I want you guys to prepare food for them, after that, you guys can get lost from here because the ship is mine now, said Krieg. What? Do you want us to feed them so that they can attack us? No way. Said a chef. I think you didn't understand me, it was an order and you will not defy me. Shouted Krieg as the chef started trembling. Sanji. I am sorry. I didn't mean this to happen, said Jin. You bastard. Look what you have done, yelled Patty. Sanji looked at Krieg and stood up. He started going towards the kitchen. Oi Sanji. Where are you going? Asked Patty. To the kitchen. I have 100 more meals to prepare, replied Sanji. What? Have you gone mad? Do you want to kill us all? You bastard, shouted Patty as restaurant staff got in the way of Sanji while carrying all kinds of weapons. Do you guys want to stop me? Then you better kill me now, said Sanji with conviction. Why are you doing this, Sanji? Asked a staff member. Hmm. What they do after they eat doesn't concern me. All I know is that there are about a hundred people starving right now, and my job is to feed them, said Sanji. A chef's duty is to feed people if they are hungry, that's all I care about, said Sanji. There he goes again, saying all this crap, thought Gohan with an irritated look. Oh, so you don't care what they do after you feed them. 
said Gohan as he rested one of his hands on Sanji's shoulder. Sanji knew something was not right from the way Gohan was smiling. When did he get there, thought everyone, as customers had already left the restaurant because of the chaos. What if they kill innocent people after you feed them? I am pretty sure that he is the kind of person who will kill women and children too, said Gohan with a hint of anger. Sanji started trembling as he was doubting his principles. Listen, Sanji, your principles are great, it is a chef's duty to feed people. But one has to be strong enough to face the consequence of his actions, said Gohan as he smiled again. Sanji calmed down and started thinking. While this was going on, Patty brought out a gun, well, it was more a cannon than a gun, and said, move aside, everyone. Even if he is Don Krieg. He is just a single person, said Patty as he aimed the gun at Krieg. No. Die, you bastard. Shouted Patty as he fired. The cannonball hit Krieg, and smoke filled the restaurant, and Patty started celebrating. Restaurant staff also started cheering, while Jin looked worried. When the smoke cleared up, Krieg was unscathed and was now seen wearing a full body armor. It was such a nasty dessert. I will punish you for serving me that kind of dessert, said Krieg with anger. Muzzles popped out from his armor. Huh? Oh yes. This happened. Well, can't let him shoot these people, Gohan thought as he disappeared. Now. Receive your punishment, said Krieg as he opened fire. But Gohan appeared before them and waved his hand. The bullets stopped in their tracks and started falling down. Everyone's eyes almost popped out seeing that. As the sound of bullets hitting the ground rang out, people started to snap out of their shock state. He stopped the bullets. But how? Thought Patty. It must be a devil fruit ability, right? There's no way a human could do that. Said Nami in shock. Krieg was looking at Gohan in shock as well. He stopped it, how? Is he a devil fruit user? No. Why would a devil fruit user work in a restaurant as a server? He must have used some kind of trick, thought Krieg. Boy. Do you want to die? How dare you get in the way of me pushing people? Said Krieg angrily. Don't be angry. I just wanted to ask you something, are those diamonds on your knuckles real? Asked Gohan in anticipation. Hmm. Why don't I make you feel if they are real or not? Said Krieg as he started walking towards Gohan, intending to punch him. But suddenly, a big sack of clothes flew at him, and he got hit and fell down. Here's the food for your men. Take it and leave, said Zef finally coming out to confront the pirate. Chef Zef. What are you doing? His men will attack us. Yes, please don't do it. Said the servers. Zef? You are Red Boot Zef. So you are alive? Asked Krieg. So what if I am? It has nothing to do with you. And I am nothing but a cook now, said Zef. No, you can't be more than a cook seeing as you have lost a leg, said Krieg with a smile. You were once a pirate who had spent one year in the Grand Line, so you must have a logbook. I want that logbook along with the ship, demanded Krieg. So you have also sailed in the Grand Line, old man? Asked Luffy, looking excited. Yes, and I also have that logbook, but I will not give it to you because it's the hard work of my crew, said Zef. Then I will take it by force. This time we didn't know anything about the Grand Line, so my fleet of 50 ships wiped out in only one week. But once I get that logbook, I will make a big fleet again and find the One Piece. Then I will stand above everyone in the Grand Line. Declared Krieg. No, you can't become the Pirate King because I am the one who's going to be the King of Pirates, declared Luffy. Do you want to die? Boy. Said Krieg in anger. No, but I want to kick your ass, replied Luffy. Are we fighting, Luffy? Asked Zoro and started taking out his sword. Yes, do you need help from the great Captain Usopp? Said Usopp while his legs were shaking. Are they your crewmates? Just three people. Said Krieg while looking at Zoro, Nami, and Usopp. No. We have two more. Said Luffy while raising two fingers. Don't count me, you bastard. Said Sanji. Don't tell me, thought Gohan, while Luffy ignored Sanji and said to Zoro, no. You guys just watch, said Luffy. As they were about to fight, Gohan got between them and said, please don't fight in the restaurant or you will damage it. Stop appearing everywhere out of nowhere like a ghost, thought everyone. You are lucky, boy. I will let you go for now because I don't want to damage my new ship, said Krieg. Then he looked at Zef. Be prepared to hand over the ship and the logbook, I will come back with my men in a while, he said and walked away, taking the big sack with him. Why did you do that, Chef Zef? How are we going to survive now? Said the chefs. Those who want to fight to protect this place shall remain, everyone else can get out, said Zef as everyone became quiet. This restaurant is our home, and we will protect it. Declared Zef. Just then, old man. Chef Zef. I have a proposal for you, said Gohan and Luffy at the same time. Comment. Two comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 11, Hawkeye My Hawk. 
Both Luffy and Gohan looked at each other. Gohan didn't allow Luffy to continue. Chef Zef. Did you see Krieg's armor? There are ten diamonds on it, and two of them are pretty big. Also, I am sure that armor is pretty expensive, said Gohan in excitement. Do you think it will be enough for the cost of repair from last week and to buy a ship? Asked Gohan. Zef looked at him, he said, diamonds may be able to cover the cost for the repair, but you will not be able to buy a ship after selling that armor, pouring cold water on Gohan's expectations. Why does it cost so much to repair the restaurant? Asked Gohan in frustration. Are you doubting me, brat? Do you know how difficult it is to find a good ship right in the East Blue? Ship repairs cost way more here than in the Grand Line, said Zef, as Gohan looked deflated. What did you want to say, brat? Zef asked Luffy. Oh yes. We will handle the Creek Pirates for you, and in exchange, I want you to allow me to take Sanji and Gohan with us, said Luffy with a smile. But before Zef could say anything, Gohan yelled in protest, no way. I am not going with you guys. You guys are super trouble magnets. Why do you say that? Do you even know us? Come on, join us, you are strong. I want you to be my Nakama. Said Luffy. I know just by looking that you guys are nothing but trouble. That's why I refuse. Said Gohan. And I refuse your refusal, said Luffy while smiling. Then I refuse your refusal to my refusal, said Gohan. Let's see how you would make a comeback from this, he thought. I refuse, times four, said Luffy. What does that even mean? Asked Gohan in frustration. Okay, you two, stop it. And you, Brad, I accept your proposal, said Zef without giving Gohan any chance to protest. Yay. Shouted Luffy as he ran out. I will not go anywhere until I make you acknowledge my skills, said Sanji as he walked off. I am not going either. I want to be an adventurer, not a pirate, said Gohan as he started walking away, but Zef stopped him. You should go with them, Brad. You know your circumstances well. With your power and habits, you will be labeled as a pirate by Marine sooner or later. If the world government knows about your powers, they will try to capture you at any cost, said Zef with a serious face. But why leave with them then? I could leave on my own, argued Gohan. And how will you leave? You don't even have a ship, and it will take you years to save money for a ship by working here. Even if you get that kind of money by some miracle, how would you sail alone? Do you know how to navigate? Do you know how to cook? Asked Zef. Gohan became silent and depressed. How delusional I was. I didn't even consider these things. I can't travel by flying, it will be too eye-catching. Reality is a bit hashtag dollar, thought Gohan. Okay, don't make that face. What's even wrong with joining them? I can see that Brad with the straw hat is a good guy. And so are his friends. Even if they are harbingers of doom, you will bring more troubles to them than they are to you. Said Zef as a matter of fact. Damn it. Those words hurt like a heartbreak. He is right, I can't stay here for long or I might bring some trouble to them. Also, Luffy is also more of an adventurer than a pirate. Don't think too much, just do what you think is right. Said Zef. Now you're saying this after making a mess of my mind, thought Gohan irritatedly. Now let's go take care of the trouble which is in front of us, said Zef as he started walking. I almost forgot about it. Let's see, I should be able to sense him since I know how Haki feels, thought Gohan as he started sensing for a strong Haki user around him. There he is. It's a little far away, but I am sure it should be him, thought Gohan as he looked towards the particular direction. I better get changed. These clothes are not suited to fight, Gohan thought as he walked towards his room and started wearing his GI and the boots which he was wearing when he first got here. These boots look uncomfortable, but I feel very comfortable wearing them, and I look so cool in this getup, he thought. As he was walking out, Jin was telling everyone about the man who destroyed their fleet. Yes, the same man Gohan was waiting to see, the world's greatest swordsman, Hawkeye my hawk. Hmm. He is here, Gohan became excited and started to walk outside as everyone was busy talking. Just as he got out, he saw Krieg's galleon getting cut. This ship is quite big, he thought. After getting cut, the galleon started to break apart, which created big waves in the ocean, and Baratai started swaying badly. Seeing this, Gohan frowned. Let's try this. As Gohan was thinking, inside Baratai, things turned chaotic. Is the attack started? Someone asked in panic. Outside, Gohan started coating Baratai with his key, and it stopped swaying. Inside, go and lift the anchor or Baratai will get destroyed at this rate, said Zef to a man. Yes, he replied. But suddenly, the ship stopped swaying. What happened? It stopped swaying. Said someone. This feeling. Gohan, thought Sanji as everyone ran outside. The waves died down, and Gohan stopped the flow of ki. This is pretty useful. It consumes a decent amount of ki, but this world is naturally gifted, so there's no shortage of ki, unlike Earth, he thought. Everyone came out to see the destroyed ship of Krieg. 
How did it happen? Asked Patty. Nami. Luffy shouted while looking around. Usopp, do you see anything? Asked Zoro. No. Replied panicked Usopp. Big brother Zoro. Big brother Luffy. Suddenly, they saw Johnny and Yosaku swimming towards them while crying. Gohan stopped looking at them and looked beyond the wreckage. Here he comes, Gohan thought. Hey Gohan. Were you the one who stopped the swaying? Asked Sanji. Hmm. Yes. Replied Gohan without looking away. Sanji looked at the direction to what Gohan was looking at. What are you looking at? He asked. I feel a powerful man in that direction. He is coming here, said Gohan in excitement. Powerful. More powerful than you. Asked Sanji, looking in the direction. I don't know. The power system of the Dragon Ball universe is insane, but I can't use those big attacks that could take many lives. Also, we don't have Dragon Balls here to bring them back. But I should be able to fight him equally, even if he is as strong as an emperor, Gohan thought. You don't know. There he is. Said Gohan while smiling. Sanji looked towards the wreckage and saw a raft, and over it was a man sitting on the chair with a big cross behind him. That sword handle behind him with his sitting posture is giving the feeling as if he is sitting on a throne. And how the hell did he sail in the Grand Line on that raft? This is not logical at all. You are so unfair Oda-sensei. Gohan thought in depression. Creek pirates started to panic after seeing Hawkeye. Chasing them all the way from the Grand Line. This guy sure is vengeful, Gohan thought. Just then one of Creek's men fired at Hawkeye, but he deflected the bullets with his sword. That power I sensed just now came from that ship, but I can't sense it anymore, Hawkeye thought while looking in the direction of Baratai. His black sword looks bigger in person. I wonder how heavy it is. Gohan thought. Zoro got next to the man who fired and challenged Hawkeye for a duel. Hawkeye accepted his challenge and jumped onto the wreckage where Zoro was standing. Zoro wore his bandana and took out his three swords. His jaw strength should be insane, thought Gohan, watching Zoro holding a sword from his teeth. Hawkeye took out his pendant to reveal a small knife, and their duel started. Well, it was not much of a duel. Hawkeye was playing around with Zoro, as Zoro was getting desperate. But suddenly he attacked Zoro and stabbed him in the chest. As expected, I still hate seeing blood, Gohan thought as he unconsciously let out some key, but it was enough for Hawkeye to sense it. It's coming from that young man in the training clothes, thought Hawkeye. Did he sense it? So, people with observation hacky can sense my key. Gohan thought. Hawkeye took out his black sword as Zoro did his last attack. After the final exchange, two of Zoro's swords broke. Everything went as in the anime. Hawkeye cut Zoro, and he fell into the water. It is easy to give up your ambition. Right. Suddenly shouted Sanji. Why are you shouting right next to my ears? Complained Gohan. As he was complaining, Hawkeye looked in their direction and slashed vertically. Comment. Eight comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 12, Gohan vs Rikum. Gohan saw the flying slash heading towards him. Are you kidding me? Do you want to destroy Baratai? He thought. The faces of everyone from Baratai turned white as they saw the attack coming towards them. Gohan jumped towards the incoming slash with his body covered in ki. This is the aura I felt. It's like Haki but more potent, Hawkeye thought while observing Gohan's state. Gohan stopped the slash in its tracks with his hands and sent it towards the already broken ship of Don Krieg. What? Shouted Krieg as he jumped away to save himself. Hawkeye was shocked by how easily Gohan stopped his attack. He is at least as powerful as a vice admiral, and he is not even trying. Hawkeye thought. Just then, Luffy slingshot himself towards Hawkeye, but he dodged Luffy's attack easily. Luffy's head got stuck in the wreckage. I am impressed that you waited for the duel to end, said Hawkeye. Don't worry. I didn't kill him, he continued. Before Luffy could say anything, Johnny and Yosaku brought Zoro to their ship. He is alive. Luffy, Zoro is alive, said Usopp. After that, everything happened like in an anime. Hawkeye said his lines, then Zoro said his lines, Hawkeye asked Luffy about his dream, which everyone already knew. Afterward, Hawkeye looked towards Gohan and asked, Kid, what's your name? Hmm. Gohan, replied Gohan. Are you also part of this kid's crew? Asked Hawkeye. Yes. He just joined, replied Luffy before Gohan could deny it. You have a very interesting power, kid. I am looking forward to the kind of changes you are going to bring to this world, said Hawkeye with a smile. That devil is smiling, thought everyone. Hawkeye got onto his raft and started sailing away. Just as Hawkeye sailed away, Krieg's voice rang out. How dare you send that attack towards me? He shouted towards Gohan. Thank God he dodged it or it might have damaged the armor, Gohan thought, ignoring Krieg's outburst. Die. You bastard. Shouted Krieg as multiple muzzles popped out from his armor, and he opened fire. Gohan just disappeared from his position, and the big blast rang out. After the dust settled, Krieg yelled, Hmm. 
Where did he go? Come out, you bastard. Don. Behind you. Shouted Jin as Gohan was right behind Krieg. Before Krieg could turn around, Gohan lightly hit his head, rendering him unconscious. Wei Aot, thought everyone with gaping mouths. Hey. I was about to kick his ass. Complained Luffy. You can kick his ass after I am done taking off his armor. Said Gohan while trying to understand how to remove Krieg's armor. Suddenly he got an idea. Hey, your name is Usopp, right? Asked Gohan with a smile. Huh? Yes, replied Usopp. If you help me take his armor off, I will let you study it, said Gohan. Really? Then Captain Usopp will help you, said Usopp with anticipation. To Usopp, who likes to make unusual weapons, it was a good chance. Hearing that, Gohan disappeared and appeared right next to Usopp. E. Usopp got shocked. Gohan put Usopp on his shoulder and disappeared again, appearing next to Krieg's unconscious body with Usopp. Let's get down to work, Usopp, said Gohan without giving much time for Usopp to register what happened. Is this a dream? Many people had this question looking at the situation. A fearsome pirate of East Blue was getting stripped by two men right in front of their eyes. Stop it! Shouted Jin as he started running towards Krieg, but Sanji got in his way. Sanji! Step aside! Said Jin while glaring at Sanji. Why don't you make me? Said Sanji as he put a cigarette in his mouth. But he threw it away quickly. He looked towards Gohan and sighed with relief. Thank God he didn't see it, Sanji thought. He took out a toothpick and put it in his mouth. Wow. Great job, Usopp. I will let you study it once we are done with these idiots, said Gohan happily while in his hands he was holding the diamonds. This is my first time seeing a diamond this big up close, thought Gohan as he inspected the large diamond. Gohan took Usopp to Johnny and Yosaku's ship with Krieg's armor and said, thanks for helping me. I am leaving this armor with you for now. Before Usopp could reply, Luffy said, Usopp, you guys go after Nami. We will catch up after taking care of things here, said Luffy. Yes, replied Usopp as they started sailing away. Taking my armor away like I have already joined their crew, thought Gohan irritably. If Krieg knew what he was thinking, he would have vomited blood. Gohan appeared beside Krieg again and put his head under the water. Seeing that, Jin yelled, what do you think you are doing? You bastard. As for everyone else in the Krieg pirates, they had already lost hope. It's over, it's over. He is worse than Hawkeye. Why did we have to encounter these demons? Are we cursed? They started muttering. After a couple of seconds, Krieg started struggling, so Gohan let him go. Huaaaa, cough. Cough. Ha, hu. As soon as Krieg got free, he took his head out of the water and started coughing and gasping for air. What happened? Who was trying to drown me? Hmm. Where the hell is my armor? Shouted Krieg. Just as Jin was about to tell Krieg about his armor, Gohan said, Your armor? That boy wearing a straw hat took it and gave it to his crewmate. Unfortunately, he already left with your armor, said Gohan with a smile. Everybody saw it? Right? You can ask them. Hey, everyone, please tell him. Said Gohan, looking at everyone with a cheerful smile. But when everyone saw it, they started trembling. Don. Yes, we saw it, Don. The one with the long nose left with your armor. Yes. Yes. Yes, we all saw it, said everyone from his crew except for Jin, who looked depressed. What were you guys doing at that time? And why are you standing around? Go and take control of that ship. Shouted Krieg. Yes, Don Krieg, they shouted as they started swimming towards Baratai. Oi. Go and open the fins, or this. War will damage the restaurant, said Sanji to a cook. What? But this will make it easier for them to fight. Said Patty. It doesn't matter. They want to fight, then we will give them one. And they are the ones who are fighting a losing battle because we have Gohan on our side. Said Sanji while pointing at Gohan, who was looking at Krieg pirates like they were clowns. They opened the fins, which created a wide platform around Baratai. Soon, pirates started to climb on the platform and charge towards Baratai's staff. Seeing that, Gohan got in front of them and got into the fighting stance like Gaku. Pirates stopped after seeing him appear before them. Gohan brought one of his hands backward and then thrust it forward. H-A-A-A. The pirates blasted away from the shock waves. Everyone's jaws dropped to the floor. See, we don't have to worry, said Sanji with a smile. Those who were blasted away were already knocked out because of the impact from the shock waves. Krieg looked at their bodies, which were floating in the water, and gritted his teeth. This bastard is ruining everything. Pearl. Kill that bastard for me. Shouted Krieg as a big man climbed on the platform. He was wearing big shields on the front and back and also on his arms and legs as well. This guy looks so stupid, thought Gohan. Okay, Don Krieg. Boy, your luck has run out because I have not lost a single fight since I joined this crew. I know you are pretty strong, 
but even you won't be able to survive my strongest attack, said Pearl as he started banging shields, which were attached to his palm. Ha ha ha, you look like a monkey toy with a symbol, said Gohan while laughing. What? Pearl started banging the shields harder, and the shields caught fire. This guy is done for. Yes, Pearl San is serious now, said Creek Pirates as they finally had a smile on their faces. Fire! Pearl! shouted Pearl as he spread his arms wide. Seeing this, Gohan recalled something from Dragon Ball Z. Let's try that. Now, how did he do that? Hmm, yes, thought Gohan with a smile. Be prepared to die. Special. Ack. Before Pearl could complete his sentence, his eyes bulged out, and he couldn't close his mouth. Pearl looked down to see that Gohan had already hit his shield with his elbow, yes, the same attack that Gaku did against Rikum from the Jinya Force. Gohan took two steps back as cracks started forming on the shield. Suddenly, shockwaves spread from Pearl's back, and the shield on his back turned into dust-like particles. Silence spread around the area, and the smile on the faces of Creek Pirates froze. Sorry I couldn't help myself from attacking. After all, you were wide open, said Gohan with a laugh. Pearl vomited a mouthful of blood and finally hit the ground face first. Comment. 10 comments. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 13, Can You Please Die? Everyone in the Creek Pirates became dispirited again. Can't we even have some hope for a moment? Muttered one of them as everyone else echoed his sentiments. That attack was devastating. Every bone in his body must be in pieces right now, thought Zeph while looking towards Pearl. Oi, Sanji. When will you take care of that friend of yours? Said Gohan, pointing at Jin. And you, Luffy. Don't you want to kick his ass? Why have you not done it already? Said Gohan with irritation. You guys better be done till I take care of these small fries, said Gohan while smiling at them. After that, Gohan disappeared and appeared beside two of the Creek Pirates. Hey you two. Do you have any last words? Asked Gohan with a smile. What? Just as one of them opened his mouth, Gohan threw them away. Ayah. Their screams echoed and disappeared along with them. The remaining pirates started trembling. Demon, they thought in horror. Hmm. You guys still not moving? Do you want me to take care of those two as well? Asked Gohan in confusion. No. I will kick Krieg's ass. Declared Luffy. Sanji also started fighting Jin. Since Sanji was training with Gohan, he didn't face any difficulty taking down Jin. The same goes for Luffy, as Don Krieg didn't have his armor, so Luffy's fight was easier than Sanji's. Only Gohan was having the time of his life while throwing people to their death. Everyone at the Baratai was looking at the scene with an awkward smile. Are these guys really the most fearsome pirates of the East Blue, they thought. After they took care of everything, Sanji gave Jin a small boat to carry his captain and the remaining crew members. All the drama with Sanji was going exactly as in the anime, while Gohan was thinking about whether he should join the Straw Hat crew or not. Sanji finally decided to go with them, and Gohan became depressed because of his choice. Go with them, brat. Why are you thinking so much? You can leave the crew if you don't like it after some time, said Zef. But you don't know, Chef Zef, that those people in the comments section will not let me live in peace for this, thought Gohan, the author. Chef Zef, here, take these diamonds, he said while taking out the diamonds. No need. This old man can afford to repair this ship, said Zef. But. Zef stopped him from continuing, those diamonds are more useful to you and Sanji than me. But if you decide to go with them, I want you to keep training Sanji. Sanji has a really troublesome background, so if someone powerful comes after his life, I want you to protect him, because to me, Sanji is my son. Can you do this favor for this old man? Asked Zef with expectation. I will, replied Gohan. Sanji and Luffy got on the small ship that Zef had given them. Oi Gohan. Let's get going. We need to catch up with the others, said Luffy, but Gohan didn't move. Seeing that, Sanji got close to Gohan and said, you know you can't remain here any longer, and you will have to sail to achieve your dream. Then why not come with us? Didn't you say that I am the only friend you have here? Then why not travel with your friend? Said Sanji. And after I am gone, how will you be able to eat the food made by me, said Sanji. Made by me, by me. Sanji's words echoed in Gohan's mind. Screw it. Why should I hesitate because of you want to please some readers, you stupid author? I will go and enjoy Sanji's cooking while you will have to endure for my sake, muttered Gohan as he walked towards the ship. Listen, Luffy. If you take me with you, your journey will become more chaotic, said Gohan while thinking, yes, more chaotic than the original story. I don't care, just get on, said Luffy while grinning. After a few hours, Luffy said, Sanji, food. And Sanji replied, shut up. You just ate. Hey. You guys. Don't you think we are going too slow? Asked Gohan. Yes, because the direction of the wind is not helping us move faster, replied Sanji. 
Do you guys want to move this ship faster? Asked Gohan as he stood up. Yes, replied Luffy. Okay. Tie up the sail, said Gohan as he walked towards the back of the ship. He put his hand under the water and started pushing out small bursts of key. The ship started to move forward and it got as fast as a motorboat. Yahoo! Shouted Luffy while hugging the mast. Remember to tell me if we go in the wrong direction, said Gohan. After a few minutes, Gohan sensed something. Hey guys, I think we are close to our destination. I can sense Zoro and Usopp, said Gohan. Really, let's hurry up then, said Luffy. Okay, replied Gohan as he sped up the ship. I can see the island, but I don't see the Mary, said Sanji while hugging the ship's mast. Hey Gohan, slow down the ship or it will crash onto the beach, said Sanji. Once they were on the beach, Gohan said, guys, we have company, as Sanji and Luffy looked towards the direction he was pointing to see two fishermen running towards them. Hey, you humans. This island belongs to our long pirates. If you want to enter, then you guys have to pay protection fees, said one of them. Are long pirates? Are you guys dangerous? Said Gohan with a smile. Dangerous? Kid, we are the most ferocious pirates in the world. Every member of our long pirates is a fishman, which means we are ten times more powerful than you filthy humans, replied the fishman. Yes. Just yesterday we slaughtered the whole village. It was so much fun. Yes, it was. Do you remember that guy's face when we shot his children in front of him? They started talking among themselves. But they suddenly noticed. Don't you think it's too quiet? Asked one of them to another. They looked around to find that there were no waves on the ocean, and there was no wind either. It was like the whole world had stopped. What's happening? Said one of the fishmen. Gohan's eyes were shadowed, and his body was emitting a small amount of ki that was getting bigger by the second. Oi! Gohan! Shouted Sanji. Don't worry. I am not losing control. I am just a little angry, said Gohan as everything started to become normal. Gohan started walking towards the fishmen. Oi! Stay where you are if you don't. But before he could continue, he appeared behind them and threw them away with all of his strength. WH! Ayayasa! They disappeared forever. Gohan took a deep breath and said, I am going for a walk. You guys should wait here because I can sense that Zoro is coming in this direction. Let's hope he doesn't change direction for no reason, he thought and disappeared. Gohan appeared on a street. Everyone looks hopeless here, he thought as he looked around. He walked around in different parts of the island when suddenly he came across a grave on a small hill. Isn't this Belmere's grave? Let's get some flowers, thought Gohan. It took him some time to collect the flowers. Once he was done, he got back to find someone was already there. Hmm. Gohan. Shouted Nami. What are you doing here? She asked him suspiciously. Me? I am here to kill you, said Gohan as he appeared beside her and whispered in her ear, can you please die? Important note, so Gohan has decided to with the straw hat. Jokes aside, I did because I have already thought about the layout of this story and cannot change it because I don't want to discontinue it. Once I have a proper layout for other version of this story, I plan to write it too. I know a lot of people are going to stop reading because of my decision, so I want to thank them for supporting my work until now. And lastly those who want to stick with the story I have lots of cool things waiting for you guys to read. That's all. Comment. 17 comments. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 14, Demon. Eee -e 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 -e. Nami screamed and jumped back. G Gohan. Please don't joke around, said Nami with a strained smile. No. I am absolutely serious. I even got these white flowers. Said Gohan with a cheerful voice as he showed Nami the flowers. Nami got scared and started backing away. Once I kill you, I will make you a beautiful grave in this place and offer you these flowers, said Gohan with a smile, but it turned into a full-blown laughter. Ha 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 ha, sorry, sorry, I was in a very bad mood just now, so I decided to entertain myself by teasing you a little, said Gohan as he was feeling better after a good laugh. What? Shouted Nami, but just as she was about to say more, Gohan walked past her and stood before Belmere's grave. He rested the flowers on the grave. Hello there. Since I ended up in this world, that means souls do exist. So if you are hearing me right now, I just wanted to tell you that the person who has killed you is going to die a painful death today, thought Gohan with a serious face. As Gohan turned around, he saw Nami looking at him with a complicated expression. You were saying something? Asked Gohan. Hmm. What are you doing here? Asked Nami with an irritated face. I was paying respect to the dead. Said Gohan with a smile. You know what I'm talking about, Gohan. So tell me. Asked Nami as she was getting more irritated. I am here because my captain wants me to. And I was walking around seeing beautiful scenery and throwing people, well, that one is not important, replied Gohan. Whatever, I don't care about you idiots. But you better not create any trouble for people here, said Nami. 
So, Nami, you are also a member of Arlong's pirates. Said Gohan. How did you know that? Asked Nami in shock. Well, you have the same tattoo as those fishmen, replied Gohan. Nami, let me give you some advice. You better leave that crew now because there will be no Arlong's pirates before this day ends, said Gohan with a smile. What? You guys are not going to do anything. Do you hear me? This has nothing to do with you. Said Nami with anger. Of course, we will not attack them first, but if they attack us, then we will end them, said Gohan. Okay then, Nami, I will see you around. Said Gohan as he disappeared. After walking around for some time, he appeared before Sanji and others. There was one more person with them, Nami's sister, Nojiko. His sudden arrival shocked her. What? Said Nojiko as she took two steps back. Don't worry, Nojiko-san, he is our crewmate, said Sanji with a warm smile. Oh? Sorry for scaring you, miss. My name is Gohan. And who might you be? Asked Gohan with a smile. Hmm. You don't have to apologize, you just surprised me. I am. She is Nami's big sister, Nojiko-san, said Sanji instead. Okay. And why do you guys look like you have been crying? Said Gohan, acting confused. Gohan. You don't know, but my Nami-san is so pitiful. Stop. Said Gohan, your Nami-san, thought everyone else. I already know about it. I heard some villagers talking about it, said Gohan. What? Those guys. Who were they? Did you see their face? Asked Nojiko, looking irritated. No, I only heard them, I didn't see them, replied Gohan. Anyways, what are we going to do now? And why is Luffy not here? Asked Gohan. They looked at each other and shook their heads. Don't know. Asked Gohan. Then who's the vice captain? He asked. It's Zoro. Replied Usopp. Wake up. Sanji kicked the sleeping swordsman. What? Do you want a fight? You love cook, said Zoro as he took out his swords. What did you call me? You moss head. Said Sanji. Just as they were about to start fighting, Gohan grabbed their shoulders and said with a cheerful smile, Are you both testing my patience? Sanji immediately did a U-turn and said, What are you talking about? I was just waking him up. Gohan looked unimpressed but let him go. So what's the plan, Vice Captain? Asked Gohan to Zoro. Zoro thought for a bit and said, We wait for Luffy's order. This is the first thing I need to change with this crew, thought Gohan after hearing Zoro's reply. And what if Arlong's pirates harm someone before Luffy's return? Asked Gohan. We wait for the captain's order, repeated Zoro. Okay. I will wait for Luffy to return, but if anybody on this island is in trouble, I will help them. And if that fish face tries to kill someone, then I will end him before he could say the word fish, said Gohan with a serious expression. What? Listen. You mister, we don't want you guys to interfere in our business, okay? Said Nojiko with an irritated face. Gohan looked at her and smiled. Nojiko-san, I will only take orders from my captain, and only if that order is not stupid. Otherwise, no one can tell me what to do or not. Do you understand, Nojiko-san? Said Gohan with a lovely voice. But everybody knew he was very serious. Okay. I don't care anymore, said Nojiko with a huff and walked away. Bye, Nojiko-san. Said Sanji with a total love-struck expression. After a few minutes, Gohan's ears twitched, and he disappeared. Where did he go now? Muttered Sanji. As others didn't react, already getting used to Gohan's disappearing and appearing randomly. Outside Nami's house, don't touch that, don't touch that. Nami was running towards Captain Nezumi while shouting. Genzo and Nojiko grabbed Nami to stop her. Genzo was grabbing Nami from behind while Nojiko was in front of her. Suddenly, Nezumi took out a gun from his pocket and fired at them. Nami, Nojiko and Genzo stopped their struggle and looked behind Nojiko to see that Gohan was standing there. Gohan. Whispered Nami. Yo. Nami, looks like things aren't going well on your side. Said Gohan while his back was facing them. Hey boy. How did you get there? Asked Nezumi and started inspecting his gun. Did I miss? Is. There's something wrong with this gun, he thought. Are you looking for this? Asked Gohan while showing the bullet between his fingers. Did he catch it? No, it must be his own bullets, thought Nezumi. You can't fool me, boy, said Nezumi. Man, you sure look more ugly in person, he continued with a smile. What did you say? Do you know who I am? Shouted Nezumi with anger. No. Should I? Asked Gohan with an innocent face. You. Very well, you are hereby executed as a punishment for getting in the way of the Marine's operation, said Nezumi with an evil smile. Gohan smiled and started walking towards Nezumi. Walking towards your death? Everyone fire! Shouted Nezumi. Soldiers started shooting at Gohan, 
but just as the bullets were about to reach him, they disappeared, and Gohan kept walking towards them. What's happening? Why is there no impact? Where did all those bullets go? Shouted Nezumi, full of shock. But seeing that Gohan was getting near, he started firing. But the result was the same, the bullets kept disappearing. Gohan got in front of Nezumi and crushed his gun with his hand. Seeing that, Nezumi fell to his butt. Who are, you? Asked trembling Nezumi. I am Gohan. From Straw Hat Pirates. Nice to meet you, said Gohan with politeness. Look, I found your lost bullets, said Gohan as he showed him his palms. There were around a dozen bullets resting on his palm. Nezumi started trembling more after seeing the bullets. A hacky user? In East Blue, thought Nezumi. Here. Let me give them back to you guys, said Gohan as he started flicking the bullets with his fingers. Bullets traveled faster than when fired from the gun and went through the legs of marine soldiers. Aaaa. My legs. It hurt so much. They started screaming in pain. Now then, what should I do with you? Said Gohan as he held Nezumi's neck. What do you want to do? Do you really want to kill a marine captain? Marines will hunt you down. Said Nezumi in desperation. Really? Said Gohan with a pleasant surprise. Then that means marines are going to entertain me if I kill you. Said Gohan with a smile. What? Do you have that snail thing with you? Asked Gohan. Dendon Mushy? Yes. I have it. Here, take it and let me go, please. Said Nezumi while presenting him the Dendon Mushy. There's no way I am touching it. I just hate slimy things, thought Gohan and looked towards a soldier who was near them and was on the ground holding one of his legs. Hey, you, come here quickly, or I will kill you, said Gohan with a straight face. Hearing that, the face of that soldier turned white, and he started crawling towards Gohan desperately. When everyone else saw this, they had only one word on their minds, demon. I am here. I am here, said the soldier after getting before him. Hold that dendon mushy for me. You made me crawl here with an injured leg, just for this, thought the soldier. Yes, he said and took the dendon mushy from Nezumi. Hey, Nami. Is our long park visible from here? Asked Gohan. The three people had already started doubting their life, but Gohan's voice broke them out of their stupor. Why yes. That big building, it's inside our long park, said Nojiko while pointing her finger in a certain direction. That's not very far. I think I can hit the building, muttered Gohan. Okay. Mouse man, if you had the time to say only one word, what would that be? Asked Gohan with a smile. What? Asked Nezumi in confusion. What a lame choice, said Gohan as he raised Nezumi and threw him towards our long park. Aaaaaa. Screamed Nezumi as he flew towards our long park, and he got smashed onto the top floor of the building. Yes. Did you guys see that? I hit that building from so far away. But everyone looked at him and thought again, demon. Comment. Four comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 15, Conversations with the Fleet Admiral. Gohan didn't like the looks they were giving him. Why are you guys looking at me like that? Can't a man even celebrate now? Hitting that tower from here is nothing short of an achievement, you know. Said Gohan in excitement. He must have died. There's no way anyone can survive that crash. Even his body would not be recognizable. So ruthless. Marines started talking among themselves with sadness. Oh. You guys sure are having a good time, huh? Said Gohan with a smile. Marines started to tremble again. You. How could you? You killed a marine captain. Do you really want to destroy our island? Everyone on the island will be implicated because of you. Said Nami with despair. Gohan started walking towards Nami. After reaching her, he held her chin and looked into her eyes. Nami, you sure are brave. You can even shout at me after seeing that. But you know, I am not a biased person. I treat both men and women equally, said Gohan with a smile. But to Nami, it was like death itself was looking at her. She started trembling in fear. Ha ha ha. Gohan started laughing. You are such an easy target, Nami, said Gohan as he continued laughing. Nami started trembling with anger, and just as she was about to lunge at him, Genzo and Nojiko held her tightly. Let me go. I am going to beat the shit out of this bastard. Shouted Nami, trying to get free. Gohan stopped laughing and said, Okay, jokes aside, let's get serious, said Gohan. Look who's talking. Said Nami in sarcasm. Okay, sorry for teasing you. Now let's get down to business, said Gohan with a smile. You guys don't have to worry about the marines doing anything to this island's people because I have a plan. Said Gohan while grinning. Hey, you. Come here, said Gohan while looking at the soldier who was holding the Den Den Mushy. That soldier looked at Gohan, thinking, so I have to crawl again. But after looking at Gohan's smiling face, he gritted his teeth and started crawling towards him. Once he got there, Gohan said to him, 
Call the Marine Headquarters and tell them about what Captain Nezumi has been doing here truthfully. Gohan continued with a smile, if you dare talk more than you should, then I will use you to hit our long pirate's flag. That Marine started dialing, and the call connected to the headquarters. This is the Marine Headquarters, who is this? Asked the person from the other side. I am a Marine officer from the 16th branch. I want to report something, said the soldier. Okay, soldier, what do you want to report? Asked the person. I want to report that our long pirates have taken control of the Kanamai Islands, said the soldier. What? When did it happen? What's the report of casualties? Asked the person frantically. The marine soldier looked at Gohan and said while trembling, EI, eight years ago. There was silence for a few seconds on the other side, after that the sound of running and panting could be heard. Fleet Admiral. There's a big problem. Shouted the person on the other side. Why are you in a hurry, soldier? And what big problem? Said Sengoku after putting down his pen. There is a report from the 16th branch. Our long pirates have taken control over Kanamai Islands, said the officer with hurry. What? How's the situation there? Did you send a backup? Asked Sengoku. No. There. You didn't. Do you know there could be some soldiers who might still be fighting? Said Sengoku in anger. On the other side, after hearing that, Nami and Nojiko started shaking in anger. It's been eight years, said the soldier. What eight years? Asked Sengoku in confusion. It's been eight years since our long pirates have taken control over Kanamai Islands, said the soldier. There was a long silence after that. What's your name? This time Den Den Mushi's looks changed. I am a marine. Just tell me your name. You are not a marine anymore, said Sengoku as the injured soldier started to tremble. It's Jack, Fleet Admiral. What was the 16th branch doing when our long pirates took control over the Kanamai Islands? Why didn't anyone inform the headquarters? Asked Sengoku with a calm voice. Jack looked at Gohan, who smiled at him. As expected from an old timer, thought Gohan. So where is Captain Nezumi right now? Asked Sengoku. Jack looked at Gohan, and Gohan gave him a nod. He is dead. Said Jack. Dead? How? Asked Sengoku. Because I killed him, this time Gohan answered the question himself. Sengoku looked surprised but didn't lose his temper and asked, And who might you be? I am Gohan from Straw Hat Pirates said Gohan with a smile. Sengoku looked at the Marine in his office, wanting to know if he had any reports on them, but the Marine shook his head. You might not have heard of us since we have just started sailing, said Gohan. Okay, so why did you kill Captain Nezumi? Asked Sengoku. Well, he was trying to rob people, and he even wanted to kill them. But I didn't exactly kill him, I just threw him, and he died from the impact. I am not lying. You can ask your subordinate. But are all Marines this week? Said Gohan with an innocent smile. Sengoku started shaking in anger but controlled himself. What do you want, pirate? Said Sengoku with anger. Oh, straight to the business. Said Gohan. Then he stopped smiling and said, I don't want anything from you, neither do I want you to know that marines are corrupt because you already know that, don't you? Said Gohan. I just wanted you to know that just yesterday our long pirates slaughtered a village. Men, women, children, they killed everyone. You can only imagine how many people they have killed in these past eight years, said Gohan with a calm voice. Gohan looked at Nami and Nojiko and said, eight years ago they killed a woman who was the mother of two girls, they were not her biological children. She rescued them from a war-torn island. They were happy, but Arlong took their happiness by killing the woman right in front of her daughters, said Gohan with a sad face. Nami and Nojiko started crying. You know what's more tragic? She was a former Marine. I will not tell her name because you don't deserve to know it. Well, we can't change the past, but don't worry, we the Straw Hats will take care of. Our long pirates as you guys are not competent enough, said Gohan. What? Said Sengoku. And if you have more problems like this in East Blue, you can tell me because I like helping weak people, said Gohan with a smile. The call was cut. In Sengoku's office, Sengoku was gritting his teeth from anger, seeing that, the no-name marine wanted to sneak away. Wait. No one should know about what happened just now. Do you understand? Asked Sengoku. The marine officer nodded solemnly. And I want full details about every member of Straw Hat Pirates, said Sengoku. Yes, replied the officer. At Koko Yasi, Gohan walked towards the marines and started throwing them away. After throwing them, he looked at Jack. Don't worry, I am going to throw you. Let's go and visit your branch, said Gohan. He then looked towards Nami and said, You know, Nami, you are the bravest person I have ever met. But since we have set foot on this island, you are being nothing but stupid, said Gohan. Did you really think that Arlong is the kind of person who will keep his promise? Asked Gohan. By now you should know what to do. There are four people waiting for you, if you go towards Arlong Park, 
you will be able to see them. You shouldn't be ashamed of asking for help from your friends, said Gohan with a genuine smile. Oh yes. Tell them I will be there after taking care of the remaining marines from the 16th branch, said Gohan and disappeared, taking Jack with him. Nami wiped her tears and started walking towards our long park. It didn't take long for him to take care of the marines. So, Jack, do you have a snail that takes pictures in this branch? Asked Gohan. Yes, we do have one, Jack replied fearfully. Okay. Go get it, ordered Gohan. A few minutes earlier, in our long park, a fishman looked up and said, Did you hear that? A a a a a a a a Bam. But before anyone could reply, they heard a scream, then something tore through the building's upper floor and fell before them. Who dares to attack us? Said Kurugi. Arlong stood up from his chair and walked towards the thing which fell just now. Arlong looked at it, it was a mangled body of a marine. Arlong looked closely, and his eyes widened. Nezumi. Said Arlong. It really is Nezumi, but who killed him? Asked Hachin. He was gone to get Nami's money. That means Nami got herself a backer, said Arlong. What? She dare. Let's go and kill them, said Chu. Don't worry, she will come here, then we will show what true despair feels like, said Arlong with a grin. After a few minutes, the gate of Arlong Park got blasted open, and Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and Usopp walked in. Which one of you is Arlong? Said Luffy with a calm. But before Arlong could reply, Gohan appeared with Jack. Yo. Hmm. You guys are already here? Has the fight started? Asked Gohan. No. We were just about to kick their asses, replied Sanji. Oh. That's good. Look, I brought a cameraman, he will take our cool looking pictures. Then we will look cool in our wanted posters. I don't want to take any chances, thought Gohan. And I also got this, said Gohan, showing them a box of bullets. So don't worry about those weaklings. Now go select your ugly ones and get started, he said to the crew and looked at Jack. I have high expectations of you, so don't disappoint me, or you will fly. Said Gohan with a smile. Then he disappeared and appeared behind Hachin and knocked him out. Can't let you die here because you are going to be useful. Hey Zoro, you can sleep this out, right? Captain. Asked Gohan. Yes, Zoro is injured, so he should rest, said Luffy. What? But I can fight. Before Zoro could say anything else, Gohan knocked him out too. Well then, gentlemen. No, sorry, you filthy bastards. Let the show begin. Comment. Two comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 16, Goodbye my friend. Gohan lifted Zoro onto his shoulder and started walking towards the boundary wall. Who is this monster? Why is he in the east blue? That speed. And his careless attitude in the middle of this chaotic situation, as if everyone here is nothing but clowns here to entertain him, thought Arlong. Arlong clenched his fist. Why the hell is he with these no-name pirates? He is way too strong for us. I have to run away from here, he thought as he made up his mind. Hey, look. There's an audience for the show. Hello, everyone. Don't worry, my friends are going to put on a good show for you guys, Gohan said with a cheerful smile as he looked at the villagers outside our long park. Everyone's sweat dropped by looking at his behavior. Hey Johnny. Yosaku. Here, take care of Zoro, said Gohan, handing Zoro over to them. Yes, big brother Gohan. Said both Johnny and Yosaku. As he did that, a fight started in our long park. Seeing that, Gohan jumped onto the boundary wall and sat down. Then he started flicking bullets at the fishmen. Ah. Eek. Ka. One after another. Fishmen started falling down. One of the fishmen jumped into the water in an attempt to save himself from the bullets. So you want to cheat? Said Gohan as he flicked a bullet with more power. Water splashed as if someone had fired a cannonball at the water. After a few seconds, a bloodied corpse of a fishman started floating on the water. What should we do? How do we fight this monster? We can't even hide from his attacks. Fishmen started getting hopeless. Yes. Those are the faces I want to see. Feel the same despair that the people of this island have felt for the last eight years and die with regrets. Muttered Gohan with anger. As Gohan was torturing fishmen, Sanji and Kurubi had started their fight. Sanji was fighting more seriously because he didn't want to make Gohan angry, so he was dominating the fight. Usopp was running from Chu, just like in the anime, and Luffy was attacking Arlong. But Arlong was dodging his attacks while looking for a way to escape. Gohan looked their way. Oh, so he figured out that he is fighting a losing battle, thought Gohan. Oi, Arlong. If you are trying to escape, then you better throw that thought away. Because even if Jinbei comes here, he will not be able to save your life. Said Gohan while looking at Arlong with a smile. Arlong stopped and lowered his head. Then suddenly, he started laughing. Ha ha ha. So I am going to die anyway, said Arlong hysterically. 
then I will at least take the straw hat boy with me, he said with a crazed look. Gohan looked at Arlong's face. Finally, a good fight, Gohan thought as Arlong started attacking Luffy recklessly. Their fight turned brutal pretty quickly as both Arlong and Luffy were bleeding from multiple places. Sanji had taken out Kurubi. Usopp had also returned and was bragging in front of the villagers. After a while, Luffy beat Arlong in a close fight. Gohan looked at the people celebrating their freedom from Arlong pirates. Do you see that, Jack? This is what was stolen from them eight years ago. They finally regained it. Humans are born to be free. No matter for how long you deprive them of their freedom, they will regain it one day. This is what this crew represents. We are the symbol of freedom, said Gohan while looking towards Luffy and the others. Well then, it's time to clean up, said Gohan as he flicked bullets at Kurubi and Arlong's heads, ending their lives. He killed Chu as well. Then he picked Hachin and took him to the beach and woke him up by slapping him. What? Where am I? You. Hachin got shocked after seeing Gohan. Okay, octopus, you can go back to where you came from, said Gohan. What? Why? And what happened to Arlong and others? Hachin asked in panic. I have already sent them to the place they deserve, said Gohan with a smile. Hachin understood the meaning of his words and got sad. Then why let me leave? He asked in confusion. Why? Because I want to. That's why. Said Gohan as a matter of fact. Now you better get going before I change my mind, said Gohan as the smile on his face broadened. Hachin quickly called out Momu, and they ran away. I didn't know I would enjoy being in this world so much, thought Gohan. Let's go back, they should be about to start partying. That Sanji better prepare some delicious food, he thought as he gulped in anticipation. But first, he took Jack to the marine branch and made him send the crew pictures and details of the fight. After everything was done, he looked at Jack and said, We had a great time today, didn't we? Asked Gohan in melancholy. Why yes, replied Jack in confusion. Just like how every good thing comes to an end. This day has also come to an end, for you, Jack. Said Gohan while holding Jack's shoulder. Jack started trembling after hearing Gohan's words, and tears started streaming down his face. No. Please forgive me. I did everything you told me to do. I will accept the Marine's punishment, I swear I will not run away. Please, you promised not to kill me. Beg Jack. You are making me look like a bad guy, thought Gohan. And I am going to keep my promise. I will not kill you. Said Gohan while looking at Jack's eyes. But his grip on Jack's shoulder became stronger. All I will do is throw you towards your death, said Gohan as he threw Jack away. No. Jack's figure and his voice disappeared. Goodbye, my friend. I will remember you for an hour or two, Gohan thought with a sad look. After three seconds, he sighed and thought, now, only Sanji's food can soothe my heart. Well, I better go back quickly, or that rubbery bastard will finish some of the dishes. I want to taste every dish, thought Gohan as a smile came back to his face, and he started running towards Kokoyasi village with a sunny smile. In the end, he forgot about Jack in just one minute. In the village, everyone was singing, dancing, and eating. Gohan looked towards the food stalls and started eating different dishes with a blissful smile. When Gohan was enjoying the food, Nojiko approached him with a drink. Hey. Do you only plan to eat? Here's a drink for you, she offered him a drink. But Gohan made a disgusted face and said, I don't drink alcohol. It smells disgusting, and... I am pretty sure it will taste disgusting, said Gohan, and the smile on Nojiko's face became awkward. Nojiko-san, you don't have to care about this brute. Come, let's dance said Sanji as he took the drink from her. Gohan gave him an unimpressed look but started eating again. I love this world, he thought. The next day, everyone still wanted to party, but Gohan put a damper on their plans. We have killed a lot of marines here, so we should leave before the people here get implicated because of us, said Gohan while everyone thought, you are the one who killed them, though. There were some protests, but in the end, they decided to leave at noon as Nami needed time to say her goodbyes to the villagers. Oh yes. I have seen you guys fight yesterday, and I am not impressed. So you guys better be prepared for some hard training, said Gohan with a smile as Sanji started trembling. At noon, they finally set sail. After a few minutes, when everyone was on deck, Gohan said, since now I am a part of this crew, it's time you guys know something about me, said Gohan as he went on to tell them the same lies he told Sanji and Zef. So you are from a different world? Asked Nami with the look that said, I don't believe you. Zoro and Usopp had the same look as well. Only Luffy believed. So cool said Luffy. Can you do magic? Asked Luffy in anticipation. I was getting to that. As you guys have seen, I am pretty strong. Well, that's because I have something in my body that every living being has in theirs, and it's called key. Comment. Two comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 17, Unlocking the Power Within, The Key Revelation. Key? 
What is that? Is it tasty? Asked Luffy. Ki is a special kind of energy that every living being in my world has, but for humans, it was very difficult to use, said Gohan and continued, people from some special races can use Ki way better than humans, and Xians are one of them, said Gohan. So that's why you are so powerful, because of that Ki, said Zoro. Yes, said Gohan. Can you show us that Ki thing? Asked Usopp. Yes. There's a way to visualize Ki. It's called a Ki Blast. Ki allows us to protect our bodies. For example, Luffy hit me with a punch, said Gohan. Okay. Gum gum, rocket. Called out Luffy and attacked, but when Luffy's fist hit Gohan's body, he didn't budge. Ow, it hurts. Shouted Luffy in pain. Everyone looked shocked. How did Luffy get hurt? Isn't he made of rubber? Asked Nami. That's because I was covering my body with Ki, and it looks like I can hurt Devil Fruit users by using Ki, said Gohan with a smile. That's not all, it makes me fast and strong, said Gohan. How strong? Asked Sanji. You mean how strong I am? Asked Gohan, and Sanji nodded. Well, if I want to, I can destroy this world right now. Said Gohan with a smile. What? Everyone shouted in horror. Stop making those faces. If I destroy this world, I would die too. And why would I destroy this world? I love being here. My world was boring, but this is such an exciting place, Gohan thought with a smile. Everyone sighed in relief. And that takes us to the Key Blast. Said Gohan. Key Blast is the reason I am confident of destroying this world. For Key Fighters, Key Blasts are their main weapons. The more powerful a person is, the more destructive their Key Blast will be, explained Gohan. That's where you get your answer, Usopp. Said Gohan while looking at Usopp. Visualization of the key is the first step to learn the key blast, said Gohan. Let me show you. Look at my palm, said Gohan. Suddenly, a small sphere of light started levitating over his palm. Do you guys see this? This is key, said Gohan as everyone looked in awe. Now, let me up the power a little, said Gohan as the sphere started to get bigger, and the wind started to blow around him. Once the size of the sphere reached the size of a tennis ball, Gohan asked, looks beautiful, right? With a smile as everyone looked mesmerized by the sphere. Nami got close to it to have a better look. Be careful, if you touch it, then it will be the end of this world, said Gohan while looking at Nami. What? Nami jumped back. Put it away. Now. She yelled at Gohan as everyone else was also terrified. Okay, okay. Stop shouting, said Gohan as he put away the sphere. Nami and Usopp slumped down to the ground. You. You are not allowed to use that key blast thing, especially when you are close to us, ordered Nami. Luffy. Tell him not to use it. What if he killed us all by accident? Then how would you become the Pirate King? Said Nami. What? Please don't use it. Said Luffy, even though he wanted to see it. Don't worry, I will only use it if there's no other choice. And if I want to use it, I can make low-power ones like this, said Gohan as he walked towards the railing and shot a key blast from his index finger. Around 2 to 3 kilometers away from the Mary, a blinding light could be seen, then boom. A blast rang out as Nami covered her ears. A big shockwave spread out, which resulted in big waves in the ocean, but that didn't affect the going Mary, because Gohan protected it with his key. Low power ones, he says. Muttered Usopp. You really are a monster, Gohan, thought Sanji. Okay. You are very powerful, but why are you showing this to us? Asked Zoro. Suddenly, Nami had the look of realization. Do we also have that key thing? Asked Nami. Really? I can shoot lasers too. Asked Luffy in excitement. No. You guys don't have it. In fact, nobody other than me has it in this world, thought Gohan. Everyone looked disappointed after hearing that. But you guys have different energy inside you. In fact, every living thing in this world has it, said Gohan with a smile. Really? What is it? Asked Sanji. I don't know, of course, he knows, but it feels like key but not at the same time, said Gohan. So, I have a proposal for you guys. I want to conduct an experiment. I will infuse my key into your body and try to combine it with the energy you guys possess, said Gohan. But they were not convinced by it, except for Luffy, but Nami stopped him. Don't worry, I have already done it once but by accident, said Gohan. Do you mean Mika? Asked Sanji. Yes, when I was holding her that time, I unconsciously infused my key into her body. And there were no side effects. That energy swallowed my key, and together they became something different. She became a lot stronger, said Gohan. I couldn't observe for long, but because of Ki, that energy was recovering ten times faster, and it was also increasing at the same rate. And the most important part, the healing process also became faster, said Gohan while looking at them. How about it? Does anyone want to try? Asked Gohan. 
everyone started thinking, and Luffy was smiling. Just as he was about to go towards Gohan, I will do it. Said Zoro while looking at Wado Ikemanji as he approached Gohan. Gohan told him to sit down. After Zoro sat down, Gohan placed his palm on Zoro's back and started channeling the key in his body. He guided his key towards where Haki is located. Just as the key got near to Haki, it swallowed the key and became dark red with a dark greenish tint. Suddenly, Zoro's body started creating shock waves, but before things could get out of hand, Gohan stopped it with his key. Zoro's skin became red with a greenish tint, and he felt the power coursing through his body. Hmm. So it allows them to awaken their Haki. Gohan thought. Now concentrate. I want you to feel that energy. It's right in the center of your chest. Try to move it in a circular motion, instructed Gohan. Zoro did what he was told, and the size of the energy started getting bigger. That. S way bigger than Mika's, thought Gohan. Okay. You can go and continue to practice somewhere else, said Gohan. Oh yes. Let me see your wounds, asked Gohan. Just then, Zoro realized that his wounds were hurting a lot less. At the speed these wounds are healing, it will take about two to three hours for you to fully heal, said Gohan while inspecting the wounds. Zoro looked at his hands and asked, why did my skin turn red? And I felt like I could see guys even when my eyes were closed. I don't know, that power should be related to this world. I will try to find information about it on the next island. But I have an idea, why don't you try to cover your sword with that energy? It will help you in fighting with devil fruit users, said Gohan. Then I will not have to pretend not knowing anything, Gohan thought. Okay. Who's next? Asked Gohan. Me. Shouted Luffy as he sat before Gohan with anticipation. Okay. Now listen, Luffy, close your eyes, said Gohan as he started the process. But he could sense that Luffy's haki was bigger than Zoro's. Just when his haki swallowed the key, his haki became the same as Zoro's but with a white tint and with a rubbery surface. Hmm. Is it because of his fruit, thought Gohan with a doubtful expression. But suddenly a powerful aura burst out from Luffy. Oh. What power? Is it conqueror haki, thought Gohan. When he looked around, he saw everyone except Zoro was on their knees and trembling. Wow. I can feel so many fish around us. Oh. There's a big one. Let's catch it for lunch, said Luffy with a grin. Concentrate, Luffy, or you will hurt your friends, said Gohan. Luffy frowned after hearing that and started to control his haki. Surprisingly, Luffy was a fast learner. After Luffy was done, Gohan helped everyone else with the process. Nami and Usopp's haki was of the same color as Zoro and Luffy's, except there was no tint. But Sanji's had a blue tint. Gohan looked at everyone and said, you guys have unlocked your power, but how strong you can become depends on your efforts. I will teach you guys some fighting techniques according to your fighting style, said Gohan with a smile. Does anyone have any questions? Asked Gohan. How strong are we compared to you? Asked Zoro. Well, look at it this way. If I am at level 100, then Luffy, you are at 30, Zoro and Sanji at 20, Nami at 10, and Usopp at 8, said Gohan with a smile. But Usopp and Nami looked disappointed. They looked at each other and thought, we are still the weakest. Gohan looked at them and said, Nami. Catch it, he tossed a stick towards Nami. She caught the stick and looked at Gohan in confusion. Hit Usopp with it and hit him with all of your strength, said Gohan. Nami looked at the stick while Usopp looked panicked. Sorry, Usopp, but I am pretty frustrated right now, so please let me release my frustration on you, said Nami as she whacked Usopp with the stick. Usopp closed his eyes in fear and waited for the pain. After a few seconds, he opened his eyes and said to Nami, I knew you would hit me lightly, said Usopp. But Nami had a surprised look on her face. Usopp realized that something was wrong. He looked at Nami's hands and saw that the stick looked a lot smaller than before. What's wrong? Asked Usopp. I hit you with my full strength. Didn't you feel anything? Asked Nami in shock. Hmm. But I only felt a light tap, and it didn't hurt at all, said Usopp. Do you guys see it now? You have become a lot stronger and also faster. So, all you guys have to do is train, and you will become stronger every day, said Gohan with a smile. You two come here. Nami, I want you to learn to control that energy and cover your staff with it, and Usopp, I want you to learn the key visualization. I want to see if it is possible or not. Do you guys get it? Asked Gohan. Usopp and Nami nodded. But suddenly Luffy's voice rang out, Sanji. Food. He shouted. Looks like it's time to eat, Gohan said with anticipation. But Gohan stopped and asked, Nami. How much time will it take us to reach the next island? Around one week, answered Nami after thinking for a bit. I want everyone to make progress in this one week. Whoever makes the least progress will have the honor of having a sparring session with me, said Gohan while Sanji trembled. One week, huh? You better be prepared for a storm, smoker. Gohan thought and started smiling. 
Note, hey everyone. I have tried to make sense of why Gohan would not want to use big guns in One Piece world. Many people had said that DBZ characters are too up and I agree with them, but it's mostly because of Key Blast. I started watching DBZ in 2003 until now I have not seen a DBZ characters destroying a planet by punching and kicking it. If I am wrong then please provide the proof in the comments. If you are enjoying this book. Then please consider voting with the Power Stones. Comment. 13 comments. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 18, An Unforgettable Kiss. Two days later on the going merry, Gohan was standing in front of Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji. Let me tell you the rules. If any of you can land a hit on me, I will teach that person a key blast, said Gohan. Really? I want to shoot lasers from my eyes. Said Luffy with excitement. I don't want to learn it, said Zoro, not impressed with the reward. Oh? But you could do a flying slash with the use of that, and it will be more destructive than the one that my hawk did at Baratai, said Gohan with a smile. Then you better be prepared to get cut, said Zoro as he took out his sword. Oh yes. Your other swords got destroyed. Then I will give you guys a handicap. I will only dodge and not attack, said Gohan. I am not doing this. Sanji thought and started walking away. It's good that you know your limits, pervy cook, said Zoro with a mocking smile. What did you say, you moss head? Said Sanji with an angry face. You heard me, said Zoro without looking at him. Seeing them arguing, Gohan said, I don't have all day, you know. Sanji sighed and said, okay, if we want to land a hit on him, which I am sure is not possible with our current strength, we will have to give it our all, said Sanji while looking at Zoro and Luffy. Let's fight already, Luffy said in urgency. Wait. Said Gohan, and he covered Mary with his key. Oh. Mary is covered in a mysterious thing, said Luffy. That's his key, said Sanji. So you guys can see my key now? That's neat, said Gohan in surprise. This will protect Mary, so you guys can go all out. But I have to keep in touch with the ship, said Gohan while stretching his legs. What are you guys waiting for? Let's get started, said Gohan. Luffy ran back and stretched out both of his hands. He grabbed Sanji and Zoro's shoulders and said, Gum gum. Slingshot. Luffy shouted and came flying towards Gohan, but Gohan sidestepped, and Luffy crashed behind him. IT hurts. Shouted Luffy while holding his forehead. Oh. I forgot to tell you. Since Mary is covered in key, then you better fight carefully. Otherwise, you'll hurt yourself, said Gohan. Zoro and Sanji started running towards him. Zoro from the left while Sanji from the right side. Zoro slashed at him, but Gohan stopped his sword with his index finger of his right hand, while from the left hand, he blocked a kick to the head from Sanji. I didn't even feel anything from that. Are you guys even trying? Said Gohan. But suddenly Luffy shouted, Gum gum. Gatling. But Gohan put Zoro and Sanji in front of the attack. Shit, thought all three of them. Before Luffy could stop himself, Sanji and Zoro got hit by some of the punches. Damn. You gave them quite a beating there, Captain. Said Gohan with a smile. That was unfair, Gohan. Shouted Luffy. You are misunderstanding something here, Captain. Our opponents are going to be some real pieces of shit. They are not going to fight fairly with us, so we have to be prepared for that, said Gohan with a serious expression. Luffy looked angry, and his clothes started fluttering, his hair turned spiky, and his skin turned reddish. Huh? He turned into a DBZ character, thought Gohan in shock. Luffy disappeared and appeared before Gohan. He punched him, but he moved his head away. He is quite fast, thought Gohan. Luffy kept attacking while Gohan dodged those attacks. He can already use it, thought both Sanji and Zoro. They were finding it hard to get a proper look at the fight. But suddenly Luffy's body turned back to normal, he dropped down to his butt, and started panting. You used up all of your energy in just a few seconds. It can't be helped, after all, you just got this power. So it will take some time for you to control your energy. Till then, it will be better for you to not use it in a fight, said Gohan. Luffy looked at his hands in deep thought. Right at that moment, Sanji and Zoro attacked him from both sides, but he disappeared. Shit, thought both Sanji and Zoro as they were about to collide with each other. But Gohan reappeared and pushed their heads towards each other while smiling evilly. No, shouted both Zoro and Sanji in their minds as their lips collided with each other. Their faces turned blue, then purple. Gohan released their heads, and they bolted towards the railings and started puking. Gohan started laughing loudly. Nami came out from the cabin hearing his laughter and asked in confusion, Why are you laughing, Gohan? And what happened to those two? Ha ha ha. Nami, he he he, just now. But before he could continue, both Zoro and Sanji covered his mouth. You are not allowed to tell that to Nami, San. Never. Whispered Sanji. Yes. Whispered Zoro. But by looking at Gohan's face, 
Sanji knew he would definitely tell Nami about it. Listen. If you keep it a secret, I will give you the biggest portion of every dish I am going to make for a whole week, said Sanji. Gohan looked at Sanji and I smiled at him. After that, he looked at Zoro with expectation. Zoro started thinking hard, then gritted his teeth and said, I will give up alcohol for one week. Gohan's eyes widened with shock, then he eyes smiled at him as well. What are you guys whispering about? Asked Nami with a doubtful face. Nami. Let me tell you what happened. Just now, two flies got inside their mouths at the same time, and these two idiots swallowed the flies. Then their faces turned blue and then purple at the exact same time. It was so funny. Said Gohan as if it was the best thing. He he he, what a weird coincidence, said Nami while giggling. This bastard can sure make a story, both Zoro and Sanji thought as their expressions became gloomy. Suddenly Gohan heard a bird's cry. He looked at the sky. A news coup, he thought as he saw the bird dive towards them. Gohan put out his hand for the bird to sit on, but the bird ignored him and stood on the railing close to Nami. Nami took the newspaper from it and gave it some money while complaining about the price. The bird left, and Nami opened the newspaper paper to read. But some bounty posters fell down. From the newspaper. Finally, it's here, thought Gohan as he became excited. Nami picked up the posters and started looking at them. Her face became pale. Sanji looked at her in worry. What happened, Nami-san? Nami looked at them. These are our wanted posters. She then took a deep breath and started announcing. Straw Hat Luffy. 60 million. Rora no Zoro. 30 million. Black Lake Sanji. 30 million. Cat Burglar Nami. 15 million. Great Liar Usopp. 10 million. Death Demon Gohan. 50 million. Luffy started yelling in happiness. Zoro and Sanji were looking at their posters with grins on their faces. Nami was biting her lips in frustration, and Usopp was crying in sadness. I am a great warrior. Not a great liar. Everyone ignored his cries. Nami looked depressed. Why is it so high? Gohan looked at her and said, isn't it obvious? Because we are strong. And also, we did kill a lot of marines there. Nami shouted, you killed them. Gohan started smiling. Anyways, we can celebrate later. But first, I want to tell you guys that only Usopp will be allowed to learn the key blast. What? Why? No. I want to shoot lasers too. They started protesting. Stop. It's very difficult to control the key when doing a key blast. That's why I have decided that only Usopp will learn because it needs full concentration from the user. Usopp is the most suited person here, and I think he can do it better than any of you. And because he is a sniper, it can become his main weapon, said Gohan. Gohan looked at Usopp. How is your key visualization going? Oh. Yes. I think I can do it already. Let me show you. He showed them his palm and started concentrating. A few seconds later, little sparks could be seen over his palm, and then a small light started levitating over his palm. Beads of sweat trickled down from Usopp's face as he tried to maintain the light. Gohan looked impressed. Great job, Usopp. Now let me show you the next step. Follow me. Gohan walked towards the railings. I want you to guide a fixed amount of energy that you can control to your index finger. Then bring that energy to your fingertips and try to shoot it outwards like this. He shot a very small key blast at the sea, and it made a big splash in the water. But it was very weak compared to the ones he used before. Remember to use as little amount as possible because control is the key here. Then after you have mastered it, you can increase the amount. After five days, they finally saw the island. Finally. I thought I would die from boredom, thought Gohan as he looked towards the island. This is where everything starts. Let's see how much entertainment this world can provide me. Comment. Six comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 19, IS that a real nose. After dropping the anchor, Gohan took a proper look at the island before him. Okay, everyone, please pay attention. Because of a certain someone, we are all wanted pirates with big bounties. So, I want you guys to lay low, said Nami. Nami looked at everyone sternly. We will buy all the necessary items and get the hell out of here. So don't cause any trouble. Do you guys understand? Yahoo! Luffy shouted and ran away. Well, there goes the troublemaker. Okay then. I am going for sightseeing, and at the same time, I will try to find some information about the Grand Line, said Gohan and disappeared. Wait. Nami raised her hand to stop him, but he was already gone. Gohan appeared in a crowded area with many shops. Let's find a shop to sell these diamonds. He started searching around and found a big shop named All in One. He went inside and started looking around. So many weird things. What can I help you with? Said a man from behind the counter. Gohan took out the small diamonds. I want to sell these diamonds. The shopkeeper took the diamonds and started inspecting them. I will give you 200,000 for each. 
What? That's too low. 300. 250. That's my final price. Take it or leave. Gohan sighed. Okay. I also want to buy some things. Do you have something similar to what I am wearing? After a few minutes, Gohan looked at himself in the mirror. Damn, I look awesome. He also bought a log pose and other items that he needed. Okay, let's find something to eat. While he was looking for a restaurant, he saw an ice cream shop. Ice cream. He started walking faster towards the shop. But suddenly, he heard a voice. Sorry, little girl, looks like my pants ate your ice cream. Here, buy five more scoops. Gohan looked in the direction of the voice and saw a tall man with white hair walking towards him. The man had two cigars in his mouth, and there were cigars attached to his jacket. Smoker. Gohan smiled and continued walking. He and Smoker passed by each other. But the marine officers who were following Smoker stopped with a shocked expression. Smoker noticed it. Why did you guys stop? Death. Demon. Said one of the officers while looking at Gohan. Hmm. Wait. Shouted Smoker. Gohan stopped and turned around. Do you want something from me, officer? But before you say anything, can you please put those cigars away? As a marine, you should be a role model to the people of this town. Smoker looked shocked and saw that everyone was watching him. He threw the cigars away in embarrassment. You sure have the guts to walk around like that in front of me, death demon, said Smoker while still angry over the loss of cigars. And why wouldn't I dare to walk around here? Asked Gohan as he started to smile. Because I am in charge of this town, and no pirates can walk around freely in Logue Town under my watch, said Smoker with a serious face. Smoker started walking towards Gohan. Since you yourself have come in front of me, I should just put you behind bars. Gohan started laughing, and Smoker stopped after seeing that. You sure can talk big, said Gohan as he disappeared. Then Smoker heard a whisper in his ears. But I don't think you can do it. Smoker's eyes widened. He turned towards the voice, but there was no one there except for the two officers who were now trembling. He, disappeared. Said one of the officers. Saru? Or a devil fruit ability? Smoker looked confused. On the other hand, Gohan finally found a restaurant. It's good that we have Sanji because the food in this town sucked. Suddenly there was a commotion. Pirates are causing trouble at the execution stand, said a random guy. So it has started. Let's see where this execution stand is. Gohan thought as he tried to sense Luffy. There you are. He said with a smile and disappeared. On the execution stand, okay, everyone, it's time for a flashy execution. Said Buggy. You sure are having fun, Captain, said Gohan as he looked at Luffy. Buggy looked at Gohan in shock. When did you get here? Oh. Hey. Look, it's a clown, said Gohan as he appeared before Buggy and started looking at him closely. It really is a real nose. Hey, Captain. I think we should get going. A storm is about to hit this island, said Gohan while looking at the sky. You dare to make fun of my nose. Die. Buggy tried to stab Gohan. But his knife broke after touching Gohan's back. Why don't you go and see the town, Buggy? Said Gohan as he flicked Buggy's head, and it got detached from his body. Way a. Buggy screamed. Buggy's head flew away from the execution area. After that, Gohan pushed his body away from the stand, and it fell towards Kabeji. Captain Buggy. Yelled Kabeji. Meanwhile, Smoker was watching all this from binoculars. Death Demon. He gritted his teeth. His body turned into smoke, and he flew towards the stand. Captain Smoker. Called out Tashiji. Let's go. Yes, ma'am. Tashiji and some marine officers ran towards the execution stand. At the stand, Luffy broke the shackles and stood up. Everyone, let's get out of here. He jumped down and started running towards the port, while Gohan, Zoro, and Sanji started running with him. Where do you think you guys are going, straw hats? Said Smoker as he stood in their way. They kept running. Gum gum pistol. Shouted Luffy, but when he hit Smoker's head, it turned into smoke. You can forget about becoming the Pirate King because you are not going anywhere from here, said Smoker. But suddenly, Gohan appeared beside him and knocked him out. Sorry, but we don't have time to play around, said Gohan as he looked at the passed out Smoker. Captain Smoker. What have you done to him? Shouted Tashiji as she and some marines came running towards them. And you, Rorano Zoro. How dare you deceive me? What? You mosshead, what did you do to this beautiful lady? Said Sanji as he started attacking Zoro. It's none of your business, pervy cook. Gohan appeared behind them and said with a smile, I said get going. He bashed their heads together. Both of them started seeing stars but didn't dare to complain. Sorry, miss, but we are in a hurry. Here, catch. Said Gohan as he tossed Smoker at the Marines. Captain Smoker. Marines called out. 
Gohan and others started running again. Oi! Why are you both running so slow? Look, Luffy is already gone. Said Gohan with irritation. Zoro and Sanji realized that Luffy was not with them. Where did he go? Did he get lost? Said Zoro. No, he is already at the port, said Gohan. What? How? Asked Sanji. Don't you know already that you guys are a lot faster now? So start running at full speed. And Zoro, if you get lost, I will beat you up for a whole week, warned Gohan. Zoro got panicked. He closed his eyes to sense. After that, they raced towards the port in high speed. Zoro and Sanji were amazed by their own speed. This is nothing, you guys will be way faster in no time, said Gohan. You mean, we will be able to disappear and appear in random places like you? Asked Sanji in excitement. Not as fast as me, but yeah, you will be able to do it, replied Gohan. Look, we are already here. They looked ahead to find that they were already at the port. Hey. Why are you guys so slow? Shouted Luffy. That's because of these idiots, and take that finger out of your nose. That's disgusting. Gohan yelled at him. Gohan looked at the side to see a man and a big lion lying there. What's wrong with these guys? Those guys were trying to burn Mary. So we beat them up, Nami said angrily. Gohan, you know I knocked down that big lion. Said Usopp with a triumphant look. By accident. Said Nami. What? I planned it to perfection, complained Usopp. Okay, let's get going before the storm hits this place, said Nami. Everyone got on board, but Luffy turned sharply towards a building in the distance. Oh? So he can sense him too. Gohan thought. Everyone else looked towards the building. What happened, Luffy? Asked Zoro. I felt someone on top of that building. Gohan, did you sense him too? Asked Luffy. Yes, he was following us for quite a while, and he is pretty strong, said Gohan with a smile. How strong? Asked Zoro. Stronger than Hawkeye, said Gohan. What? Shouted Usopp, then started trembling. Don't worry. I don't think he wants to fight us. If he wanted to, he would have done it, said Gohan. Okay, pull the anchor. Next stop. Grand line. Shouted Luffy with his arms spread out. Yes. On top of the building, Haki. He can already use it. Father, it looks like Luffy is going to cause you to have lots of headaches, Dragon thought with a smile. Comment. Four comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 20, Chaos, Adventure, and Death. Nami-san. We are approaching a storm, reported Sanji. Then we are on the right course, said Nami. Yay. We are finally going to the Grand Line, said Luffy, started bugging Zoro and Sanji. After a few minutes, everyone sat around the dining table. I have already heard the rumors, but I didn't believe in them. But it looks like we have to cross the red line to reach the Grand Line, said Nami, showing everyone the map. It says that there's a canal that goes up the mountain. That's the route to the Grand Line, said Nami. Goes up the mountain? How is this possible? Asked Zoro. She is correct. The current in that place is so strong that it takes ships up the mountain. That's why it's called Reverse Mountain, said Gohan. Everyone looked at him. How do you know this? Asked Nami. Didn't I tell you before leaving for sightseeing that I will look for information about the Grand Line? I talked to an old man, he told me so many things about the Grand Line, said Gohan. Now I don't have to worry about them getting suspicious. I can give them information about anything I want, he thought. Really? What did he tell you? Asked Usopp. No. I don't want to know anything, Luffy got angry. Don't worry, Captain, he didn't tell me anything that could spoil our adventure, said Gohan. A smile came back to Luffy's face after hearing that. I will tell you some key information that we have to know about the Grand Line before going there. First of all, the Grand Line is divided into two parts. The first part is known as Paradise. This is the part we are going to enter right now. In this part, the enemies we might face can have the strength equal to a Vice Admiral. And we will not encounter a Marine Admiral in this part unless something major happens, said Gohan. The second part is known as the New World. If One Piece exists, then it should be in this part. But this part is the real graveyard of the pirates because all the powerhouses of this world reside in this part, said Gohan, as Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji looked excited, while Nami and Usopp looked horrified. Speaking of the powerhouses, there are seven warlords and four emperors. We might encounter warlords at any part of the Grand Line. As for their names, you already know about Hawkeye, and he is also the strongest one. As for the others, I will tell you when we face them, said Gohan with a smile. Emperors are the most powerful and influential pirates of this world. There are four of them, Whitebeard, Big Mom, Kaido, and Red Hair Shanks, said Gohan. Shanks? He is also an emperor. Asked Luffy. My father is a part of the emperor's crew. Said Usopp in a daze. 
everyone was shocked by the revelation. But those do not require our immediate attention. This information is for you, Nami. We cannot sail in the Grand Line with the help of a normal compass, said Gohan. What? Why? Asked Nami in confusion. Because every island in the Grand Line has its own magnetic field. So normal compasses don't work there. What we need is a log pose, said Gohan and showed them the log pose. Nami took the log pose from him. There are two types of log pose, the normal one that you are holding right now and the eternal log pose. When we enter the Grand Line, this log pose will start pointing towards an island. When we reach that island, it will take some time for it to reset. Then it will start to point to our next destination, explained Gohan. That means we cannot decide our next destination. This thing will decide it for us, said Nami with a shocked look. Thank you, Gohan. This should be my responsibility as a navigator. I am sorry, everyone, for being incompetent, said Nami as she bowed down towards Luffy and the others. What are you saying, Nami? You are already amazing, Nami. Yes. You are great. Everyone started encouraging her. No. This mistake might have cost us our lives. But I promise that I will never repeat these kinds of mistakes, said Nami with sincerity. Oh, come on, Nami. Even if we didn't have a log pose, I would not have let anyone die. If we had gotten in a tricky situation, I would have just flown to the nearest island to get the log pose, said Gohan with a smile. But everybody got silent after hearing that. You can fly. Show me, please. Shouted Luffy with stars in his eyes. Okay, Gohan started levitating while still in a sitting posture. Awesome. Said Luffy. He grabbed Gohan's shoulders and started swinging. Ha ha ha. This is so much fun. Really? Let me try it too, said Usopp as both him and Luffy started playing around. Why didn't you tell us that you can fly? And why even sail with us? If you can fly, you could visit any place in the world you want, and you don't have to face all those difficult situations that we are going to face in the future, said Nami in confusion. You are correct, I could go anywhere in this world if I want to. But this world is built for the people to sail. I could explore this world by flying, but I want to be an adventurer, not an explorer. I would prefer to sail with my friends over flying alone, said Gohan with a genuine smile. Yes. He is our friend and our crewmate. I will not allow him to leave, even if he wants to, said Luffy while he and Usopp kept swinging. Luffy let go of Gohan's shoulders. Gohan. Please teach me how to fly, said Luffy with a wide smile. You guys won't be able to fly, even if I teach you, said Gohan. What? Why? Said Luffy in shock. That's because the key inside your body is tainted by Haki, so it will be impossible for you guys to have the kind of control required for one to fly. Even the key blast Usopp is practicing right now will not be powerful compared to the standards of my world, said Gohan. Everyone looked deflated. What's Haki? Asked Zoro. Oh yes. The energy in your body is called Haki. There are three types, observation, armament, and conqueror. Because of my key, you guys have unlocked your Haki. And your Haki has also evolved because of the key, said Gohan. Suddenly everyone felt a jolt. It looks like we have already entered the current. We will talk about everything else later. But first, let's get to the Grand Line, said Gohan. Hearing that, Nami got into action. Sanji and Usopp, hold the R. Utter, Luffy, to the sails, and Zoro, help Luffy. As for Gohan. I will protect Mary by covering her with my key. You guys take care of everything else. Nami, just sail without worrying about Mary getting wrecked. Because I will not allow Mary to have a single scratch, said Gohan as he walked towards the deck. You heard him, everyone. Don't worry about Mary and follow my orders, Nami said with a smile. Okay, everyone, let's cross this mountain and go to the Grand Line, said Luffy. Yes. Replied everyone. Gohan stood at the upper deck. This should be a good place to stand. I will not get in their way from standing here. This is going to be a bumpy ride, Mary. Let's cover you up. Everyone felt Mary getting covered up in the key. They started doing their work. Guys, I can see the red line, said Gohan. After a few minutes, Sanji said, this is going above the clouds. Nami added, Zoro, look with the binocular, I can see the crack, that should be the canal. Nami looked at the mountain, the current. It's really flowing upward. Sanji. Usopp. Hold the rudder, let's sail straight ahead, said Nami. This time the rudder didn't break because it was also covered in the key. So they were able to enter the canal safely. Yahoo! Shouted Luffy. Wow! It's like a reverse water slide, said Gohan. What's a water slide? Asked Sanji. It's just a slide with water flowing on it, said Gohan. Sanji nodded. When they reached the summit, Zoro said, You guys better hold onto something, said Gohan with a smile. The ship got thrown into the air because of the current and landed after a few seconds. That was awesome, said Luffy. No. 
It was not, everyone except Gohan shouted back. Beautiful. Muttered Gohan while looking ahead. Everyone else also looked ahead. Grand line, said Luffy. This is it. One piece is out there somewhere, he thought. All blue is somewhere in that ocean, thought Sanji. Hawkeye. Thought Zoro. I will navigate through this ocean, thought Nami. I will definitely become a brave warrior, thought Usopp. Gohan started grinning. A place full of chaos, dangers, and adventure. Also death. Everyone else felt a shiver down the spine. That bastard is definitely thinking about something evil, they thought. Hmm. Why are you guys looking at me like that? Asked Gohan with a smile. No. We were just looking back at the summit. Yes. It looks beautiful. They started making excuses. Hey. There's something ahead, said Gohan. What? A mountain. Said Sanji. But there shouldn't be one. There's nothing on the map in that position, said Nami in panic. That's not a mountain. Whatever it is, it's alive, said Gohan. What? That thing is alive. Said Usopp as he started shaking. Suddenly, they heard a loud noise. That sounded like a whale, said Gohan. But how can a whale be so big? Asked Nami. Well, that's the grand line for you. There are some creatures who are bigger than an island. And we will be seeing many of them, said Gohan. We have to do something, or we will collide with that whale, said Nami. I see a path on the left side of that whale. We can go around it and hope that it will not notice us, said Zoro while looking with the binocular. Luffy, Sanji, and Zoro will move the rudder. Gohan will keep the ship protected, and Usopp, keep an eye on that whale, ordered Nami. Gohan looked at Laboon. That's some nasty wounds. I wonder how big Zuncha is. They started sailing around Laboon. But when they got near the whale, it made a loud noise. Everyone covered their ears, and the whole ship was shaking because of it. Suddenly, they heard Luffy's voice. Shut up. Luffy hit Laboon in the eye. Since Luffy was stronger this time, Laboon felt pain from his punch and got angry. Before they could reprimand Luffy, it swallowed them. Inside the whale's mouth. Gohan. Do something or we will die, cried Usopp. Everyone else was also looking at him with hopeful eyes. Gohan stopped Luffy from punching the whale from inside. Don't worry. I can sense some people in this whale, that means there might be people living inside this whale. So we will not die, said Gohan and continued, also don't you guys want to see what a whale looks like from inside? No. They shouted. But Gohan kept smiling at them. You are crazier than that rubbery idiot. Comment. Five comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 21, You Are the Winner. Gohan ignored them and concentrated on protecting Mary. After a few minutes, they found themselves in front of a small island with a house. Hey. Didn't we get swallowed by the whale? Asked Nami with a dazed look. Everyone nodded in a daze as well. Then why the hell is there a sky and an island with a house? Asked Nami speechlessly. This must be a dream, said Usopp. Luffy pinched Usopp's cheeks. Aaaa. Let go, you bastard. Said Usopp while hitting Luffy's head. Why are you hitting me? I was just checking if this is a dream or not, complained Luffy. Gohan sighed while observing their antics. We are not dreaming, and I don't think that sky is real. But it looks real to me, said Sanji. Look closely, there is no sun. Someone must have painted it, said Gohan. I wonder how long it took for him to paint it? Suddenly, a big squid popped out from the water. Ah! That's a king squid, Nami, and Usopp started crying. Just as Luffy was about to punch it, three massive hooks shot out from the house and pierced the squid from behind. At least someone's in the house, said Zoro. The next moment, the sound of footsteps rang out, and an old man walked out of the house. He looks like a flower, said Gohan. The old man looked at them with a serious expression and started walking towards the beach chair. He sat down on the chair and started reading the newspaper. Say something, you jerk. Shouted Sanji with anger. The old man looked towards them but said nothing. If you wanna fight, we'll fight, you bastard. We also have cannons, shouted Usopp from the back. As they were talking to the old man, Gohan noticed that Luffy was looking at the door on the fake sky. Do you want to see what's in there? Gohan asked. Yes, replied Luffy. Okay. Here you go. Gohan threw him towards the door. Everyone looked shocked. Luffy. Luffy landed perfectly on the small platform before the door. Did you guys see that? A perfect throw. Said Gohan with a smile. Stop throwing people around. They shouted at him. But suddenly, their ship started rocking. What's going on? Shouted Nami as everyone else was also confused by the situation. Hey old man. What's going on? Asked Usopp. The old man looked towards the fake sky. That whale. Laboon has started hitting the red line. So that's why there were so many big scars on his forehead, said Nami with the look of realization. 
But why is he doing that? Asked Usopp. This must be because of this old man. He must be suffering because of what this old man has done with his body, said Nami in anger. Gohan shook his head and looked towards Luffy. Oi Luffy! Open the door and go inside or you will fall down in the water! Shouted Gohan. Luffy opened the door, but just as he was about to go inside, a man and a woman tried to ambush him. Luffy dodged and slammed their heads together. What's wrong with these guys? Said Luffy in confusion. Vivi and that must be Mr. Nine, thought Gohan. He appeared beside Luffy. Let's go back, you won't be able to explore this place in this situation, said Gohan as he picked up Vivi and Mr. Nine. Luffy grabbed Gohan like a koala. Gohan's sweat dropped at that but flew towards the ship. Yahoo! We are flying! Shouted Luffy. Hearing Luffy's voice, everyone on the ship looked towards them. When did you get there? And who are these people? Asked Nami. You guys didn't see? They tried to ambush Luffy. Replied Gohan. No. We were busy watching old man Crocus. He jumped into the water and hasn't come out, said Usopp. Gohan landed on the ship. Huh? He is climbing that wall though, said Gohan while pointing at Crocus. What? Is he going towards that passage too? Said Nami. Usopp, tie them up, I'm going to drink some water, said Gohan as he walked away. After a few minutes, Laboon stopped. Gohan walked out to see that Crocus was on the ship. They are thugs from a nearby island, they are after the whale mead. If they capture Laboon, it can feed the townspeople for at least two to three years, said Crocus, looking at the tied up Vivi and Mr. Nine. Laboon. Asked Nami. It's the whale's name, said Crocus. After that, he started talking about the Laboon backstory. A few minutes later, they got out of Laboon's body. As they were discussing a certain pirate crew, Luffy started walking towards the mast of the ship. Don't even think about it, or I will beat the shit out of you. Nobody is allowed to damage the ship, not even the captain, said Gohan with a calm voice. Luffy stopped in his tracks. I am not trying to save Mary so that you could damage it, Gohan continued to reprimand him. Sorry, Gohan. I just got a little emotional there, said Luffy awkwardly. If you want to fight that whale, go. Use your hands, said Gohan with a sigh. While Luffy was having his fight, I know you guys have woken up, said Gohan, looking towards Vivi and Mr. Nine. What? These guys are already awake. Said Usopp. Please untie us, we are not your enemies. Yes, we just want to go to Whiskey Peak, they said. Whiskey Peak? Asked Nami. Yes, that's where our town is, said Vivi. Hey Nami. Let me see the log pose, said Gohan. He looked at the log pose, then took out another one from his pocket. Where did you get another one? Asked Nami. Those two idiots dropped it, said Gohan while looking at the log pose. What? That's our log pose. Said Mr. Nine in shock. Please give it back, begged Vivi. Looks like you guys are lucky. We are going to the same island, said Gohan while showing them the log pose. Usopp? Untie them, said Gohan. Just as Usopp was untying them, Luffy came back. After saying goodbye to Crocus and Laboon, they started their journey to Whiskey Peak. Why are these guys here? Asked Luffy in confusion. We are going to their island, so they are tagging along with us, said Nami. What? No way. They can't sail with us, they're bad guys. They wanted to eat Laboon. Said Luffy. Luffy. Come here with me, Gohan took Luffy to the side. I think they work for a mysterious organization. If we can find their base, we might be able to fight some strong people, whispered Gohan with a smile. Luffy got convinced pretty quickly. As they were about to sail, Gohan saw a big vulture flying towards them. Unluckies. Shouted Vivi and Mr. Nine in panic. Are they bad guys? Asked Luffy. They are here to kill us, said Vivi. Stop overreacting, I will take care of them, said Gohan, but Usopp stopped him. Let me do this, he said with determination. Usopp pointed his index finger at the unluckies. A small light shot towards the unluckies from the tip of his finger, it hit the bomb that they were about to drop on the ship. Boom. Well, the unluckies were unlucky. Great job, Usopp, as expected of our sniper, said Gohan. Everyone else also looked impressed by the display. What? That long nose has a devil fruit ability, thought Vivi in fear. You have made great progress in your training. I wonder who will be the lucky one to have the privilege of sparring with me this week, said Gohan with a smile. Everyone shivered after hearing that. After the small incident, they continued their journey towards Whiskey Peak. On the way, they faced unusual weather. First, it was sunny, then, it was snowing. After that, it was raining, and again sunny. The current and wind kept changing, so it was difficult to sail. Everyone was working hard, except for one person, Zoro, who was sleeping like a log. It was like nothing could stop him from sleeping. What an interesting place, said Gohan while standing on the upper deck. 
everyone else was lying on the deck with exhaustion. Vivi looked at him. Why was this guy standing there the whole time and didn't help at all? She said speechlessly. Because he was protecting the ship, he doesn't have to do anything else. That's his only duty in situations like this, said Nami as a matter of fact. But how was he protecting it? He was just standing there the whole time, said Vivi in confusion. You guys don't have to worry about that, said Nami as she got up and started going towards the cabin. Since the weather has calmed down, you guys should get back to your training, said Gohan. But everybody groaned. You have to utilize the time you are getting because it will be hard to get training time in this place, said Gohan. He continued, Oi you. With the funny face. Go get a bucket of water, he ordered Mr. Nine. What? Why me? Asked Mr. Nine indignantly. Hmm. Do you want me to throw you over? Said Gohan with a smile. He ran away to get the water in fear. Gohan took the bucket and walked towards the sleeping swordsman. He poured the water on Zoro's face. Phew a a a. Cough. Cough. Zoro started coughing. He looked around and saw Gohan with the bucket. What the are you trying to do? You bastard. He shouted at Gohan. Hearing that, Gohan started smiling. After looking at his smile, Zoro had a bad feeling. You sure have guts to sleep while everyone else was working hard. Everyone. Looks like we already have our winner. Zoro will be my sparring partner for this week, said Gohan. What? But didn't you say that the one with the least amount of progress will be your training partner? How can you go back on your words? Said Zoro frantically. But one should be punished for slacking off. Right, Captain. Asked Gohan. Yes. Zoro you to face your punishment, said Luffy with a serious face. Yes. He should be punished you are correct Gohan, everyone started to give their approval. They were relieved that they don't have to spar with Gohan. You bastard. Shouted Zoro, but everyone ignored him. Why is he making such a big fuss about sparring with that guy? Is he strong? Asked Vivi in confusion. You don't know about us, do you? Asked Nami. Oof. We don't care about some small time pirates, said Vivi with arrogance. After hearing that, Nami gave her their bounty posters. What is it? Asked Vivi and started looking at the bounty posters. When she looked at Luffy and Gohan's posters, her jaw hit the ground. Sixty and fifty millions she thought and started looking at the remaining posters. After looking at every poster, she fell to her knees. Their combined bounty is close to two hundred million. There's no way the guys on Whiskey Peak can handle these guys, she thought in worry. Comment. Seven comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 22, he was about to do something disgusting. What's wrong, Miss Wednesday? Asked Mr. Nine. Vivi handed him the wanted posters. After looking at them, Mr. Nine started trembling. How is this possible? This weak looking crew has such high bounties, muttered Mr. Nine. What's that got to do with you guys fearing that Gohan guy? Asked Vivi. Did you see what his moniker is? Asked Nami. Vivi looked at Gohan's poster, Death Demon. You know why he got that moniker? He has killed over a hundred people, half of them were marines, said Nami, a fearful expression on her face. What? Over a hundred people. Shouted both Vivi and Mr. Nine. Why are you lying, Nami? I didn't kill over a hundred people, I only killed around fifty. As for the rest, I just threw them. It's not my fault that they were so weak that they couldn't even survive a fall, said Gohan while looking innocent. How would a person survive if you throw them thousands of meters high in the sky? Shouted Nami. Unless he knows how to fly or he has a devil fruit ability, said Gohan with a smile. Yes. Nothing will happen to me if I fall from that height, said Luffy cheerfully. Okay. Stop wasting time and get back to your training, said Gohan. Vivi and Mr. Nine moved to the side and started whispering among themselves. What should we do? Is it possible for the guys on Whiskey Peak to defeat them? Asked Vivi nervously. Don't worry. We are not going to fight them head on, so our victory is guaranteed, said Mr. Nine with full confidence. After a while, they reached their destination. Vivi and Mr. Nine bid their goodbyes, jumped into the water, and swam away. This island looks suspicious. Why don't we just skip this island and go to the next one? Said Usopp while looking around nervously. But because there was thick fog around the island, it was hard to see anything. We can't do that, it takes time for a log post to reset. And it differs from island to island, said Gohan. So we have to wait for the log post to reset, said Sanji. There are people watching us, said Luffy. Just as Luffy said that, Zoro and Sanji also sensed them. It's like the whole town is here, said Zoro. When they got close, they heard cheering and shouting, Welcome to the Grand Line. People of the town shouted. Everyone except Zoro and Nami started to bask in the praise. Gohan looked towards the cactus rock. Oh boy. Look at that. So many graves. Thought Gohan. What are you looking at, Gohan? Asked Nami. 
Gohan looked at her and smiled. I am looking at the dead people. Eh. Nami was creeped out because of his answer. Well, anyways, you two don't let your guard down. There is something really wrong with this place, said Gohan with a smile. No. There is something more wrong with you than this place, thought Nami. They got down from the ship. Welcome to Whiskey Peak. I am Igarapoy, the mayor of Whiskey Peak, said a weird-looking, large man. Dude, are you trying to cosplay Newton? No, with your body, it's more like Leibniz, thought Gohan while looking at Igarapoy slash Mr. 8 slash Igaram. We would like to throw a party for your arrival to Whiskey Peak. This island is famous for its liquor and music. So let's have a party to honor our guests, said Igaram. Okay. You guys enjoy the party, I will see you guys later, said Gohan and disappeared. Everyone except the Straw Hats looked shocked by this. What? He, he disappeared. Asked Igaram. Don't worry about him. He likes to do these kinds of things. He doesn't like alcohol. So it doesn't matter if he attends the party or not, said Nami. Is that a devil fruit ability? Taking him down would be tricky, Igaram thought in worry. That's a pity, anyways, let the party begin, said Igaram. While everyone else was having a good time, Gohan was roaming around the island for a few minutes now. These idiots have turned the whole place into a graveyard. These houses look shabby. What a weird place, thought Gohan. Hmm. Looks like they can't wait to get rid of me. Muttered Gohan as he sensed some people following him. Should we attack right now or wait for the right moment? Asked one of the bounty hunters. No. We can't wait. Mr. 8 wants us to get rid of him as soon as possible, or he might ruin our plans. We have to capture him before he runs away by using his devil fruit power, said another bounty hunter. Don't worry, I will not run away. Suddenly, they heard a voice among themselves. What? Everyone looked towards where the voice came from to find Gohan had already appeared among them. Why would I run from ants? I like crushing them, said Gohan. Stop panicking, he is alone. We can capture him, said one of them. They took out their guns and started firing at Gohan's legs, the sound of bullets hitting the metal rang out. Gohan was holding a bullet that was going towards his crotch. Watch where you are shooting, you bastard, he said with anger. While everyone was shocked, he appeared before the one who shot at his crotch and lifted him up. Let me ask you something, do you guys have something to eat? Gohan asked. Eh? Yes, we do. Since we didn't know how long it will take to find you, we brought our dinner with us. Look, it's in that big sack, said the man nervously. Gohan saw a burly man who was carrying a big sack. My friend, why don't you put that sack aside? It will be a waste if the food got ruined because of our fight, said Gohan with a smile. Oh? Yes, said the burly man as he ran to the side and put down the sack carefully. And came back to join the fight. Gohan looked at the man in his hands. I have a wonderful idea. He started throwing everyone around a hundred meters above the ground. It was true. He likes to throw people away, said a man as he was also thrown into the sky. He looked at the hunters who were still in the air and started shooting them with small key blasts. Boom, boom, boom. They started bursting like fireworks. Beautiful. Said Gohan while he kept shooting. Meanwhile, in the town, everyone else also saw this scene. Who's lighting fireworks? Who cares, it looks beautiful, said some random bounty hunter. After Gohan was done taking care of the bounty hunters, he said, Now, let's see, is there anything delicious in that sack? He started having his dinner. After a while, in the town, the party was over. People were lying around everywhere. Now, it's time to start the plan, said Igaram. Are we finally killing them? Asked Miss Monday. No, their combined bounty is almost 200 million. If we kill them, it would drop by 30%. So capture them, said Igaram. But what about the death demon? He is very strong, even his crewmates are afraid of him, said Vivi with worry. I have already sent some of the strongest bounty hunters we have after that guy. So don't worry about him. Now go and capture them. Said Igaram. Hey, sorry, but do you mind letting them sleep? Said Zoro, surprising them with his appearance. How cool. Are you going to save us from them, Zoro? Said Gohan, suddenly appearing next to Zoro. Boss, the guy with green hair disappeared while we were not watching, said a man in panic. He's over there, said Vivi while looking at Zoro. What happened to my men? Asked Igaram to Gohan. Hmm. Those guys. Didn't you all see the fireworks? It was your men who sacrificed themselves for your enjoyment, said Gohan with a smile. Faces of everyone turned white after hearing that. Oh. There are so many of them here. Can you take them all? Said Gohan to Zoro. Shut up. You ruined the moment. Zoro said angrily. Don't be angry, I will let you take care of them alone, said Gohan. It was my plan from the start. Now, you just stand here, said Zoro as he took out his swords. 
but before Zoro could jump down, Gohan stopped him. Zoro. Don't kill that mayor and Miss Wednesday. They are more useful alive, said Gohan with a smile. Zoro shivered seeing him smile like that but nodded his head. Okay, everyone. My friend here is going to take down you guys, all alone, so don't worry about me. I will only stand here, you guys can fight with him however you want, announced Gohan. Bounty hunters look surprised. Is it some kind of trap? Asked Mr. Nine. It doesn't matter. One of you will keep an eye on him while we take care of that swordsman, instructed Igaram. And the fight finally started. He is hiding behind that wall. What are you guys doing? Don't fight him one by one. Just ambush him. Don't give up, you can take him out, Gohan kept helping and cheering for the bounty hunters. That bastard. Cursed Zoro. But even with Gohan's help, it only took half the time to take down the bounty hunters in comparison to the anime. But suddenly, I already know you are there, why don't you guys come out now? Called out Zoro. A man and a woman came out from behind a house. How pitiful, losing against just one swordsman, said the man. Hmm. Mr. Five and Miss Valentine. Called out Igaram. Thank God, guys are here, please help us defeat that swordsman and his friend, said a bounty hunter. Hmm. We are not here to help take out some rookie pirates. We are here to take out some traitors who have found the identity of the boss, said Miss Valentine. While they were talking, Gohan found a gun and took out a bullet from it. He looked at Mr. Five with disgust and flicked the bullet at him. The bullet went through his head, and he instantly died. Gohan appeared before them. Sorry, but I had a feeling that he was about to do something disgusting, said Gohan with a smile. Comment. Six comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 23, You Are Weak. Everyone had their jaws dropped to the floor. Mr. Five. Whispered Miss Valentine. Oi Gohan. Didn't you promise not to interfere? Why do you keep going back on your words? Zoro said in frustration. Stop shouting. You can take care of this girl, said Gohan. When she heard that, Miss Valentine started trembling in fear. Gohan started walking towards Igaram and the others. Now, what to do with you guys? Everyone's faces turned white in fear. No. I have to save my country. I can't die here, Vivi thought in despair. Wait. I am a squad captain of the Alabasta Kingdom security. My name is Igaram, and she is Princess Nefertari Vivi. If you save us, that will be a huge favor to our king, said Igaram. Save you. From who? Myself. Asked Gohan as he continued walking towards them. Suddenly, Nami came running from behind a house. Wait, Gohan. This is a good chance to earn some money, shouted Nami as her eyes turned into berry signs. Hmm. Stop disturbing me, Nami. Can't you see I am busy taking lives? Said Gohan with a smile. Nami froze with an awkward face. Gohan continued to walk towards Igaram and Vivi. Suddenly, Igaram charged towards Gohan. I will not let you harm Princess Vivi. But Gohan disappeared and appeared beside Vivi. He grabbed her by the neck and lifted her up. Princess. Igaram shouted. Vivi started crying and tried hard to get free from Gohan's grip. Seeing that, Mr. Nine and the others started attacking Gohan, but their weapons broke after hitting Gohan's body. Gohan looked into Vivi's eyes. You know, you are quite brave for a princess. You infiltrated a dangerous organization to save your country. But, you are too weak. And weak people can't even save their own lives, let alone a country, he said with a smile. Vivi's expression changed. I, am, not, weak. I, can give my life to save my country, said Vivi with determination. Oh. Then I will tell them about your sacrifice, said Gohan with a smile. No. Shouted Igaram and the others. Vivi closed her eyes in despair. Forgive me, father. I couldn't save our country. Suddenly, Gohan let go of her, and she fell to the ground. Ha 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 ha. He started laughing loudly. He he he. So much fun. Their faces. Ha ha. Seeing Gohan laughing like that, everyone was dumbfounded. Zoro and Nami were speechless. You. Nami ran up to him and started attacking. You keep doing this kind of thing again and again. Do you want us to die from a heart attack? She said while continuing to attack him. Is this guy crazy? thought the bounty hunters. Princess. Are you alright? Igaram ran towards Vivi and asked. I am fine, Igaram. Said Vivi, feeling downcast. Seeing that, Igaram said, you don't have to care about that man's words. But Vivi cut him off. He didn't say anything wrong, Igaram. I am not strong enough to save my country. That's why. Vivi stood up and started walking towards Gohan. She stopped in front of him and bowed down. Please help me save my country. People in my country are suffering every day. I know I'm not strong enough to save my country, but you are. So please help me save my home. Said Vivi as her tears dripped on the ground. 
A genuine smile appeared on Gohan's face. Are you looking at this, Nami? She learns faster than you, he said to Nami without taking his eyes off Vivi. Huh. Nami looked confused but suddenly remembered their talk at Kokoyasi village. But she suddenly became angry. What do you mean? Do you think I am stupid? She shouted at him. Gohan ignored her. If you want our help, you have to ask the captain. It's his decision if he wants to help you or not, said Gohan. Vivi looked at him. Captain? You mean him? She asked, looking at Luffy's sleeping form. Gohan's face twitched. Nami, wake up that idiot, he said irritably. Why should I do that? You do it yourself, said Nami. Oh. So you don't want to do that? Then do you want to have a spar with me? Said Gohan with a smile. Nami ran towards Luffy and hit him on the head with her staff. Wake up. She shouted. Hmm. Nami. Is it time to eat? Said Luffy while half asleep. Seeing that, Igaram asked Vivi, Princess, are you sure they are reliable? I don't know, but we don't have any choice, replied Vivi. What? Who did this? Old man with curly hair. Who did? Tell me. I will beat those bastards, said Luffy in full anger after seeing their condition. Everyone looked at Zoro and Gohan. Luffy, you are finally up. You have to avenge these people. Even though they fed us, Zoro has beaten them so badly. I asked him why he was doing it, but he said he wanted to test his new swords. So he cut them up. It was horrifying, their bodies were lying around everywhere, said Gohan dramatically. Everyone's jaws dropped again. They looked at Gohan as if he had grown a second head. Are you really sure, princess? Asked Igaram pleadingly. I don't know. Stop asking me, replied Vivi in frustration. You. Zoro looked at Gohan speechlessly. But before he could say anything more, Luffy shouted, Zoro. How could you? Luffy was already in DBZ mode. He started attacking Zoro, and their fight caused more destruction to the town. Monster. These guys are monsters. Igaram thought in shock. Gohan was enjoying their fight. Nami looked at him while gritting her teeth. Gohan, go and stop them. Gohan looked at her and said, why? Because you are the one who caused this, said Nami in anger. Not going. If you want to, go stop them yourself, said Gohan. Nami left in frustration and stopped their fight with a fist to their heads. Gohan looked shocked by this. Is it because of the plot armor? He thought. After that, Nami explained to Luffy about the situation. Oh. So they were the bad guys. Sorry, Zoro, said Luffy while laughing. You bastard. You almost killed me, said the irritated Zoro. After that, they started asking Vivi about the boss of Baroque works. At first, Vivi didn't want to tell them, but she accidentally revealed his name. Nami started to freak out, while Luffy and Zoro were excited to face the powerful enemies. So, are you willing to help us? Asked Vivi nervously. Of course. I will kick that croc guy's ass, declared Luffy. Hey, Zoro. What happened to the girl you were fighting? Asked Gohan. That girl with an umbrella? I knocked her out. She should be sleeping somewhere, replied Zoro. Tie her up? We can't let her tell the crocodile about us, said Gohan. And wake up Usopp and Sanji. Nami, is the log pose pointing to the next island? Asked Gohan. Hmm. Yes. We can sail now, said Nami after looking at the log pose. Hey, Igaram. Where do you guys store the fruits? Asked Gohan. Igaram told him the spot. Get ready to sail, I will be right back, said Gohan. Let's hope that theory is correct, he thought. Gohan returned after a few minutes with a small box. He saw that Igaram was sailing away alone. Why is he going alone? Asked Gohan. He wants to act as our decoy, replied Nami. The next moment, boom. The whole ship exploded into pieces. How many kilograms of TNT was that? Muttered Gohan. Well, it looks like he was successful in being our decoy said Gohan with a carefree voice. Everyone looked at him in anger. Stop staring like that, he is alive, said Gohan. What? Vivi spun around to look at him. Luffy looked towards the direction where the ship was. Yes. He is alive. Gohan, go save him, he said. No. Gohan replied. What? But why? Asked Nami. Because he will be embarrassed. He wanted to be useful. If I save him now, he will feel useless. Let him be. He will be able to reach Alabasta on his own, said Gohan. But what if something happened to him? Asked Nami. No. He is right. Igaram is strong enough to reach Alabasta on his own, said Vivi while wiping her tears. Gohan looked at them. You heard the princess, let's get going. Everyone started to run towards the Mary. What happened to those bounty hunters? Asked Gohan. They left before Igaram. They don't want to do this kind of thing anymore, said Vivi. 
When they got next to Mary, Vivi was still looking around for something. If you are looking for that bird, he is already on the ship, said Gohan while pointing at Karu. Luffy was dragging Sanji and Usopp while running towards them. Are they still alive? Asked Gohan. What are you talking about? They are just sleeping, said Luffy. Okay then, let's get on board and get going, said Gohan while jumping towards the deck. The moment they started to sail, Sanji and Usopp woke up. They started protesting against leaving Whiskey Peak. Nami used her fist to shut them up. Hey. Explain to them. Said Zoro. She already did, said Gohan. He looked at Nami and they both started grinning. There's so much fog, said Luffy. Yes, it's morning after all, replied Nami. It's good that we managed to escape the people chasing us, said a voice. Gohan smiled after hearing that voice. That's for sure, replied Nami. We need to be careful not to crash the ship into the rocks, said Gohan while looking at Robin with a smile. Just leave it to me, replied Nami with confidence. Gohan. Your voice sounded weird just now, said Nami. This is a nice ship, isn't it, miss? Said Gohan to Robin. She looked shocked, as he had said what she wanted to say. Everyone else also looked towards her. You are. Said Vivi in panic. I ran into Mr. Eight a few minutes ago, said Robin with a smile. You tried to kill a Garam. Said Vivi angrily. Robin looked confused by Vivi's response. Who cares about that? What are you doing on this ship? Who are you? Shouted Luffy. What are you doing here? Miss All Sunday. Shouted Vivi. Miss All Sunday. What number is she partner to? Asked Nami. She is the partner of Mr. Zero. The boss. Replied Vivi. Crocodile. Said Nami. Is she bad? Asked Luffy. She is the one who knew the boss's identity. We found out about him after following her, said Vivi. More like, I allowed you to follow me, said Robin. Oh. Then she's good, said Luffy. But you are also the one who told the boss about me and Igaram, shouted Vivi at Robin. Correct, said Robin. So she really is bad, said Luffy. Oi. Cut it out, said Zoro to Luffy. Robin started mocking Vivi, which angered everyone and they took out their weapons. Don't point such dangerous things at me, said Robin. As all of a sudden, Usopp and Sanji fell down, Zoro's swords dropped on the deck. Robin took Luffy's hat, which angered him, and he started shooting at her. But suddenly someone took the hat from her. Robin turned her head to see that Gohan was sitting next to her. Sorry. But this hat is very important to our captain. Now, how about we have a conversation like civilized people? Said Gohan with a smile. Comment. Seven comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 24, Just a Lonely Girl. Robin looked shocked. When did he get here, she thought, crossing her arms. Wait. Don't worry, I am not going to attack you, said Gohan. Robin calmed down. Sorry, but you are a dangerous man, so it's obvious for a person to be careful around you, death demon Gohan, she said while smiling. Oh. But you yourself are pretty dangerous, Nico Robin, said Gohan with a smile. Robin became terrified and used her ability on him. Multiple hands grew out of Gohan's back and clasped his head. Everyone else looked terrified. What? Gohan. They shouted. Robin looked at Gohan and said, Clutch. But nothing happened, Gohan's head didn't move at all. Gohan kept smiling at Robin. Why are you panicking so much? Didn't I say I am not going to harm you? Robin looked even more terrified. He is too strong to be only worth 50 million. I have to escape from here she thought, while looking at Gohan with full vigilance. Don't worry, I hate the world government just like you. And if I wanted to kill you, you would have died before knowing how you died, said Gohan while looking into Robin's eyes. Robin looked at Gohan for a while and cancelled her ability. The hands that were holding Gohan's head disappeared. So cool. If I had that ability, I could eat much faster said Luffy with an amazed look. Robin looked towards Luffy and started smiling again. I almost forgot, Robin said and threw a log pose towards Vivi, who caught it. This is an eternal pose for Alabasta. The island you're sailing towards is called Little Garden. If you go there, you guys will be wiped out, said Robin. What? Luffy, let's not go there, said Usopp. Is she a good person? Said Nami in confusion. What should I do? If I don't hurry up, many people can die, Vivi thought, while looking at the eternal pose. Suddenly, Luffy started walking towards Vivi. Who cares about that? He said as he reached for the eternal pose. But Gohan beat him to it. Gohan. Shouted Luffy. But Gohan hit him on the head. Calm down, you rubbery idiot. We will not change our course. But think about it, what if it took months for the resetting of the log pose? Are we going to wait there? What would happen to Vivi's country? Said Gohan. Luffy calmed down and said, Sorry, Vivi. I didn't think of that. 
Vivi looked at Luffy in surprise. What an interesting crew, said Robin. She got up and said, if you guys survive, we will meet again. Goodbye. It's been a while since I got to talk with a smart person, said Gohan while waving his hand. Is he calling us stupid, thought everyone else. Oh. You have a cool ride. Said Gohan to Robin. Everyone else also went to see. There was a big turtle next to the ship. Robin jumped on its back and sat down on the couch. Let's go, Bunchy. She said as the turtle started swimming away from them. Gohan looked back to find that everyone was looking at him weirdly. What? He asked. How can you talk to her like she's a friend or something? Said Zoro. How do you know her name? Asked Nami. She's a bad person. She tried to kill the curly-haired old man, said Luffy. Gohan looked at them and sighed. No. She is not a bad person, Luffy. If she wanted to kill a Garam, he wouldn't have survived, said Gohan. Then she's a good person, said Luffy. No. She's not. She's been helping Crocodile for a long time, said Vivi. You know her name, is she famous? Asked Nami. Yes, Nico Robin. She has a bounty of 79 million berries, said Gohan. Everyone looked shocked after hearing that. Don't make that face. Her bounty is high not because she is strong or something. It's because of something else, said Gohan. And what is it? Asked Sanji. That? I won't tell you right now, said Gohan with a smile. Everyone got irritated by this. Gohan looked at their annoyed faces and said, All you guys need to know is that she has a big burden on her shoulder. She doesn't have any friends or family, and nowhere to belong. She is just a lonely girl, said Gohan. What about her home? Asked Nami. Her home. It doesn't exist anymore, said Gohan with a sad face. Everyone else looked sad as well. Then why is she helping Crocodile? Asked Vivi. Because he knows her identity. If she doesn't help him, he will tell the world government about her. She doesn't have a choice, said Gohan. Then we will have to save her, said Luffy. Huh. What? Said everyone, while Gohan had a smile on his face. She's a good person. So we have to save her from Crocodile, declared Luffy. Everyone was speechless except Sanji, who was dancing in joy. Gohan walked towards Luffy and patted his shoulder. That's what I expect from a captain, he said with a smile. Luffy started grinning after hearing that. Okay. Next stop, little garden, shouted Luffy. But Gohan said, okay. Everyone back to your training. Everyone looked crestfallen after hearing that. After that, everyone started training, and Gohan had a sparring session with Zoro. Well, his punishment was not over. After an unknown amount of time, they finally reached Little Garden. When they entered the island, they saw a big tiger. That's a huge tiger, said Gohan. But suddenly, the tiger dropped down to the floor. What? This is not normal, said Nami in panic. Yes, this place is dangerous. Let's get out of here, said Usopp in fear. Yes. We will wait quietly at the ship until the log pose resets, then we can go to Alabasta, said Nami while looking around nervously. It's no use. Look at Luffy, said Gohan. They looked at Luffy, and he was shaking in excitement. Sanji. Make lunch for me, I can smell an adventure, he said while grinning. Nami and Usopp dropped to their knees. Vivi also opted to go with Luffy. Does anyone want to come with me? Asked Gohan. No. I think I will wait here, said Usopp. Nami nodded as well. But it will be dangerous to stay here by yourselves, said Gohan. Sanji and Zoro also went out to complete. Nami and Usopp looked at each other in panic. Wait, Gohan. We are coming with you, said Nami. But what about Mary? We can't leave her here, asked Usopp. Don't worry, I will be able to sense if someone tries to harm Mary. Then I will be able to come back in an instant, said Gohan with a smile. After a few minutes, they were walking on the island. There are so many weird-looking trees, said Usopp as he and Nami looked around nervously. But suddenly, the ground started to shake. What's happening? Asked Nami in panic. Oh. Look, it's a dinosaur. Said Gohan. It was a huge T-Rex. When it saw them, it roared and charged towards them. Gohan looked at Nami and Usopp and said, You guys. Go take care of that lizard. What? No way. They shouted. Gohan jumped onto a tall tree and sat on its branch. Well, don't die then, he said with a smile. Nami and Usopp started running away. But the T-Rex caught up to them. Just as it was about to bite them, Nami attacked it with her staff in panic. The T-Rex cried out in pain. Nami looked shocked by this. It hurt him. She muttered in confusion. Why do you guys keep forgetting that you are pretty strong? You can take down that T-Rex pretty easily if you want to, said Gohan. Nami and Usopp looked at each other and nodded. Usopp, I will fight him with my staff while you support me with your key blast, 
said Nami. The T-Rex got angry after getting hit, he started attacking Nami with his tail. But Nami kept dodging the attacks with ease. He is very slow compared to the guys in the crew, thought Nami. Suddenly, Usopp hit one of the T-Rex's eyes with the key blast, which destroyed the eye. The T-Rex screamed loudly in pain. Nami used that chance to hit it with consecutive strikes. The T-Rex couldn't hold on any longer and fell to the ground. Nami and Usopp started cheering, but in the next second, the ground started shaking more violently. A big shadow cast over them. Nami and Usopp looked up and saw a giant looking at them with curiosity. They fell to their knees and wailed, why is this happening to us? P.S. Please support me with your power stones. Comment. 9 comments. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 25, Just a Little Fish. The giant had a big beard and was wearing a helmet. You two are quite strong. He said to Nami and Usopp. My name is Brogi, Elbaf's strongest warrior, said Brogi, raising his axe. Nami and Usopp became more scared. Gohan. Both of them thought. By the way, what's your name, little ones? Asked Brogi. But Nami and Usopp were too frightened to say anything. It's Nami and Usopp. Said Gohan, appearing next to them. When Nami and Usopp saw Gohan, they held onto his legs and started crying, Gohan. Save us. Gohan looked at them and lightly hit their heads. What happened to your manners? This gentleman is asking for your names, can't you hear it? He reprimanded. Sorry for their rudeness, I am Gohan. This is Nami and Usopp, he introduced. Oh. You are quite different, little Gohan. I can feel that you are very powerful, but your source of power is different from ours, said Brogi, closely looking at Gohan. So, he can tell that I don't have Haki, Gohan thought, looking at Brogi and asking, while pointing at Nami and Usopp, what about these two? Brogi looked at them. Hmm. Although they are strong, they have a similar source of energy as mine. That's great news, thought Gohan, for obvious reasons. Why don't you guys come with me? I will cook that meat and we will eat together, said Brogi, smiling. Gohan looked at Nami and Usopp, who shook their heads. Okay. I am starting to get hungry anyway, said Gohan with a smile. Nami and Usopp resigned to their fate and started following Brogi with Gohan. As they were walking, Gohan sensed something. Brogi-san, you guys go ahead. I will be back in a few minutes, said Gohan and disappeared before anyone could say anything. Seeing Gohan disappear, Nami and Usopp turned white and cried inside their minds, no. Somewhere on the island, is it going to work, Mr. Three? Asked a teenager. She was short with red hair tied in twin braids. Don't worry, Miss Golden Week, even a sea king will fall asleep after drinking this beer. There will be no problem, replied Mr. Three. Then it's quite dangerous, said Gohan as he appeared beside them. What? Shouted Mr. Three as he and Miss Golden Week jumped back. Death. Demon. Whispered Miss Golden Week. Oh. So, you guys know me. Said Gohan. Mr. Three attacked him with his wax, but Gohan slapped it away. How did you guys know that we were here? Asked Gohan. Miss. Miss All Sunday informed us, said Mr. Three in fear. How vengeful of you. Robin Gohan smiled. A -a 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 -a. Suddenly Miss Golden Week screamed. A big dinosaur was running towards them, which caused her to scream like that. Let me show you who you guys are dealing with, said Gohan as he walked towards the dinosaur. The dinosaur attacked him with its tail. Gohan just stopped the tail with one hand. Time to fly, little lizard, he said and threw the dinosaur in the air. Then, he joined his index and middle finger and slashed in the direction of the dinosaur. Mr. Three and Miss Golden Week were looking at this with wide eyes. Suddenly, multiple explosions rang out, and the dinosaur got blown to pieces. Mr. Three and Miss Golden Week were still looking in the direction where the dinosaur once was. Gohan looked at them. I don't want to see you guys in the grand line again, said Gohan and disappeared. Both of them were still frozen in shock. Miss Golden Week. Let's go to the Four Blues. I will make wax statues, and you can paint them. It's better than dying in this dangerous place, said Mr. Three. Miss Golden Week nodded her head. Gohan got back and had a great meal with Brogi, Usopp, and Nami. Usopp had already become somewhat of a fan of the giant. He swears to become a brave warrior like them. When the volcano activated, Brogi stood up and went to have the promised duel, like he had been doing for a hundred years. They reunited with Luffy and the others. After that, the giants told them that the time for the log post to reset was one year. Everyone was shocked by this and turned their heads towards Gohan. They started praising him for his insight. But suddenly, the voice of a Den Den Mushi rang out. Everyone looked towards Sanji as he took out a Den Den Mushi from his pocket. Why do you have a Den Den Mushi? Asked Nami. I found it on the ground when I was coming here, replied Sanji. Sanji picked up the call. Why did you take so long to pick up the call? Asked someone from the other side. Who's speaking? Asked Sanji. It's me. 
Mr. Zero. Did you take out the straw hats? Asked Mr. Zero. Sanji looked towards Gohan. Gohan smiled and nodded. Yes. They were troublesome, but I have taken care of them, said Sanji. Okay. Then come back, it's time to start Operation Utopia, said Mr. Zero and cut off the call. Vivi was trembling in anger, while everyone else was shocked. Was it Crocodile? Asked Nami. Yes, it was. Now we don't have to worry about the small fries coming after us, said Gohan. Let's get out of here. Next stop, Alabasta. Said Luffy. But you guys have to be careful, there's an island eater close to this island, said Brogy. Island eater? Said Nami. Yes. It's a sea king that is bigger than this island, said Dory. What? Shouted Usopp as he started trembling. Don't worry about it, I will take care of it. It's just a small fish, said Gohan with a smile. After that, they said goodbye to the giants and started sailing away. But suddenly, a big goldfish appeared before them. A goldfish? Said Luffy. Why is it so big? Said Nami. Let's turn around, said Usopp in fear. Gohan walked to the front and shot a key blast at the fish. The key blast dragged the fish for several kilometers, then blew it into pieces. What was that? Asked Vivi in horror. Gohan looked at her. That was the same thing that Usopp used on those unluckies, but just a little bit more powerful, he said. Just a little bit more powerful. Said Vivi, starting to doubt her life. But suddenly, she fell to the floor. Vivi. Everyone called out in worry. I am okay. I just feel a little dizzy, said Vivi, holding her head. No. You are not alright. You are burning up, said Nami in panic. Everyone, look away. Nami, check if there are any rashes or signs of bug bites on her body, said Gohan. Gohan. There is one. And it's purple, said Nami in a hurry. Then we need to find a doctor, said Gohan. Is it serious? Asked Sanji. Yes. That was a prehistoric island, there should be a lot of bugs carrying some deadly diseases, said Gohan. No. We have to go to Alabasta, we have to stop the crocodile. We can't stop, even if I die, said Vivi with a weak voice. But Gohan hit her on the head. And what do you want us to say to your people? Sorry, your princess was so weak that she got killed by a bug, he said with a straight face. You knocked her out. Shouted Nami. Hmm. It's better then. Take her inside, said Gohan to Sanji. Where are we going to find a doctor? Asked Nami. Gohan looked at Usopp and said, Usopp, go bring that box. Which one? The small one or the bigger one? Asked Usopp. The bigger one, said Gohan. Usopp ran inside and brought a box of around the size of 30 cubic cm. Gohan took the box and took out an eternal pose. When I was walking around in Logetown, I met an old man. He gave me a lot of information about the Grand Line, said Gohan. So that's how you know so much about the Grand Line, said Nami, with a look of realization. Yes, he told me there's a place named Drum Island, and it's famous for having the best doctors in the world, said Gohan. Gohan showed them the eternal pose. This eternal pose will take us to that island, said Gohan with a smile. That means we can save Vivi, said Luffy. Gohan gave the eternal pose to Nami. Okay. Let's get to Drum Island as quickly as possible, said Nami. After a few hours, Zoro asked, how's her fever? Sanji replied, it's not going down. Usopp exclaimed, hey. There's someone standing on the water. In shock. Stop the ship, said Gohan. They stopped the ship. Why did you shout to stop the ship? Asked Nami. That guy is standing on a submarine. They want to ambush us, said Gohan. Suddenly, a big submarine emerged from the ocean and transformed into a pirate ship. What? It's a pirate ship. They were sailing underwater. Exclaimed Usopp in shock. A lot of men carrying rifles came out and pointed their rifles at them. They look more like soldiers than pirates, said Sanji. Then a big man who looked like a hippo came out. He was eating meat with a knife, but he also ate the knife afterward. We want to go to the drum kingdom. Do you guys have an eternal pose or a log pose? Asked Wapol. No. Never heard of it, said Sanji. Is that so? Then I will take your treasure, but before that, I am feeling hung, ack. But before he could finish his words, Gohan grabbed him by his chin and broke his jaw. A a a a a a a a a Wapol started screaming in pain. What are you doing to Wapol Sama? He is the king of the drum kingdom. Let him go. Shouted one of his men. Oh. So he is a king. Then he might be useful, said Gohan while looking at Wapol with a smile. Comment. Six comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 26, Nobody Wants You. Didn't you hear what we said? The world government will not let you go for this, said one of Wapol's men. The smile faded from Gohan's face. 
Sanji. Zoro. Take care of them, he instructed. Both of them knew from Gohan's tone that he was serious, so they didn't say anything and jumped toward Wapol's ship. Luffy was also about to jump, but Gohan stopped him. Let them take care of these weaklings. You are our captain. You should only fight strong people. Wapol's men opened fire, but Sanji and Zoro used their haki to protect themselves. After that, it was a one-sided massacre. It only took them around two minutes to clear out the ship. Gohan. There are some doctors on this ship. Should we let them treat Vivi-san? Asked Sanji. There were around twenty doctors following him. Okay. Bring them here. Usopp, tie up this hippo, Gohan said to Usopp. Sanji brought the doctors, and they stood in front of Gohan and Luffy nervously. Select the best five among yourselves and go with that blonde-haired man to treat the patient, said Gohan. They selected the five among themselves, and Sanji took them to see Vivi, while the rest stood in their positions nervously. Gohan looked towards Usopp, who was done tying up Wapol. Usopp? Please tie them up too, he said. The doctors sighed but didn't protest and even cooperated with the process. Meanwhile, in the cabin, the doctors started to diagnose Vivi. After a few minutes, one of them spoke up. We know the cause of the sickness is that bug bite, but we don't have a way to treat it, said one of the doctors. What? Then who can treat it? Asked Sanji in worry. Well, there's someone who might be able to treat her, said another one of the doctors. Who is it? Asked Sanji. It's Dr. Kurha. She is the best doctor in the drum kingdom. She is 141 years old and has known more diseases than anyone in the world. If she can't treat her, nobody can, said the doctor. After a few minutes, they came out of the cabin. Gohan. They can't treat Vivi, but there's someone named Dr. Kurha who might be able to treat her, Gohan nodded, as he already knew about that. Do any of you know how to operate that ship? Gohan asked them. Me. I want to drive it, said Luffy as he raised both hands. Gohan ignored him and looked at the doctors. Four of them raised their hands. Gohan untied those four. Go to that ship and follow us, Gohan instructed. They finally started sailing towards Drum Kingdom again. A few hours later, they reached the island. There was snow everywhere, but Going Merry didn't have a single flake because Gohan was vaporizing all the snow by using his key before it touched the ship. They stopped the ship and dropped the anchor. Just as they were about to go down from the ship, some people carrying guns came running towards them. Pirates. Go back. You guys are not welcome here, said one of them. But Gohan lifted Wapol by his head and said, But we brought your king back, said Gohan. They looked shocked. That's King Wapol. One of them shouted. Some of them started to panic, but some were angry. He's not our king anymore. Yes, he ran away. He is nothing but a coward, they said one by one. Gohan looked at Wapol and said, Looks like nobody wants you here. And you are not useful to us either. So please die. Then he broke his neck, killing him instantly. Everyone's jaw hit the ground. He, he killed Wapol. They shouted at the same time. Gohan looked irritated by their shouting. You guys didn't want him back, so I killed him, said Gohan. That's not how things work. They shouted again. Do you know what you have done? The world government will hunt you down for this, said Dalton as he got to the front. World government? Hey, Captain. Do you care about the world government? Asked Gohan. No. Replied Luffy. Dalton was speechless upon seeing that. We have a patient with us. We just want to take her to Dr. Kurha, and in exchange, we will give you this, said Gohan as he pointed to the space next to Mary. Wapol's ship emerged from the water next to Mary. Dalton and his companion looked shocked. This ship will be yours if you let us through. But don't misunderstand, we will go through even if you guys stand in our way, said Gohan with a smile. Are you threatening us? Said Dalton in anger. Dalton said. You guys should do what they say. They have a patient with them, said one of the doctors from Wapol's ship. Dalton frowned but said, okay. Follow me. Gohan looked towards Wapol's ship and said, oi. Bring some warm clothes for the patient. In a few minutes, they dressed up Vivi in thick warm clothes and followed Dalton. Dalton took them to the town named Bighorn. On the way, he explained to them the situation of the drum kingdom, like how Wapol ran away when the Blackbeard pirates attacked their kingdom. He took the doctors with him. Gohan didn't care about all those things and asked, where can we find Dr. Kurha? Dalton replied, she lives in Wapol's castle. It's located on the Drum Rockies, on the tallest mountain. Gohan looked at Luffy and the others and said, I am taking Vivi to the doctor. Luffy and the others nodded their heads. Yes, you go ahead. We will try to reach there as soon as possible, said Sanji. Gohan picked up Vivi, but Dalton said, Are you going to climb the mountain alone? That mountain is too steep, and there are orphans on the mountains. But Gohan cut him off. Don't worry, I am not going to climb the mountain, said Gohan. Wait, 
Gohan. Take me with you, said Luffy as he grabbed him from behind. Everyone's sweat dropped after seeing that. Not climbing the mountain? Then how are you going to go there? Asked Dalton in confusion. But suddenly, Gohan started to levitate and flew towards the mountain. He covered Vivi in his key so that she would not feel the cold. Dalton looked dumbfounded. He, he is flying. He muttered to himself. We should also get going, said Zoro. Why are you turning left? The mountain is right in front of us, shouted Nami at Zoro. What a strange crew, muttered Dalton. Gohan reached the top pretty quickly. He landed in front of the castle. Looks like they are not here right now, he said. Then let's wait inside, said Luffy. They put Vivi on the bed. A few minutes later, Gohan sensed Kurha and Chopper's arrival. They are here, said Gohan. Outside the castle, Dr. Rain, there are three people inside the castle. One of them doesn't smell like a human or anything I have smelled before, said Chopper. Oh. Is that so? Let's go and see who our guests are, said Kurha. Just as they were about to go inside, Gohan and Luffy came outside. I will talk to them, you just don't create any trouble, said Gohan. Luffy pouted after hearing that. Hello. Sorry for not asking before going inside, but we have a patient with us who needs immediate treatment, said Gohan. A polite one, huh? But I don't treat people for free, said Kurha. Don't worry. You will not be disappointed by the compensation, said Gohan with a smile. After that, Kurha and Chopper went inside. Luffy was about to jump at the Chopper, but Gohan stopped him. It took a while for them to treat Vivi. If you guys had come two days later, she would have died, said Kurha. Just then, the other crew members also came. Gohan. How's Vivi doing? Asked Nami in worry. She's out of danger now. But what took you guys so long? Asked Gohan. Nami got angry and said, it's because of Zoro. He was constantly going in the random direction. Gohan looked at Zoro, who had a few bumps on his head. Suddenly, he sensed a chopper spying on them. Hey. Why don't you come out? He said. Chopper was shocked after getting caught spying on them. He looked at them but noticed that none of them were surprised by his presence. This is because everyone has developed their observation hacky to the level where they can sense things within a short distance from them. Is that a tanuki? Asked Usopp. No. It's a reindeer, said Nami. But he's standing on two legs, said Sanji. He is awesome. He was helping that doctor with the treatment, said Luffy. What? He is a doctor. Said Nami in shock. Yes, he is quite good, said Gohan while smiling at Chopper. Chopper looked at them in shock and thought, they are not afraid of me. Comment. Five comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 27, Epic Pyros. Even if you praise me, it will not make me happy, you bastards. Said Chopper, while dancing in joy. He can speak. So cool, said Usopp. Yes, I have decided. You are going to join my crew, declared Luffy. Join your crew. Said Chopper, in confusion. Yes, we are pirates. I am Monkey D. Luffy and I'm going to become the king of pirates, said Luffy, with a grin. Chopper looked shocked. He wants me to join his crew. They're not afraid of me, he thought. But I am a monster, said Chopper with nervousness. Everyone looked towards Gohan at the mention of the word monster. Believe me, Chopper, you haven't seen a real monster. Compared to him, you are just a little deer, said Sanji. Gohan's face twitched, but he ignored them. Chopper, just imagine, we are going to go to awesome places, eat a variety of foods, and have a good time. So what do you say? He asked with a smile. Chopper looked conflicted. He lowered his head, then muttered, I... I don't know, and he started to run away. Luffy immediately started chasing him. Because of the commotion, Kurha came out. What's going on here? She said, and noticed Nami and the others. Are you guys pirates? She asked while looking at them with interest. Yes, we are the Straw Hat Pirates, said Gohan. Okay. When are you going to give me my treatment fees? Asked Kurha. Gohan smiled and threw a diamond and a key towards her. She caught both of them. This diamond is quite big, and what is this key for? She asked. Gohan looked at her with a smile and said, I took it from a hippo. A hippo? Asked Kurha, in confusion. I mean your former king, replied Gohan. Wapol? Where is he? Kurha asked in shock. Chopper also heard it, so he came back, looking worried. The Straw Hats looked awkward because of the question. He is dead. I killed him before coming here, said Gohan with a smile. Kurha and Chopper's eyes widened with shock. After a few seconds, Kurha started laughing. After laughing for a bit, she said, it's been a while since I had such a good laugh. You were right, kid. I like your compensation, said Kurha with a smile. But suddenly, Luffy came running towards them. 
There you are. Come and join my crew. He shouted and started chasing Chopper again. When can we take Vivi from here? Asked Nami. Hmm. I will let her go after one week, said Kurha. One week? No way. We have to go to Alabasta. It will be too late after one week, said Nami in panic. No. She has to stay here for at least one week. She's too weak right now, said Kurha. What if we have a good doctor with us to take care of her? Can she leave right away? Asked Gohan. Kurha looked at him and frowned. Only after I check if that doctor is skillful enough or not, said Kurha. Gohan smiled after hearing that. Don't worry. You already approved of his skills, he said while looking towards Chopper. Kurha finally understood what he was trying to imply. Do you guys even know anything about him? She asked. We don't have to. Our captain has already decided that he will be our crewmate, said Gohan. He looked towards Luffy and shouted, Luffy. Come here, he called him to the side. Luffy looked confused but came over. Listen, that old doctor knows about Chopper everything. Go talk to her, she might know the reason why Chopper is hesitating to join us, whispered Gohan. Oh. Got it? Leave it to me, he said and ran towards Kurha. Gohan looked towards Chopper and said, Hey Chopper, can you show me, what this castle looks like from inside? Asked Gohan, while smiling at him. Chopper looked hesitant but nodded his head. Gohan walked next to Chopper and picked him up. He put him on his shoulder and said, it will be more convenient this way. Chopper was shocked by this, but he didn't protest against it. They started their tour of the Drum Castle. Drum Castle was like any other castle in a European country. Wapol took anything expensive with him. Should have raided that submarine before giving it to those people, thought Gohan. A few minutes later, they ended their tour because he sensed Vivi waking up. He disappeared with Chopper and appeared beside Vivi. He. Chopper was shocked by the change of scenery. How are you feeling now? Asked Gohan. Vivi looked at him and asked, where is this? This is Drum Castle of Drum Kingdom, replied Gohan. Chopper started doing checkups, so Gohan left to tell the others. Everyone was happy that Vivi was doing fine. After a while, Luffy was finally able to convince Chopper to join them. Gohan carried Vivi outside the castle while Chopper followed them. Chopper. Hop on, said Gohan. Chopper climbed onto his shoulder and sat down. Chopper said goodbye to Kurha with teary eyes, and Gohan flew away, taking both Vivi and Chopper with him. Okay. Let's get going too, said Luffy. You guys. Tell Chopper to look towards Drum Rockies before sailing, said Kurha. Luffy smiled and nodded. Gohan put Vivi on the bed, and Chopper started taking out his medicine and equipment. Sorry for being a burden, said Vivi with a sad face. Gohan looked at her seriously and said, no friend of mine is a burden. All you have to do is take care of your health, said Gohan and walked out of the cabin. After a while, Luffy and the rest came back. Oh. It seems like they ran back from the castle, thought Gohan while looking at their condition. Nami and Usopp were on their knees, sweating profusely. Gohan appeared behind them and held their shoulders. Looks like we have two winners for this week, he said with a smile. The expressions on their faces changed to that of horror. Gohan left them as they wept. Dr. Kurha then had most of the villagers set up cannons pointed into the air and used the cure for the country's cold heart that Dr. Hyrilluk had developed before he died to produce the image of falling cherry blossoms on the snow as a send-off to her beloved student. When Chopper saw that, he started crying. That's some epic pyros, thought Gohan while looking at the image of cherry blossoms covering the entire drum Rockies. After that, they started their journey towards Alabasta. It's time to meet the dumbest character in the One Piece world, thought Gohan, with a mocking smile. Note, sorry for the small chapter. I am out of town, so I had to write it while traveling. Comment. Three comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 28, How's Your Headache? The weather is great today, muttered Gohan. He saw Luffy getting reprimanded by Sanji for eating their food. Usopp, Chopper, and Kara were fishing while eating something. Sanji beat them up as well. Nami and Vivi were discussing the course. Luffy and Usopp tied up Karu on their fish hooks as bait and started fishing. Suddenly, Vivi called out to Nami because there were steam coming out from the water. Nami started explaining how the steam was there because of underground volcanoes, and how there would be a new island in that place after a few thousand years. You are quite knowledgeable, Nami, praised Gohan. Of course, I liked reading since I was a child, she said. They crossed the steam area, but Luffy and Usopp caught someone on their fish hook. That person was Bone Clay aka Mr. Two. They brought him onto their ship and started showing off the power of the clone clone fruit. He turned into Luffy after he slapped him, and then Usopp. He turned into Nami and flashed her boobs, I mean Nami's boobs. Nami knocked him down for that. Gohan gave a thumbs up to Nami. Nobody knows if it was for hitting Bone Clay or for her boobs. When Bone Clay was about to touch his face, Gohan dodged his hand and said, Sorry, I don't like people touching my face. 
Bone Clay didn't mind that and kept enjoying with Luffy and the others. He touched everyone's faces except Gohan and Sanji. After a few minutes, Bone Clay's crew arrived to take him. He said goodbye to Luffy and the others and left. While he was sailing away, they heard his men calling him Mr. Two. They were shocked, while Vivi was terrified because she saw him transform into her father. It was good that I didn't let him touch my face, said Gohan with a smile. He looked at everyone. But I am quite disappointed with you guys. To allow an enemy to touch your face and get all chummy with him, he said with a big smile. Everyone froze and started getting nervous, but Sanji saved them by bringing drinks for everyone. After a while, they reached the port town of Alabasta known as Nanohana. Luffy ran towards the town to eat before anyone could say anything. You guys take care of everything else. I will go follow that idiot, said Gohan, and followed after Luffy. Gohan followed Luffy to a bar. Why do people drink alcohol? It smells disgusting. One can already imagine how horrible it would taste, thought Gohan while pinching his nose. He hesitated but went inside the bar. Inside the bar, he saw the confrontation between Luffy, Ace, and Smoker. Long time no see, Smoker. Are you having a headache after that hit on the head? Said Gohan with a smile. Smoker's face turned black after hearing that. He gritted his teeth and said, Death Demon. How scary. Do you want to kill me? Please don't kill me. I don't want to die, mocked Gohan. Smoke started to fill the bar, and Smoker started to shake in anger. But before he could do anything, Luffy and Ace started running away from the bar. Gohan, run. Said Luffy while running away. Gohan sighed and started running with them. Wait, you bastards. Shouted Smoker and followed after them. Hey Gohan, meet my brother Ace, said Luffy while running. Gohan looked at Ace and said, hello. Ace looked at him weirdly after his greeting. Wait up, death demon. Come and fight me if you have the courage. Today, you will be brought to justice, shouted Smoker. Gohan stopped after hearing that. He looked at Smoker with a grin. Luffy and Ace also stopped because of Gohan. Captain, you guys go ahead. I will meet you on the ship, said Gohan while keeping a grin at Smoker. Luffy stopped laughing and replied with a serious face, okay. What? Are you sure? He is a Logia. Said Ace in worry. Don't worry. Gohan is very strong. And more importantly, he is angry at Smoker right now. So it's better to let him do what he wants, said Luffy. Luffy didn't say anything else and started running again. Ace looked towards Gohan but ultimately decided to follow Luffy. Wait, Luffy. How are you running so fast? Shouted Ace. Gohan looked at Smoker, who was still smoking his cigars. Didn't I tell you that you're endangering people around you by smoking? What are you? A marine or a messenger of death? He said with a mocking smile. People around them were looking at them and they started whispering. I also heard from a doctor that it's best not to stand near people who are smoking, said a man. Yes, smoking is unhealthy, said another. Who made him a marine captain? More and more people started joining the conversation. Tashiji and the other officers started feeling embarrassed by this. Smoker looked around and crushed his cigars in anger after that. You, a pirate talking about the well-being of the people. Isn't it ironic? He said after regaining his composure. Oh. Then he should be talking about it? The marines. Asked Gohan in a mocking tone. Of course. Because we are the only ones who have the courage to fight the pirates and bring them to justice, said Tashiji with righteousness. Hmm. Ha 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 ha. Gohan started laughing loudly after hearing that. Everyone was looking at him weirdly while he kept laughing. But Smoker had a bad feeling about all this. Gohan finally stopped laughing and looked at them. You guys were stationed at East Blue, right? Asked Gohan. Yes, said Tashiji. Gohan smiled. Then do you know about the Arlong pirates? He asked. Yes, we do. You guys defeated them, but so many villages died because of you guys, shouted Tashiji in anger. Oh. That's what happened. But I don't remember anything of that sort. Because Arlong had terrorized that place for eight years, said Gohan with no smile on his face. What? This is impossible. Stop lying. Shouted Tashiji. Really? Why don't you ask your fleet admiral? I had a conversation with him from that rat Nezumi's Denden Mushi after I killed him. Because he was the reason Arlong could terrorize that place for so long, said Gohan. Everyone was shocked after hearing Tashiji mutter in disbelief, no. It's not possible. Gohan replied, but that's the truth. However, I doubt that Sengoku will tell you the details. So let me tell you. Smoker thought to himself, so that's why I was having a bad feeling. Note, sorry, this chapter is short again. I only got four hours of sleep due to all the traveling. But I will post a longer one tomorrow. Comment. Four comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 29, You Are Worse Than a Monkey. Gohan looked at Smoker's face and said, You know, 
the first day Arlong went to Kokoyasi village, he forced villagers to pay protection money. A hundred thousand berries for an adult and fifty thousand for each child. Those who couldn't pay were killed on the spot, said Gohan. There was a retired marine raising two girls, whom she saved from some island. She only had a hundred thousand, but she chose to save the girls with that, said Gohan. Smoker's eyes widened, and Tashiji was biting her lips in anger. Then Arlong shot her in front of her daughters, said Gohan. Pedestrians gasped in horror. Smoker clenched his fist in anger. That was the day that a true marine died. She was doing what every marine should be doing, protecting the weak and innocent. But here you are, sailing island to island, trying to catch pirates, when you can't even protect a single island, said Gohan. Tashiji and the marine officers looked down in shame. You guys like to speak words like courage and justice. Let me tell you what real courage is. After Arlong killed their mother, Arlong discovered that the younger one of the two girls was talented at drawing maps. So he took the girl with him, said Gohan. But that girl, who was just eight years old, made a deal with him. A hundred million berries in exchange for the freedom of Kokoyasi village. Everyone was shocked. What a brave girl, said a random guy. Everyone nodded in agreement. After that, Arlong branded her with his tattoo. Just like the celestial dragons, who also like to brand their slaves, said Gohan. Women on the street started crying, and men were shaking with anger. She started making maps for them, and whenever she was let go, she would sail alone to steal treasures from pirates to reach her goal. Eight years. For eight fucking years, shouted Gohan in anger. Because the marines hide everything about the Arlong pirates. That's why I killed every single marine of that branch. If I had the time, I would have made their deaths more painful, said Gohan with a smile. Now, let me ask you, Miss Marine, do you possess that kind of courage? Asked Gohan to Tashiji, who looked down in shame. That girl has more courage than the whole marines. That's why I am proud that she is our crewmate, said Gohan with a smile. What? Said Smoker in shock. Yes, she is the best navigator in the world. The cat burglar Nami said Gohan while grinning. And for justice, just ask your fleet admiral. What happened to O'Hara? You will get the answer, he said. Gohan appeared before Smoker. He grabbed Smoker's neck and lifted him. You are weak. Even weaker than an ant. Even a monkey would have used the smoke smoke fruit better than you, said Gohan while looking into Smoker's eyes. Captain Smoker! shouted Tashiji. She was about to run towards them, but Smoker raised his hands to stop her, while other officers pointed their guns at Gohan. Only the strong can utter words like courage and justice. And you, Smoker, are not strong, said Gohan as he let go of him. Smoker fell on his back and didn't try to get up. What was her name? He asked in a low voice. Hmm. Gohan looked at him. That Marine. What was her name? Smoker asked again. Belmir, her name is Belmir, said Gohan. What are you guys doing in Alabasta and why did you kidnap the princess? Asked Tashiji. Now you remember to ask that, thought Gohan speechlessly. Does she look like she's being kidnapped? And as for why we are here, don't you guys know about the condition of this country? Said Gohan. We are here to wipe your asses, he said with a smile. And one last thing, Smoker, I want you to convey a message to a certain someone, said Gohan with a smile, while Smoker became confused. On the ship, why do you keep causing trouble? Shouted Nami. Where is Gohan? Wasn't he following you? Asked Sanji. Smokey made Gohan mad. So he stayed behind to talk with him, said Luffy, without care. Everyone started to feel worried for Smoker's life. Let's hope he doesn't kill that marine captain, said Sanji, and everyone except Vivi and Chopper nodded their heads. You guys sure have a lot of confidence in that crewmate of yours, said Ace as he got on board. Of course. They replied. Who are you? Shouted Usopp. He is Ace. My brother, said Luffy. After that, Ace introduced himself properly. They were shocked to find that he was the commander of the second division of the Whitebeard Pirates. Suddenly, Gohan appeared on the ship. Yo. Everyone is back already? How was the shopping? Asked Gohan. Everyone turned their heads towards Luffy. Oh. So you guys were chased by marines as well, he said with a smile. Hey. Did you kill that marine captain? Asked Sanji. Everyone became worried as they looked towards Gohan. No. Why would I? Do you guys think I am a psychopath? Said Gohan with an indignant look. Yes. Replied everyone except Chopper. Gohan's face twitched at their response. Chopper, do you also think that I am a psychopath? Asked Gohan with a pitiful look. Chopper looked confused but replied, No. You are a nice guy, Gohan. Gohan smiled after hearing that. So, you are death demon Gohan, said Ace as he got in front of him. Oh. Luffy's brother, said Gohan. Ace. Poor gas D Ace, said Ace with a smile. Gohan. Do you know? Ace is a commander of the Whitebeard Pirates, 
said Usopp in awe. Really? But he is only a little bit stronger than Smoker, asked Gohan in confusion. The smile on Ace's face froze, and his lips started twitching. Why don't you test it out, if I am strong or not? Said Ace with a challenging expression. This time the crew started to get worried for Ace. Let's forget about fighting, said Usopp. Yes. Yes. Said Nami. But suddenly, they heard the sound of cannons. Five ships were coming towards them. They're billions from Baroque works, said Vivi. Luffy and the others were looking at them. Ace looked at the ships and said, Luffy, I will take. Boom 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 boom, but suddenly the ships exploded. We don't have time to entertain these small fries, Gohan said after firing the key blasts. Everyone was not surprised by this, except for Ace and Chopper. Oh. Gohan. You are so powerful. Said Chopper in awe. Gohan smiled and said, Don't worry, I will make you strong as well. Really? Asked Chopper. Yes, I will personally train you, said Gohan. Everyone looked at Chopper with pity after hearing that, but Ace was still looking at the remains of the ships. What the hell happened? He muttered. Don't worry, Ace. It was Gohan's doing. He didn't want our crew to fight weak enemies, so he likes to get rid of them quickly, said Luffy while grinning. That guy. What kind of devil fruit ability was that, thought Ace while looking at Gohan's back. What are you doing in Alabasta? Asked Luffy. Ace finally remembered why he was there. He told them about Blackbeard and offered them to join Whitebeard, which Luffy declined. Good. If you had accepted his proposal, I would have left the crew. Because only a pirate king can have me as his crewmate, said Gohan with a smile. Luffy smiled widely after hearing him, but Ace got irritated. I will make Whitebeard the king of pirates. Gohan looked at Ace and asked, and how do you know he wants to become the pirate king? Did he tell you? Have you heard him saying that? Ace looked shocked because he had never heard Whitebeard saying that he wanted to become the pirate king. He shook his head. I will make him, even if he doesn't want to, said Ace. After that, he gave Luffy his Vibra card and said goodbye to them. Just as he was about to sail, Gohan stopped him. Since you are Luffy's brother, let me give you some advice. Don't go after that teach guy. He took the risk of killing a Whitebeard pirate. That means he is confident enough to not get killed by Whitebeard or that fruit is very special, said Gohan unwillingly. But Ace just laughed it off and left. Meanwhile, with the Marines, Smoker and the others finally reached their ship. Smoker went to his cabin and called Sengoku. Barabaribra barabaribra kakak. Sengoku speaking. Who is this? Asked Sengoku. Inside the fleet admiral's office, there was a meeting taking place. Three admirals and Vice Admiral Tsuru and Garp were also present in the office. This is Captain Smoker speaking, Fleet Admiral, replied Smoker. Sengoku frowned. Why have you called me, soldier? He asked. I have something of extreme importance to discuss with you, said Smoker. Comment. Six comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 30, Trouble in Paradise, Alabasta's Revelation. Weren't you chasing the straw hat pirates? Asked Sengoku. Garp stopped eating his rice crackers after hearing that. Is that bastard causing trouble? Asked Garp, annoyed. Smoker took a deep breath and said, it's not about them. I wanted to ask you, did you know that the Arlong pirates terrorized the Kanami Islands for eight years? Asked Smoker. Silence descended in Sengoku's office. Garp was looking at Sengoku in anger. Who told you about it? Sengoku asked Smoker while looking at Garp. Death Demon Gohan. He told me that he had a talk with you when they were at Kanami Islands. Is it true? Asked Smoker. Sengoku sighed. It's true. Did he say something else? Did you catch him? Asked Sengoku. Catch him? With my strength, I couldn't even touch him. To him, I am nothing but an ant, said Smoker. What? But aren't you a Logia user? How can he defeat you so easily? Asked Sengoku. This time everyone was shocked. Yes, but my ability is useless against him. He is so fast that it feels like he is using Saru. And he can touch me in my Logia form, said Smoker. Everyone in the office stood up in shock. Hacky user in the first half of the Grand Line. How scary, said Kizaru. Where are they now? Asked Sengoku. In Alabasta Kingdom. He said that they are here to wipe our asses, said Smoker with awkwardness. What? What the hell does he mean by that? Shouted Sengoku. I think there's something wrong in Alabasta. Someone is trying to incite people against King Cobra. There are some rumors that King Cobra is the reason for no rains in the kingdom, said Smoker with a serious face. Sengoku frowned. Do you have any clue who might be behind all of this? He asked. I have a suspect, but I'm pretty sure that Straw Hats know the identity of the culprit, said Smoker. And why do you think that? Asked Sengoku. Because Princess of Alabasta is sailing with them. I think she's the one who brought them here, said Smoker. 
Why would she ask pirates for help instead of marines? Asked Sengoku. It should be because of the identity of the culprit. If this is the case, then it's not hard to guess the identity of the culprit, interjected Vice Admiral Tsuru. Don't tell me. Said Sengoku. Yes, it should be one of the seven warlords, Crocodile, said Smoker. I knew you could never trust a pirate, said Akainu in anger. Do you think they could defeat Crocodile? Asked Sengoku. You haven't seen him, Fleet Admiral. If Death Demon takes action, I don't think Crocodile will be alive for long, said Smoker. Sengoku's eyes widened. Is he that strong? He asked. I don't know since he hasn't shown his real strength, but he should be at least at the level of a Vice Admiral, said Smoker. Are you sure? Asked Sengoku in disbelief. No. I am just guessing, said Smoker. What about the other members of the crew? Are they also as strong as Death Demon? Asked Sengoku. I don't think so. But they shouldn't be weak either, replied Smoker. I want you to find out their strength. After that, we will have to reevaluate their bounties, said Smoker. Yes, but I want to tell you something else. Do you know Arlong killed a retired Marine in Kokoyasi village eight years ago? Asked Smoker. Sengoku sighed. Yes, her name was Belmir. We are looking for her daughter's whereabouts, said Smoker with a sad tone. I know the identity of one of them, said Smoker. How did you know about that? Asked Sengoku. Smoker then told them about Nami's hardships. Garp was shaking with anger after hearing that. What's her name? Asked Sengoku. Well. She is the navigator of the Straw Hat Pirates. Cat burglar Nami, said Smoker. Sengoku sat down on his chair with a resigned look. Tsuru sighed after hearing that. Is there something else that you want to report? Asked Sengoku. No. But there's a message for Vice Admiral Garp from Death Demon, said Smoker. Everyone looked towards Garp in confusion. Garp himself was confused. Tell me. I am here, said Garp. Smoker hesitated but decided to say it. He said, what a great hero you are, said Smoker nervously. Everyone was dumbfounded, and Garp was shaking with anger again. Okay. You can go, and I want the full details from you about the situation in Alabasta, said Sengoku as he cut the call. Garp marched out of the office. Garp. Where are you going? Shouted Sengoku. I am going to do what I should have done long ago. I am going to East Blue, said Garp without looking back. On the Straw Hat side, wasn't he supposed to be traveling with us right now? Why did he leave already? Well, it doesn't matter, thought Gohan. Meanwhile, Ace was talking to Marco on the Den Den Mushy. Yo Ace. Where are you? Pops is not happy with you. He wants you to stop chasing Teach, said Marco. No way. He has to pay for what he did to Thatch, said Ace with an angry face. He will pay for his crime, but you don't have to chase him alone like that, said Marco. I am not stopping until I catch him with my own hands. Anyways, I have called you for something else. I want you to find out everything about Death Demon Gohan, said Ace with a serious face. Your brother's crewmate. Is something wrong with him? Asked Marco. No. But he is too strong to be sailing with the rookies. That's why I want you to find out about his past, said Ace. Hmm. Okay. I will try to find as much as possible, replied Marco. After that, Ace ended the call. I hope you don't have any ulterior motive to join my brother's crew. Or you will be in for a lot of pain, thought Ace as he sailed away. Meanwhile, the Straw Hats reached the shore and encountered Kung Fu Dugongs. What are you? Pokemon, thought Gohan while looking at them. One of the Kung Fu Dugongs challenged them to a duel. Usopp accepted the challenge and surprisingly won it. The Kung Fu Dugongs started worshipping him as their master and wanted to come with them, but they left them behind after giving them some food. Vivi sent Karu to deliver the message to her father. After that, they started walking. Since everyone's body was many times stronger than in the original timeline, the heat didn't affect them. Only Chopper was having a hard time, so Gohan put him on his shoulder and protected him with his key. After a few minutes, they entered the city named Arimali, formerly known as the Green City. But it was in shambles. Vivi told everyone how it turned into its current state. She explained about the dance powder and how Crocodile turned the people of this country against her father. Suddenly, they encountered a sandstorm. But it wasn't strong. Gohan saw something in the storm. After the storm passed, everyone saw that Gohan was holding a skull. That storm. It wasn't natural, someone has created it, said Gohan while looking at the skull. Vivi's eyes widened after hearing that. It's Crocodile. How did we not think of it? He has a sand logia fruit ability. He is the only one who can create sand storms said Vivi, biting her lips in frustration. They buried the skull and moved on. After a while, they saw some big rocks. When they got closer to them, there were some birds lying on the ground. The birds were moaning in pain. Seeing that, Luffy ran towards the birds and called out Chopper to help them. 
but Bibi stopped them. They are Warasajai birds. They like to trick travelers and steal their luggage, she said while looking at the birds. Suddenly, the birds started to fly towards them. Do these birds taste good? Asked Gohan to Vivi. Yes, they taste like chicken. But it's difficult to catch them, replied Vivi. Gohan looked towards Usopp with a smile. Don't damage their bodies, said Gohan to Usopp. Don't worry, said Usopp as he fired some key blasts at the birds. They started falling down, missing their heads. Wow, Usopp. You can shoot lasers from your fingers, said Chopper in awe. Usopp started to show off, while Chopper looked on with stars in his eyes. Can you cook them? Asked Gohan, looking at Sanji. Of course. There's nothing that I can't cook, said Sanji. After that, Sanji cooked the birds. Everyone was enjoying the food, they are treating it like a picnic, thought Vivi in shock. Comment. 7 Comments. Vote. 0 Left. Chapter 31, Oasis of Revelations. After eating, they continued their journey to Yuba. After a few minutes, Gohan sensed something under the sand. Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji also stopped as they looked toward the sand. There's something under the sand, said Zoro. Suddenly, some large plants burst out from the sand and tried to eat them. But Zoro cut them with a single slash. How weak, muttered Zoro, looking disappointed. The next moment, they saw a camel emerging from the mouth of one of the plants. Luffy got excited and sat on top of it. Okay. Let's go. He said excitedly. But the camel didn't budge from his place. What's wrong with you? Said Luffy in confusion. Let me talk to him, said Chopper. So Gohan got next to the camel. Chopper and the camel started talking. He said he is thankful for saving his life, but he will only allow ladies to ride him, said Chopper after talking with the camel. The boys got angry at the camel and started kicking him. But Nami saved him from the beating. Then she and Vivi got on his back, and they continued their journey. But the ground started to shake. Oh. Two big ones are coming, said Gohan. Zoro and Sanji got ready to take care of the incoming trouble. Suddenly, two huge lizards burst out from the sand. One was in front of them, while the other was behind them. Zoro took out two of his swords, and Sanji took a toothpick from his pocket and put it in his mouth. Zoro started walking towards the lizard and called out, two swords style. Vanishing swordsman, and he disappeared and appeared behind the lizard. Zoro put back his swords, then vertical and horizontal lines started to appear on the lizard's body, and the lizard turned into fist-sized cubes. Everyone looked impressed, except for Vivi, who was shocked by the display of power, and also Sanji, who was looking at the lizard with disinterest. Suddenly, Sanji appeared before the lizard in the blink of an eye. He kicked it in the air, as the lizard was going upward. Sanji appeared above it. He spread his legs and started rotating, burning tornado, he called out and hit the lizard to the ground. The lizard died before hitting the ground, as it was burned to a crisp. Sanji landed gracefully beside the corpse of the lizard. Everyone clapped for him. Oof. Show off, mocked Zoro. Oh. Look who's talking, mocked Sanji. Okay. We don't have time for your bickering. Let's get going, said Gohan. Sanji put the toothpick back in his pocket, but everyone except Gohan looked at him weirdly. Sanji noticed their gaze and got embarrassed. He looked at Gohan in anger, but Gohan gave him a sunny smile. Stop smiling, you bastard. This is all your fault, shouted Sanji. Eh? You are the one who made that promise. How can it be my fault? Gohan said innocently. Everyone was confused. What promise? Asked Nami. When I was helping him train at the Baratai, he promised me he would not smoke until he beat me in a spar, said Gohan with a smile. Stop lying. You forced me to say that, said Sanji, but Gohan stopped him. Let's just forget about those small details. I have an idea, why don't you use a lollipop in place of the toothpick? It will make your fights more flavorful, said Gohan with a smile. Shut up. Shouted Sanji. They continued their journey towards Yuba. After an unknown time, they reached their destination. But in front of them was a big sandstorm ravaging the Yuba oasis. How can it be? Crocodile, what have the people done to him? Why is he doing this? Said Vivi with tears in her eyes. Everyone looked sadly at her. Don't worry. That's why we are here. We will put an end to this, said Nami. They entered the city and found that no one was there, except for an old man who was digging a hole. The old man told them to rest in the inns. When they asked him about rebels, he got mad and said they had already left Yuba. He told them about the condition of Yuba and why rebels left. He also told them that the rebels' new base is at Kataria, which was very close to Nanohana. Luffy accidentally called out Vivi's name, and the old man heard it. He expressed his happiness that she was alive, and Vivi finally recognized him. He was Toto, Koza's father. He requested her to stop the rebels. The next day they left Yuba after saying goodbye to Toto. Vivi wanted to go to Nanohana, 
but Luffy rejected the plan. He said that to stop all of this, they have to take down Crocodile. Both of them started arguing over it. Gohan bonked their heads lightly and said, Luffy. You guys go to Rain Base. I will take Vivi to Kataria to meet that Koza guy, said Gohan. That's a great idea. Said Nami. Okay. I might be able to return before your fight is over. Let's get going, Vivi. Chopper, I'm taking you with me as well, said Gohan. He carried Vivi and flew away. The Straw Hat Pirates also started their journey to Rain Base. But Luffy was still looking in the direction that Gohan had flown away. Luffy, let's go. What are you doing? Said Usopp. Luffy turned towards them while crying and said, I want to fly too. It didn't take too long for Gohan to reach Kataria. He decided to land before entering Kataria so that no one could see him flying. They entered Kataria Oasis, but Rebel stopped them. We want to meet your leader, said Gohan. But they pointed their guns at them. Gohan looked toward Vivi. Please tell Koza that Vivi wants to have a word with him, said Vivi. Vivi. You are alive. Said one of the rebels. Some of the rebels knew that Koza and Vivi were friends. That rebel took them to Koza. Koza looked at Vivi in surprise. Vivi. Where have you been? I heard you went missing. We thought you. Said Koza with tears in his eyes. Koza, you have to stop the rebels. This is all Crocodile's doing. He is the reason for our people's suffering, said Vivi. What? The warlord. Then why didn't King do anything about it? Sorry, Vivi, even if he's your father, he has to pay for his sins, said Koza. Gohan got tired. Listen up, you fool. Crocodile wants the rebels and royal army to kill each other so that he doesn't have to do anything. He has already made King Cobra a villain. In the minds of the people of this country. He will kill him and become the king, said Gohan. Koza got overwhelmed by the information. I am pretty sure that Baroque Works has infiltrated both rebels and royal army. As long as both sides confront each other, they will make sure that the fight happens, said Gohan. That's impossible. There's no way. We don't have spies among us, said Koza with confidence. Really? Then why don't we test it, said Gohan with a smile. After a few minutes, Koza gathered rebels for an announcement. Everyone, I have found out something very important. The king is not our enemy. We were misled by someone. He wants royal army and the rebels to kill each other so that he can reap the rewards, said Koza. But the king used the dance powder. That's why there's no rain in this country anymore, said one of the rebels. No. It was not King Cobra's doing. Someone is trying to frame him. That person wants to become the king of Alabasta. That person is the warlord Crocodile, said Koza. Rebels were shocked by this. You are lying. Crocodile is a hero. Said a man. Yes, we don't believe you. I heard you were meeting with the princess a few minutes ago. You must be trying to get the king's favor by siding with him, said another man. Rebels started looking at Koza with doubtful eyes. Suddenly, someone fired at Koza, but Gohan caught the bullet. So the rats are out, he said and disappeared. Then everyone heard the sound of bones cracking. Around 20 rebels dropped to the ground. Their necks were twisted at a weird angle. Everyone was terrified by this. Why don't you guys check their bodies? I am sure they have Baroque Works tattoos on them, said Gohan. They checked and found a tattoo on each one. Rebels were angry that they were played by Baroque Works. You guys go back to Yuba and clean up the sand from the city. Because it's going to rain very soon, said Gohan. What? But we have to stop Crocodile, said Koza. No. We, the Straw Hat Pirates, will take care of him and his gang. He is a warlord, that means he works for the world government. It will be better if we take care of him instead of you guys, said Gohan. Yes, please go. Old man Toto is there all alone, said Vivi. Father. Said Koza. After that, they left Kataria and flew toward Rain Base. Comment. Six comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 32, The Main Event. When they reached Rain Base, the sky had already turned dark. How are we going to find the others? Asked Vivi. Don't worry. I found them. It's good that everyone is at the same place. Let's go, said Gohan. First, we will find something to eat, then we will beat the shit out of that crocodile, said Gohan, as they walked towards a cafe. After they got inside, they saw Luffy and Usopp gulping down water from wooden barrels. Gohan, Chopper, and Vivi walked towards the table at which Nami and others were sitting. Did you guys just get here? Asked Gohan. Hmm. Gohan. You guys are back already? Asked Nami in surprise. Vivi-chan, how did your talk with the rebels go? Asked Sanji. It went well, the rebels are going to return to Yuba, replied Vivi. That's great. Now we don't have to worry about rebels and the royal army clashing with each other, said Nami. Yes, now we can concentrate on taking out Baroque works, said Zoro with a smile. Yes, 
we will. But before that, let's eat something, said Gohan. After eating, they got out of the cafe. Now, where is that croc guy? Asked Luffy. I think he's in that tall building, said Gohan. How did you know that? Asked Vivi. Because I can sense some strong people in that building, replied Gohan. That building is called Rain Dinner. It's a casino, and it belongs to Crocodile, said Vivi. I wonder how much he has earned from that casino, and there's also that sea stone cage, thought Gohan with a smile. Let's go. It's about time to see the results of your training, said Gohan with a smile. Everyone was excited because they had faced Gohan in those sparring sessions. There's no way their fights are going to be as difficult as their sparring sessions with Gohan. When they got near the rain denners, Gohan stopped them. Let's wait here, they'll come out to fight us, said Gohan, while looking at the wall of the casino. There was an eye on that wall. They know we are here. Asked Usopp. Our friend Robin knows we are here, replied Gohan with a smile. Meanwhile, in the underground hall of the casino, Crocodile was addressing the meeting of top officers of Baroque Works. Looks like Mr. Three has failed to kill the Straw Hats, said Robin. Did he come back? Asked Crocodile. No. But the Straw Hats are here. Looks like they are waiting for us to welcome them, said Robin. A look of shock appeared on Crocodile's face. Is the princess with them? He asked. Yes, she is, replied Robin. Crocodile smiled after hearing that. Let's go. It will be a shame not to kill them since they have presented themselves to us. Everyone got up and started to go outside. Can they really defeat a warlord, thought Robin, as she followed after Crocodile. Crocodile and others got off the casino. Princess. It's good that you are here. Now we don't have to waste time searching for you, said Crocodile. But before he could say more, Gohan cut him off. Okay. Everyone, select your opponents. Leave Robin to me, I will be having some friendly conversation with her, said Gohan with a smile. Mr. Four shot a baseball at them, but Usopp shot a key blast at the baseball. When the key blast touched the baseball, it exploded, and black smoke filled the area between the two parties. Suddenly, Mr. One burst out from the smoke. His hand transformed into blades. He tried to chop Usopp, but Zoro intercepted his attack with one of his swords. Oh. A blade man. Why don't we have some fun? Said Zoro. He pushed him away and chased after him. The next one was Mr. Two. He tried to kick Usopp, but Sanji kicked him away. Mr. Two flew towards Mr. Four and collided with him. Sanji walked towards them. Looks like I will be taking care of these weirdos, he muttered. That leaves Nami to take care of Miss Dao Bleefing Er, and Usopp to fight with Miss Merry Christmas. Nami took out her new weapon, Klim attacked. Oh. So your new weapon is ready. Why don't you guys take your fight somewhere else, or you will get in the way of the main event, said Gohan. Follow me, girl it. Said Miss Dao Bleefing Er, as she ran away with Nami following behind her. Usopp also started to run in a different direction, while Miss Merry Christmas chased after him. Gohan stood up and got between Luffy and Crocodile. Ladies and gentlemen. It is time for our main event. To my left, standing at 8 feet tall, his face looks like it's fresh out of a postmortem. The delusional bastard, Crocodile, he announced, as everyone's sweat dropped. And now, to my right, he is a straw hat wearing rubbery bastard. Who is here to kick someone's ass, he is going to become the king of pirates. The embodiment of freedom. Monkey D. Luffy. Shouted Gohan. Chopper started clapping, while Luffy started waving his hands in appreciation. Ready, fight. Shouted Gohan and disappeared. Gohan got back to Vivi and Chopper. Now, why don't we watch the show, Robin? He said as he sat down. Robin sighed. Well, I can't beat you anyway, she said and sat down with them. That guy. Did he eat a speed type devil fruit, thought Crocodile, while looking towards Gohan. Gum gum pistol. Shouted Luffy, as he attacked Crocodile. Do you think your attacks are going to work on Muah? He got punched in the face and hit the wall of the casino. Crocodile stood up. Hacky. This bastard can use hacky. He muttered in disbelief. He was bleeding from his mouth, and one of his teeth was also missing. You are quite strong, kid, but you are in my domain. In this country, I have the advantage, said Crocodile, as he turned into sand and dispersed. He appeared before Luffy and tried to impale him with his hook, but his hook made a sound of metal colliding with metal. Before Luffy could attack him, he dispersed again. He appeared 10 meters away from Luffy. What is happening? How is he using armament hacky without changing the color of his skin? Is it really hacky, thought Crocodile in confusion. Note, I am going to give everyone some new special moves. If you guys have any suggestions, please write it in the comments. Comment. 6 comments. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 33, Super Straw Hats. Crocodile kept dodging Luffy's attacks by turning into sand. This will take a while, Gohan thought as he watched the fight. 
Sanji vs Mr. 2 and Mr. 4. Sanji and Mr. 2 were exchanging kicks while Mr. 4 kept firing baseballs at him. Sanji had to dodge those baseballs because he didn't want his clothes to get ruined. Mr. 2 was able to get some hits because of it, but his kicks didn't hurt Sanji due to his tough body. Sanji didn't even have to use Haki to protect himself. Mr. 2 jumped back and started shouting in pain. What the hell is your body made of? Look, because of you, my beautiful legs are all bruised up, he said while holding his bruised legs. You should be ashamed for showing your ugly, hairy legs. At least shave them, said Sanji with irritation. Suddenly, a baseball flew towards him. Shit, thought Sanji, but he kicked the ball. The baseball exploded upon contact with Sanji's boot. After the smoke cleared, Sanji looked at his boot and sighed in relief. But suddenly his expression changed as he saw a small tear on his pants. He got angry, and his hair turned spiky. Some sparks could be seen around him. He appeared before Mr. Four in the blink of an eye and gave him a powerful kick. Mr. Four got blasted towards the casino and embedded in the wall. Sanji then looked towards Mr. Four's dog gun or gun dog and said, You better not move from there. Then he started walking towards Mr. Two. Now let's end this, said Sanji. Wait. I give up? I am not fighting anymore. That's not how it works. Shouted Sanji and knocked him out. Winner, Sanji. Zoro vs Mr. One. Mr. One got out of the building that he was thrown into by Zoro. So you can turn your whole body into a blade, said Zoro. You are quite tough for a pirate with a bounty of 30 million, said Mr. One. That would have been legit if I hadn't met that monster, said Zoro. Monster? Asked Mr. One. You wouldn't understand even if I told you. Let's get started, said Zoro as he took out two of his swords. Don't you use three sword style? Asked Mr. One. Yes, but two are enough for you. I would have used only one sword, but I want to try a new move. Mr. One frowned as his hands turned into blades. He ran towards Zoro and started attacking. He also used his legs to attack after turning his shins into blades. But Zoro was dodging and deflecting his attacks without any problems. Is this your full power? Asked Zoro. Mr. One got more frustrated by Zoro's nonchalant attitude. Zoro pushed Mr. One away. It's time to end this, he said as he started walking towards Mr. One. King of Hell, said Zoro as his swords turned a little greenish. A greenish aura surrounded him. Hundred slashes, said Zoro as he disappeared and appeared behind Mr. One. Mr. One got frozen in his place. Then suddenly sounds of slashing rang out. Mr. One got slashed in multiple places on his body and dropped to the floor. There's still something missing muttered Zoro, while looking at his swords. Winner, Zoro. Nami vs Miss Dao bleeping er. I wasn't expecting you to follow me. You are quite brave, said Miss Dao bleeping er. No. I am not brave. I am just not scared of weaklings, said Nami with a smile. We will see who's the real weakling, said Miss Dao bleeping er as Spike started protruding from the tips of her fingers. Miss started slashing Nami with her hands. Nami was gracefully deflecting her attacks with her Klim attack. You sop. You did such a great job, thought Nami as she used her new weapon. What happened? Not feeling strong anymore. Mocked Miss Dao bleeping her while continuing to attack her. Nami smiled and attacked her in the gut with the tip of the Klim attack. Miss Dao bleeping her got hit hard. Acknowledge cough cough, why does it hurt so much, muttered Miss Dao bleeping her as she bent over and started shaking from pain. As I said before, a weakling, said Nami with a smile. Miss Dao bleeping her got up. You. I will puncture every single organ in your body, hedgehog, she shouted as she turned into a ball of spikes. Miss Dao bleeping her rolled towards Nami, but Nami stopped her with the tip of Klim attacked. But suddenly some spikes got bigger and hit Nami on her shoulder and stomach. Triple A, shouted Nami as she got poked. Nami felt like someone had pricked her with needles. If someone looked closely, they could see a small amount of blood coming out from the places that the spikes had touched on Nami's body. That stung, you be dollar txh, shouted Nami. It was supposed to do much more than that. What the hell is your body made of? Miss Dao bleeping her shouted back. That's it. I've had enough of your needles. Thunder, shouted Nami as she pointed the tip of Klim attack at her. Sparks started to generate from the tip. Thunder Gatling, said Nami and started attacking Miss Dao bleeping her with the tip of Klim attack at high speed. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Miss Merry Christmas poked her head out of one of the holes to see. She was in a miserable state, half of her hair was gone, she was covered in a green liquid, and was bleeding from her forehead. So, you are finally tired, huh? I am going to make your death very painful, said Miss Merry Christmas. Usopp didn't say anything and pointed towards the sky. Huh? Fireflies. Said Miss Merry Christmas as she saw some small dots of light floating in the sky. Usopp started smiling. Special techniques. Deadly shower, shouted Usopp. He didn't even wait to see the result of his attack and started walking away. You shouldn't have messed with Captain Usopp, said Usopp while walking away. Winner, Usopp. Luffy vs Crocodile. It will take a while, commented Gohan. So Robin, do you think Crocodile can protect you from the world government? Asked Gohan. Robin got shocked by the sudden question and stood up. I. Join the Straw Hats, said Gohan. This time, Vivi and Chopper got shocked as well. Are you implying that you guys can protect me from the world government? Asked Robin with an amused smile. For you, our ship is the safest place in the world, said Gohan with a smile. Robin's eyes widened because she could tell that Gohan was not lying. Will your captain allow me to join his crew? She asked while feeling conflicted. Why don't we check it? Said Gohan and shouted, Hey captain. Robin wants to join the crew. Luffy and Crocodile stopped fighting. Luffy looked at Robin for a few seconds. Okay. He replied while grinning. What? Shouted Vivi, Chopper, and Crocodile, while Robin hid her trembling hands behind her back. So, you are changing sides, Nico Robin, said Crocodile in anger. He dispersed from his position and appeared behind Robin. You can die now, said Crocodile. Robin got horrified, while Gohan just smiled. Suddenly, Luffy appeared beside Crocodile and punched his face. Nobody can hurt my crewmate, he said with an angry face. Luffy. Vivi said that she'll arrange a big party for us in the palace. So you better finish that guy quickly, said Gohan. Luffy's eyes started shining. Sorry croc guy but I can't waste my time with you anymore, said Luffy. He clenched his fists. Hmm. A-A-A-A. Shouted Luffy as his skin turned reddish and his hair turned spiky. A powerful aura surrounded him, red sparks could be seen around him. What the hell is this? Said Crocodile in shock. Gohan stood up. Gear second. He asked himself. So cool. Shouted Chopper. What is this power, thought Robin as she saw the sand particles start floating. Luffy appeared before Crocodile and sent him to the sky with a kick. So fast, thought Crocodile as he looked at the dark sky. But Luffy appeared before him. Gum gum. Super Gatling. He shouted and started punching Crocodile. Nobody except Gohan could see Luffy's hands. Luffy stopped his attack and pulled his hands backward. Gum gum. Super Bazooka. He shouted and hit Crocodile right in the gut. Crocodile got shot towards the ground like a bullet. Boom the ground shook from the impact. Winner, Luffy. Comment. 10 comments. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 34, You Talk Too Much. There's no way he is alive after that, said Chopper in shock. Yep. Definitely dead. It's finally over, said Gohan. Vivi got out of her shock state and asked, What? What do you mean it's over? That was a warlord. He has terrorized this country for so long. And he killed him just like that, said Vivi, as if she was having an existential crisis. So, what do you want? A long difficult fight. People dying left and right. That's what you want? These guys were weak, and that warlord was stupid, said Gohan matter-of-factly. Everyone else also came back from their fights. You really didn't hold back, huh? Said Zoro to Luffy, as he looked toward the pit where Crocodile's body was lying. Everyone else nodded. How were your fights, everyone? Asked Gohan. Boring. Too easy. Fun. Epic. They replied, everyone. Let's get going. Vivi is going to give us a big party, said Luffy while grinning. No. There's something more important left to do, said Gohan with a smile and looked toward the casino. It's time to loot this place, said Gohan. Nami started grinning. Now we are talking, she said. But what will we do if the safe has been hidden somewhere? Asked Usopp. Don't worry. Our new crewmate will guide us, said Gohan as he started walking toward the casino. New crewmate. They asked in confusion. Everyone turned toward Robin. So, you already joined the crew, said Nami. Robin San said Sanji while doing his trademark dance. Everyone else just welcomed her. Robin was shocked by their reaction. You guys are not worried? I was your enemy until a few minutes ago, asked Robin. Luffy let you join the crew. That means you are reliable and a good person, said Nami. Yes, Luffy is never wrong when it comes to things like this, said Usopp. From now on, you are one of the straw hats, said Zoro. Robin looked toward Vivi to see her expression. I will not forgive you, but since you were helping us, 
I will try not to hate you, said Vivi. Oh. Our princess is angry. Why don't you do something to appease her, Robin? How about telling her the identity of the agents of Baroque works who have infiltrated the royal army? Said Gohan. What? There are spies in the royal army. We have to go to Aliburna right now, said Vivi in panic. Gohan hit her on the head and said, stop panicking. Robin, do you have a Denden -den Mushy? Asked Gohan. Robin sighed and took out a baby Denden -den Mushy, but just as she was about to give it to Gohan, he shouted, keep it away from me. Give it to Vivi. Robin, Vivi, and Chopper looked at him weirdly, while the rest started laughing. Don't tell me you are. No. I am not afraid of it. I just don't like slimy things, said Gohan before Vivi could speak more. He turned toward the people who were laughing, and they stopped laughing. Vivi called her father and told him about the spies, while Robin provided their identities. Robin also told them about Mr. Seven and Miss Father's Day, who were going to plant a bomb on the watchtower. Thank you, said Vivi while looking at Robin. I don't think she did it for your gratitude, said Gohan. Are you a mind reader? I do want something from your father, said Robin. From father? Asked Vivi in confusion. We can talk about it later when we see King Cobra. But first, please take us to the treasury, said Gohan to Robin. Robin took them to the safe. It was good that Robin was with them, otherwise, it would have been very difficult for them to find the safe. It was hidden underground. Once the safe was opened, Nami instructed Sanji to take everything from it carefully. Because this was a casino, the safe had a lot of cash. There were some other expensive items like gold, diamonds, and antiques. Nami was behaving like a maniac after seeing all those things. But Gohan's attention was somewhere else. He was looking toward the ceiling. Robin noticed that and followed his gaze, there was a cage hanging from the ceiling. That cage is made out of sea stone, she said. Everyone else also looked toward the cage after hearing that. Then that's the real treasure, said Gohan with a smile. Zoro, cut the chain, Gohan said. Zoro stepped forward and sent a flying slash toward the chain that was holding the cage. Bam. The cage fell to the floor. Gohan started inspecting it. This feels like a mixture of metal and rock, he thought. Usopp, he called Usopp over to his side. Can you make weapons from this? Asked Gohan. I can try. What kind of weapons do you want? Asked Usopp. I'll tell you when we get back on the ship, said Gohan. Zoro. Please help Usopp in dismantling that cage, he said. He got next to Nami and asked, how much cash was in there? It should be around 500 million, said Nami with a big smile. Gohan was shocked by this. So much money. He said. We cannot take it, we have to give it to Vivi's father. They will need that money, interjected Luffy. Everyone was shocked, they looked at Luffy as if he had grown an extra head. That idiot just said something sensible. Did he get hit in the head too hard in the fight? This world is not about to end, right? They started talking among themselves in worry. Hey. I can say intelligent things too, shouted Luffy. Thank you, Luffy. We really needed this money, but you guys can take some of it. After all, you guys are the ones who defeated that bastard, said Vivi. Nami got hopeful, but Gohan said, you can take the money, but just give some of the jewelry to Nami, said Gohan. Nami ran toward the jewelry and put it in the box. She held the box tightly, as if telling everyone that nobody can take from it. Everyone's sweat dropped after seeing that. But you guys have done so much for my country, said Vivi, but Gohan cut her off by saying, you don't have to worry about that. We took the best ones already. That cage is made out of sea stone. The world government has a monopoly on it. So it's more important than gold, said Gohan. Then he put his hand in his pocket and took out a fruit, it was a devil fruit. This is the sand sand fruit, I found it inside a fruit basket on one of the tables in the casino, said Gohan with a smile. What kind of luck is this? Everyone. Thought speechlessly. That fruit can easily go for around 300 million, said Robin. What? 300 million? Shouted Usopp, while Nami's eyes started to shine. We are done here, right? Let's get going, said Luffy. But how are we going to take things with us? Just put everything inside some crates. Zoro, Sanji, and Usopp will carry them. Take it as a training exercise, said Gohan to them. They packed everything and walked out of the casino. But when they got out, they saw Smoker and the company looking at Crocodile's body. Hearing the sound of footsteps, Smoker looked toward them. Did you do this? Smoker asked Gohan. No. That's our captain's handiwork, replied Gohan. Smoker looked toward Luffy in shock. How can it be possible? It doesn't even look like he had a fight, said Smoker. Tashiji and others nodded their heads. Well, he was weak. I think he was at your level. If you two had a fight, you might have defeated him because of your weapon, said Gohan. Smoker gritted his teeth because of being called weak again. What's inside of those crates? Asked Tashiji. 
it's money that Crocodile had looted from the people of this country. We are helping the princess take it to the king, said Gohan with a smile. The rest of the straw hat smiled at Smoker as well. What's that woman doing with you guys? Wasn't she working for Crocodile? Asked Smoker. No. She wasn't. She was our spy. How can she work for Crocodile? She's our crewmate, said Gohan with a smile. What? Shouted Smoker. Do you know the consequences of making her your crewmate? Do you know about her history? Asked Smoker. Gohan smiled and said, We know more about her than you do, Smokey. We are in a hurry, so goodbye. Oh. Yes, why don't you take the credit for taking down that warlord? You might get promoted, said Gohan as they walked away. Smoker started to shake in anger. Death demon. I will make you pay. You like to talk, huh? Let's see how you would react to your new bounty poster. Muttered Smoker as his lips started to curve into a smile. Comment. Eight comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 35, he forgot to use hacking. After a while, they reached the Sandora River. Now, how do we cross this river? Asked Usopp. Everyone seemed to remember something and looked towards Gohan. Hmm. Don't worry. Said Gohan with a smile after noticing that. He got in front of the boys and said, put down those crates. They put down the crates. Don't forget to use your hacky, said Gohan, while everyone got confused. Then he grabbed Zoro and Sanji's shoulders. Sanji started to have a bad feeling. Wait. You. Bastard. Shouted Sanji as he and Zoro got thrown to the other side. Everyone except Luffy started trembling. Okay. It's our turn now, Usopp, said Luffy. Gohan. Let's think about it. I think I can swim to the other side, said Usopp while trembling. Nah. That would be a waste of time, said Gohan. He grabbed Luffy and Usopp and threw them to the other side of the river. I'll die. Yahoo. They shouted in the air. Gohan then looked towards the girls. They started backing away. Don't worry. I am not going to throw you guys. Vivi, let's go. I'll take you and Chopper to the other side, said Gohan. Gohan, do you think those four will be alright? Asked Chopper in worry. Don't worry. Nothing will happen to them, assured Gohan. He picked up Vivi and looked towards Nami and Robin. You girls wait here, I'll be right back, he said. How are you planning to go to the other side? Asked Robin in confusion. Gohan smiled and started levitating. Like this, he said and flew away. Robin's eyes widened in shock. He can fly. She said. Yes, he can, said Nami. But there's no report of him being able to fly, said Robin. I think he doesn't want the marines to know. If the marines know about it, it will increase our threat level. Maybe he doesn't want us to face too many unnecessary troubles, said Nami. This reminded Robin of the admirals. But it doesn't look like he fears anyone said Robin. It's not about him, he can take care of those troubles himself. But if he does that, then it would feel like he is babysitting us. And none of us want that. He himself doesn't want that. That's why he is helping us in becoming strong, so that we can fight our own battles, said Nami with a smile. But will he help you guys if you can't defeat your enemies, right? Asked Robin. That's difficult to answer. Because he seems like a person who will let us die, then he will bury us in a beautiful grave and visit our grave so that he can mock us for being weak, said Nami with an awkward smile. Robin also smiled after hearing that. Just then, Gohan came back to pick them up. He took them to the other side, where everyone else was already waiting for them. Just as he landed, Sanji ran towards him. You bastard. My head is full of sand because of you, he shouted. Zoro also joined in. Just let me cut you once, he said while taking out his swords. You even threw Usopp. That idiot forgot to use Haki in fear. He is lucky that there's so much sand here, said Sanji in anger. Gohan looked towards Usopp, who was still trembling. So he forgot to use Haki. He said with a calm voice. The expressions on the faces of Zoro, Sanji, and Usopp changed after hearing him. No. Sanji misunderstood. I used Haki, look, I am not injured at all, said Usopp in a panic. Gohan grabbed Usopp's shoulders and said, I am sorry, Usopp. It's all my fault. I should have trained you more strictly. But don't worry, from now on, I am going to train you ten times harder, he said with a serious face. Usopp slumped down on the ground in despair. Sanji looked at Usopp awkwardly but didn't approach him in fear of being implicated. You see, that's Gohan. If something had happened to Usopp because of that fall, it would have been Usopp's fault. Because Gohan has made us strong enough to be unscathed from that kind of fall, said Nami to Robin. I am already regretting the decision of joining you guys, said Robin with a nervous expression. Gohan went back to get the crates. After he came back, they continued their journey towards Aliaburna. It was already morning when they reached Aliaburna. Hell, the commander of the royal guards, was waiting for them. 
Hell! shouted Bibi. Princess! It's good to see that you are safe. His Majesty is waiting for your arrival, Pell said. He looked towards the straw hats and bowed. Thank you for saving our country, he said. You don't have to thank us. It's our friend's country after all, and she's going to throw us a big party, said Gohan while walking ahead. Yes. It's time for the party. I want meat. Lots of meat, said Luffy. And booze, said Zoro. Pell raised his head and looked towards Vivi in confusion. Vivi smiled awkwardly at him, and Pell sighed and said, Certainly, please follow me. Your meals have been prepared, he said. As they were walking, Vivi asked, Did you guys take care of Spice? Yes, thanks to your information, everything went smoothly, said Pell. After a while, they reached the palace. King Cobra himself welcomed them. Father! Vivi ran towards him, and they hugged with tears in their eyes. King Cobra then looked towards them and said, Thank you for saving our country. We will forever be grateful for that. Even though we are not in good condition right now, if you need anything from us, please do tell, said King Cobra sincerely. Gohan smiled and said, Actually, one of our crewmates does have a request for you, said Gohan and looked towards Robin. She stepped forward and said, I want to study that pwn glyph that the royal family has hidden, said Robin. King Cobra's eyes widened in shock, while Vivi was confused. Pwn glyph? Why do you want to study it? He asked defensively. Don't worry. She is an archaeologist, she just wants to study it, Gohan assured. Cobra sighed and said, Okay. I'll take you there after the meal. Yes. You can see that pony thing after eating. Let's go eat, said Luffy with a grin. After that, they get to eat some royal cuisine. Gohan and Luffy were devouring the food. After eating, everyone went to rest while King Cobra took Robin to see the pony glyph. Gohan had nothing to do, so he tagged. Along as well. Cobra brought them to the tombs of the royal family and took them to the secret passage that leads to the secret chamber. In the middle of the chamber, there was a big cubic stone. Gohan walked closer to it and touched the stone. Hmm, is it a stone or some kind of metal, he thought. Robin started studying the pwn glyph, while Gohan looked around for anything interesting. After a while, Robin was done. Did you find what you were looking for? Asked Cobra. Robin shook her head in disappointment. Gohan looked towards her and said, I know you want to find out about the void century. But do you really think it will be that easy to find out about that? Said Gohan. Robin turned sharply towards him and asked, How did you know that? An old man in Logetown told me about it, but he didn't tell me what happened at the Void Century, said Gohan. He smiled and said, He told me that there are many pwn glyphs in the world. All we have to do is find them. I am also curious about what the world government is trying so hard to hide. Robin was shocked. What does that old man look like? She asked. Hmm. He looked like an old man replied Gohan. Robin was not impressed by his reply. Anyways, I don't know anything about that old man. So it's no use asking me about him, he said. So I have to find those pwn glyphs? Asked Robin. No. We have to find them because they are going to lead us to One Piece as well, replied Gohan with a smile. Comment. Five comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 36, Weak and Helpless. Gohan, Robin, and King Cobra returned to the palace. We are going to announce all the crimes that Crocodile had committed in Alabasta after a few minutes, said King Cobra. Okay. But don't announce our involvement because it will be bad for your reputation, said Gohan. But you guys are the heroes of this country. Every citizen should know about that, said Cobra. No. We are not heroes. We are pirates. Said Luffy as he walked towards them while eating some fruits. He is right. Those who should know already know about it. No need to tell anybody else about this, said Gohan. Meanwhile. On the marine's side, Smoker was having a very busy day. This bastard. He has caused so much trouble, muttered Smoker while looking at Crocodile's body. Did you guys catch everyone else? He asked while looking at Tashiji. Tashiji adjusted her glasses and replied, Yes, we found five of the top agents of Baroque Works, but they were badly injured. Must be Straw Hat's doing, said Smoker. Impossible. They didn't look like they had a fight with someone when we saw them last night. How can it be possible for them to get this strong so quickly? said Tashiji in shock. Didn't you notice their body language last night? None of them were afraid of us. By their behavior, it felt like they could defeat us easily, said Smoker with a frown. Tashiji bit her lips in frustration. Take care of the other things while I'll report to the headquarters, said Smoker and took out the Denden Mushi. At the Marines headquarters, in Sengoku's office, Sengoku and Tsuru were discussing something when his Denden Mushi started ringing. He picked up the call, Sengoku speaking. Fleet Admiral, it's me, Smoker. I have called to report about Alabasta, said Smoker. How's the situation now? Asked Sengoku. The situation is much better now. 
the warlord has been defeated, and his organization Baroque Works has also been destroyed, reported Smoker. He got defeated already? Who did it? Death Demon. Asked Sengoku in surprise. No. It was his captain, Straw Hat Luffy, who defeated Crocodile. And the other Straw Hats took down the top officers of Baroque Works, said Smoker. They have become so strong. They must have gotten injured as well. I'll send reinforcements, try to catch them, said Sengoku. You are misunderstanding something, Fleet Admiral. I saw Straw Hat's condition after the fight. None of them looked like they had a battle with anyone, said Smoker. Sengoku's eyes widened. What? Even Straw Hat Luffy? Asked Sengoku. Yes, none of them looked tired or injured, replied Smoker. Sengoku was having a hard time believing that. He sighed and said, Okay. Send Crocodile to impel down, said Sengoku. About that? Said Smoker. What is it? Asked Sengoku, having a bad feeling. He's dead. Straw Hat Luffy killed him, replied Smoker. Sengoku started to rub his temples. Then send whoever is alive to impel down, he ordered. Yes, sir, replied Smoker. Is there anything else you want to report? Asked Sengoku. Actually, there is something I want to ask you, Fleet Admiral. I forgot to ask it previously, said Smoker. What is it? Asked Sengoku. What happened to O'Hara? Asked Smoker. Sengoku and Tsuru's eyes widened in shock. Why are you asking about it? Said Sengoku. Because Nico Robin has joined the Straw Hat Pirates, said Smoker. Both Sengoku and Tsuru stood up after hearing that. Are you sure? Asked Sengoku. Yes, they told me themselves. Now, can you tell me about O'Hara? Asked Smoker. No. Only the admirals can know about that. You are only a captain. There's no way I can tell you about that. Anything else? Asked Sengoku. Smoker sighed and said, I have a more suitable moniker for the death demon, said Smoker with a smile. After that, he told Sengoku about his suggestion, but Sengoku was not sure about it. Are you sure it's a suitable moniker for him? Do you have any personal grudge against him? Asked Sengoku. I am very sure. And you yourself have talked to him, you should have noticed it too, replied Smoker. But what's with this description? Asked Sengoku speechlessly. It's for the normal people, it will help them to beware of him, replied Smoker. After that, they cut the call. Sengoku sighed and asked, should I send a vice admiral after them? No. It will bring too much attention to the straw hats. That bird Morgan will get suspicious. Then it will be hard to hide the incident of Kanamai Islands. Let's monitor their movements for now, said Tsuru. The five elders will not be happy about Crocodile's death, said Sengoku. On the other side, so, they're hiding something about O'Hara, Smoker thought. He then called another person. Barabaruburu, Barabaruburu, Kaka. Hello Vice Admiral Garp, it's me, Smoker, said Smoker as soon as the call was picked up. What do you want, brat? Asked Garp in a grumpy voice. I want to ask you if that offer is still valid that you gave me when I was in the training camp, asked Smoker. Hmm. So, you can finally see the light, huh? But are you sure? I don't hold back when I train someone, said Garp. Smoker gritted his teeth and said, Yes, I am sure. I am sure too, suddenly a female voice sounded beside Smoker. Smoker looked to his right and found Tashiji standing there. What are you doing here, Tashiji? He asked. Please let me join too, Vice Admiral, said Tashiji, ignoring Smoker's question. Oh. And why should I take you in? Asked Garp. Tashiji clenched her fists and said, I don't want to remain weak. I don't want to feel helpless ever again. So please accept me, said Tashiji. Hmm. Okay. Go to Logetown. I will meet you guys there, said Garp. Logetown? Are you going to the Kanamai Islands? Asked Smoker. Yes. Replied Garp with a heavy heart. Then we will meet you there, said Smoker. After ending the call, Smoker looked towards Tashiji and said, let's speed up the process here so that we can leave from here as soon as possible. While Smoker and Tashiji were busy cleaning up the mess, the Straw Hats were enjoying their time at the Royal Palace. Everyone was having lunch at the time. I think we should leave today, said Gohan. Everyone else looked towards him. Why? We just came here today, said Luffy. Everyone else nodded at that. Because it will be bad if the news got leaked that we are staying in the palace, said Gohan. People will think that the royal family has been compromised, and the world government can use this as an excuse to launch an attack on this country, said Robin. Vivi and her father got nervous after hearing that. Then we will leave tonight, said Luffy. What are you going to do, Vivi? Are you coming with us? Asked Nami. Everyone else also looked at Vivi. Vivi had a conflicted face. I. I know you want to help your people by staying here, but if you decide to stay, you will remain weak and helpless, said Gohan. 
But I can't leave my people in this situation, said Vivi. Then what will you do if another pirate like Crocodile attacks this kingdom? Will you search for a pirate crew like ours to help you? Asked Gohan. But we will help Vivi, she's our friend after all, said Sanji. What if we couldn't get here in time? Crocodile could trample all over you guys because you are weak. If you want to protect your country by your own strength, come with us, said Gohan. But isn't it bad for her as a princess to sail with a pirate crew? Asked Usopp. Everyone else was also worried about that issue. That's not an issue, I already have a perfect solution for that. So are you in or not? Asked Gohan. But before Vivi could reply, Cobra said, go with them. I want you to become a strong ruler who can protect this country. Father? But what if someone attacks us again when I am not here? Asked Vivi. Don't worry. Nobody is going to create trouble here for a while because of what happened here. Marines will make sure of that, said Gohan. Vivi finally smiled and said, everyone, please take care of me. Everyone started celebrating after that. But Zoro looked towards Gohan and asked, so what is your perfect solution? Because even if she disguises herself, someone will notice her absence from here. Gohan smiled and said, you guys wait here, I'll be back in a few minutes. Gohan disappeared and appeared in the sky. Let's hope they didn't take him away, he muttered as he flew away in a certain direction in high speed. Comment. Six comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 37, Assassin's Creed. It didn't take long for Gohan to reach Rain Base. He landed on the roof of one of the buildings. Now, where is he? Thought Gohan. Suddenly, he turned toward a certain direction. There you are, he said and disappeared. At the same time, some marine officers were dragging a person who was struggling hard. No. Let me go. You are ruining my dress. All of my swans got dropped because of you guys, cried Bone Clay. Gohan appeared between the marines and knocked them out before they could make any sound. Yo. How are you doing? Asked Gohan, looking at Bone Clay. Hmm. You. Shouted Bone Clay in fear. Gohan lifted him while grabbing his neck and said, If you shout one more time, you will never be shouting again. Bone Clay's eyes widened, and he nodded in agreement. Gohan took him to the rooftop and said, I have a proposal for you, and you only have two choices. Accept the proposal or die. Can I ask what you want me to do? Asked Bone Clay, trembling. Gohan smiled and said, I want you to take the place of the princess of this country for a while. Bone Clay's eyes widened after hearing that. Are you going to kill the princess? He asked in panic. No. She's going to sail with us. So you are going to take her place as the princess of this country, said Gohan. But what if her father or the royal guards find out? Bone Clay asked. Don't worry. We have their permission, replied Gohan. Bone Clay was shocked again. The king is sending his daughter to be a pirate. He said in disbelief. You don't have to worry about unnecessary things. Listen, if you do a good job, I'll give you the eternal pose of the Kamabaka kingdom, said Gohan. Bone Clay's expression changed to a happy one. Really? You know where Kamabaka is? He asked. But Gohan just smiled in response. Okay. I'll do it. Said Bone Clay. Good. Let's get going, but first, we have to block your mouth, he said and tied a cloth over Bone Clay's mouth. Then he carried him like a sack and flew away. After a few minutes, they reached the place. Everyone was already waiting for his arrival. There you are. Where did you go? Asked Nami. Who's that person you are carrying? Did you kidnap someone? Asked Usopp in panic. Gohan didn't bother answering them and threw Bone Clay down to the floor. Mr. Two. Shouted everyone. Why did you bring him here? Asked Sanji. Gohan didn't answer and untied the cloth and removed the handcuffs from Bone Clay. That's a great idea, said Robin. Gohan smiled, while everyone else looked towards Robin in confusion. Robin looked at their confused faces and said, he wants Mr. Two to take the princess's place while she sails with us. They finally got the point. But can we trust him? Asked Zoro. Don't worry. He knows what's good for him, said Gohan with a smile. Yes, I'll do a great job. You guys can sail without worry. I'll take care of everything here, said Bone Clay with confidence. Nobody asked you. Said Sanji as he kicked Bone Clay. Vivi. Go and teach him some important things that he should know about you. Nami, can you dye her hair? Asked Gohan. Yes, Vivi, what color do you want your hair to be? Nami asked. Black color should be fine, replied Vivi. I'll go and buy some clothes that will help in disguise, said Gohan. Everyone got busy with the preparations. At dinner, Vivi was in her new look. She now had the same hairstyle as Nami but with black hair. When everyone was done eating, Nami said, we have to hide her face. Only dyeing her hair is not enough. Gohan gave Vivi a jacket and a mask. Wear these, he said. After Vivi was done wearing the jacket and the mask, 
everyone was jealous of how cool she looked. You look so cool. Said Chopper. She was now wearing something similar to the Assassin's Creed jacket and a mask that covered her face from below her eyes. Gohan. I also want to wear those, said Luffy. No. They are not stretchable like you, said Gohan. He looked at Vivi and said, you will have to learn to fight in this getup. I have bought more of these jackets and masks in different colors. You will only take those off when you are inside the ship. Even if you are on the deck, you have to wear those, said Gohan. Yosh. It's time to go. Said Luffy. I have arranged for your ride. They are waiting for you outside, said King Cobra. Vivi hugged him and said goodbye. When they got out of the palace, they saw Karu and six ducks standing there. Karu. Said Vivi and hugged him. She suddenly remembered something and looked towards Gohan. No. He can't come with us, said Gohan before Vivi could say anything. Vivi looked down in sadness. I am sorry, Karu. I cannot take you with me. But please take care of father for me. I will be back in no time, she said with teary eyes. Karu got sad but nodded his head. Are we going to ride them? Asked Usopp. Yes, they are the supersonic duck squadron, the fastest animals in Alabasta, replied Vivi. Everyone got on the backs of the supersonic duck squadron. Vivi took a last look at the palace and waved her hands. It took a while for them to reach the location where the Mary was, even with the speed of the supersonic duck squadron. Vivi hugged Karu again. Gohan approached them and put his hand on Karu's head. He transferred some of his key into Karu's body. Karu didn't feel anything because of the situation. Everyone got on board, and they waved their hands and said goodbye to the supersonic duck squadron. Even when Alabasta was out of sight, Vivi kept looking towards the direction of it. Sanji got close to Gohan and asked, Did you just transfer your key into Karu? Yes, I did, replied Gohan. Don't you think it's reckless? Asked Sanji. Maybe, but aren't you excited to see what he will do with that power? Asked Gohan with a smile. Sanji got speechless. You crazy bastard. Said Sanji. Stop overreacting, it's not like he can use key blasts. It will be fine, said Gohan with a smile. Before we go to sleep, I want to have a word with our new crewmates, said Gohan. Yosh. Let's eat something while Gohan speaks with them, said Luffy. Everyone sat down in the meeting room slash kitchen slash lounge. Since you guys have joined the crew. You should know about something, said Gohan and proceeded to tell them about his origin. They were shocked by the information. Since Robin was the most knowledgeable on the ship, she understood the significance of the information. If this information gets out, it will create more chaos than the One Piece, said Robin. Now, to the main point, you guys already know that there is a big difference in power between you three and the others in the crew, said Gohan while Vivi, Robin, and Chopper nodded their heads. But they were as weak as chickens not long ago, said Gohan. Who are you calling weak? Shouted Zoro, the rest were also annoyed by his comments. So you are the reason they became so strong, said Robin. Gohan smiled. It's good to have a smart person on the ship, he said. Then he proceeded to unlock their power. They were amazed by how strong they had become in just a few minutes. You guys have to train every day to get stronger. Vivi, since you are the weakest right now, I have something else for you, he said and gave her a devil fruit. San San fruit. Said Vivi as she looked at the fruit. Comment. Seven comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 38, Chapter 38. I'll chop off your D asterisk hashtag K. Yes, San San fruit. It will give you a great boost. It will help you protect your country in the future, said Gohan. But it's that man's fruit said Vivi with hatred. So, you don't want to use this power because he tried to destroy your country by using this fruit? Asked Gohan. Vivi nodded her head. Gohan sighed and said, devil fruits can't decide how they would be used. It depends on the wielder. If a wielder wants to destroy people's lives, he can do it. If he wants to save people's lives, he can do it too. So the choice is yours, said Gohan. Vivi looked at the fruit hesitantly, then suddenly she remembered her father's words, Vivi. I want you to become a powerful ruler who can protect her country with her own strength. She looked at the fruit with determination and took a big bite out of it. But she remembered that devil fruits were known to taste horrible. She somehow swallowed the fruit as her face turned blue because of the horrible taste. You didn't have to take such a big bite, even a small bite could do the job, said Gohan while looking at her weirdly. Gohan started their training from the next day. Chopper was running for his life in just one hour. Save me. He cried as he tried to get away from Gohan. Gohan hit him on the head and took him back for training. Two days later, they got their new bounties. Monkey D. Luffy. 130 million berries. Rora no Zoro. 80 million berries. Black Leg Sanji. 75 million berries. Great Liar Usopp. 60 million berries. Weather Witch Nami. 55 million berries. Tony Tony Chopper. 50 berries. Nico Robin. 
80 million berries. Poisonous Tungohan. 120 million berries. Warning, please stay away from him and cover your mouth and nose in his presence. Everyone was happy because of the increase in their bounties except Chopper and Gohan. Chopper was crying because of how little his bounty was, and Gohan was shaking in anger. Everyone wanted to laugh, but they knew what's better for them. They looked at Gohan nervously. Smoker! shouted Gohan to the sky. So you want to play like this, huh? Then don't come in front of me again, or I'll chop your D asterisk hashtag K off from your body, said Gohan with an angry face. Everyone was creeped out by his behavior. A few days later, Robin, Vivi, and Chopper could be seen standing on the deck with some light bruises on their bodies. All three of them looked out of breath, while Gohan was standing before them. You guys are improving quite rapidly, I am impressed, said Gohan. But we couldn't even touch you, said Vivi. Don't think about those depressing things. You guys are starting to have better control of your haki, wait, let's call it haki from now on because it also has some properties of ki, said Gohan. Sounds the same to me, came Nami's voice from behind. That's the point. Outsiders will not get suspicious if we call it that, said Gohan with a smile. But suddenly, small fragments of wood started to fall from the sky. Is it raining? Asked Usopp. Yes, it's raining ships, said Gohan while looking towards the sky. Everyone looked up and saw a ship many times bigger than the Mary falling from the sky. Everyone's eyes widened in shock. What's happening? Shouted Nami. We are going to die. Cried Usopp and Chopper. What a horrible way to die, said Gohan. Stop saying that, everyone shouted. Look closely, it's not falling on us, said Gohan. The ship dropped near the Mary. Gohan had to cover the Mary with his key because of the waves created by the fall. Guys, I think the log pose is broken, shouted Nami. Everyone looked at the pose and saw it pointing towards the sky. Robin then told them about the legend of Sky Island. Gohan saw a coffin floating on the surface of the sea. He brought it to the deck. Why did you bring that thing here? Shouted Nami in horror. Robin opened the coffin and started inspecting the skeleton, which was in the coffin. She found out that the ship was from the South Blue and it sailed over 200 years ago. While they were looking at the skeleton, Luffy and Usopp were trying to find anything useful from the wreckage of the ship. I found it. Luffy shouted and jumped back to the deck. He showed them the map of Skypiea. They decided to salvage the sunken ship. Luffy, Sanji, and Zoro dived down for that job. But after a few seconds, a pirate ship came near them. Hey, you guys. What are you doing here? This is our territory, only we can salvage ships around here, said a gorilla. He looks like Donkey Kong, thought Gohan. Who are you guys? Asked Nami. I am Masura, this is my crew, introduced Masura. After that, they started their salvaging operation. But they were discovered by Luffy and others underwater and got beaten up. Suddenly, a big turtle emerged from the water and swallowed the ship. Masura's pirates got frightened by the turtle, but Zoro cut the turtle into two parts from the middle. Masura's pirates got horrified after witnessing that. But suddenly, the sky turned dark. Everyone looked towards the sky to find three huge silhouettes of people with wings on their backs. Masura's pirates and Chopper, Nami, Usopp, and Vivi cried in fear. Oh. Look, we can see their shadows, said Gohan. Everyone looked at him in confusion. Gohan smiled and said, I think it's the people from Sky Island. What? They are so big. Shouted Chopper. Let's not go there, said Usopp while Nami and Vivi nodded their heads. Gohan hit them on their heads and said, it's their shadows, the island should be a little higher than the clouds. That's why their shadows are so big. While they were talking, Masura and his crew had already run away in fear. Yosh. Now let's go to Skypiea, shouted Luffy. How are we going to sail to the sky? Asked Nami. But suddenly, they remembered something and looked towards Gohan. But before they could say anything, Gohan said, No. I am not taking us there by flying. Since that ship was up there, that means there is a way to get to Sky Island, said Gohan. Luffy nodded his head, while everyone else sighed. Let's find if there is an island nearby. Then we can try to find a route for Sky Island, said Nami. No need for that, said Robin as she showed them an eternal pose. I took it from those pirates' ship, she said with a smile. Don't worry guys, I can sense a lot of people beyond those clouds. There's definitely an island, all we have to do is find a way to get to that island, said Gohan. Everyone started smiling as they sailed towards the island of Jaya. They were sailing towards Jaya while enjoying the nice weather. This is such nice weather, even the birds are enjoying it, said Chopper while looking at the flying seagulls. But suddenly, three of the seagulls fell on the deck. The birds got shot, shouted Chopper in horror. But the rest didn't believe him. Chopper is right, someone shot. He is quite powerful too, said Gohan while looking ahead. After a few seconds, they saw an island ahead. Shooting birds from that far away, said Usopp in disbelief. Comment. Five comments. 
vote. Zero left. Chapter 39, Storm of Emotions, Nami's Outburst in Mock Town. As they were about to reach the island, Gohan looked at everyone and said, Before we dock the ship, let me tell you guys something. We already know that our captain is an idiot. So I want you guys to remember that we are one of the strongest pirate groups in paradise. Everyone smiled at that as Gohan continued, So, we have a reputation to maintain. But if some weaklings try to provoke you, then beat the strongest one among them, and the rest will run away. Luffy and Zoro smiled after hearing that. After a few minutes later, they docked their ship at the port of Mock Town. There are so many pirate ships, said Usopp while looking around. So, how are we going to proceed? Asked Vivi. Everyone looked towards Gohan. Hmm. Why are you guys looking at me for? I am not the captain, said Gohan with an annoyed face. But you're somewhat a strategist of the crew, said Nami. Everyone agreed with her. Yosh. I am giving you the order to make a good plan, said Luffy. Gohan's face twitched, but he said, let's leave the information gathering to Robin because nobody is better than her at that. Chopper and I will tag along with her. Someone has to stay on the ship to protect it, while the rest can do whatever they want to do, said Gohan. Luffy, Zoro, Nami, and Vivi went to look around the town. Robin, Gohan, and Chopper left to gather information about Sky Island while Sanji and Usopp stayed on the ship. Mock Town was a rowdy place. Whenever someone bumped into Gohan or yelled at him, he would knock them out. So everyone was already afraid of them. Robin was using her devil fruit power every now and then for information. What? He really found some gold. But isn't the city of gold just a myth? Said a random guy on the street. Why are you talking so loud? Do you want others to know about it? Said the man next to him. Robin and Gohan looked at each other and walked towards them. Hello. Can you guys tell us about that city of gold? Asked Gohan as he appeared behind them. Wah. They got shocked by Gohan's presence and backed away. Who are you? What city of gold? We don't know anything, said one of them. Gohan sighed and threw one of them away. Way a Shouted the one who got thrown, while the other guy's jaw hit the ground, and his eyes almost popped out. Now, are you ready to talk? Asked Gohan with a smile. Huh? Yes, yes, please don't kill me. I will tell you everything, he said in fear. After that, he told them about Mont Blanc Cricket. He also told them his address. After that, they went to buy some clothes for Robin. Meanwhile, Luffy, Zoro, and Nami were in a bar. Nami was drinking beer in anger. How dare he throw money at me? If not for that pitiful owner of that hotel, I would have made them experience all kinds of weathers, she said in frustration. Then they met Blackbeard, who was eating pie. Luffy and Blackbeard started arguing over the food, but Nami punched Luffy on the head to end the argument. After that, Blackbeard left with his parcel and Bellamy and his crew came in. Look everyone. We have big shots from the East Blue. Straw Hat Luffy and Rorano Zoro, said Bellamy with a loud voice. People in the bar looked towards Luffy and Zoro in surprise. That kid is the pirate with a bounty of 60 million. Said a customer in surprise. Everyone in the bar was confused because Luffy didn't look strong at all. Don't be afraid of them, they got these kinds of bounties because they killed some weak marines. They are from the weakest sea, how strong can they be? Mock Sarquis. Everyone at the bar sighed in relief after hearing that. But suddenly, Sarquis heard a voice from behind. Are you trying to say that we are weak? Whispered Nami as she had appeared behind Sarquis. Before Sarquis could turn around, Nami knocked him out with a punch. Silence descended in the bar. Everyone's eyes almost popped out. When did she get behind him? Isn't she worth only 15 million, thought Bellamy in shock. Then he gritted his teeth and shouted, how dare you sneak attack him? Bellamy's legs transformed into springs, and he jumped towards Nami. Be prepared to die, he shouted. Nami dodged his attack by sidestepping and whispered, slow. Bellamy's eyes widened, then Nami just knocked him out with a punch as well. Are these guys idiots? They made her mad and appeared before her to get beaten. Well, it's good for us that she can let out her anger on them, said Zoro, while Luffy nodded his head. Everyone at the bar was terrified after witnessing that. She, she took down a pirate worth 55 million with a single punch, said a customer in fear. Crew members of Bellamy's pirates started backing away in fear. How can it be? Both Bellamy and Sarquis got knocked out with a single punch. Said one of them. Nami then turned her attention towards them. Then it was a one-sided beatdown. Nami just started punching everyone in the bar with an angry face. Even some customers got knocked out by her. As for the girls from Bellamy's crew, she made sure to punch them in the face. For a few seconds, people outside the bar could hear the shouts of pain and calls for help. After Nami was done venting her anger, they left the bar. But outside the bar, they saw Blackbeard eating pies. Just as they were about to walk past him, he said, Why did you waste your energy on those fools? They are not worth fighting. I just wanted to vent my anger, 
and they came right on time for that, said Nami, while Luffy and Zoro looked at Blackbeard with a serious expression. They started walking again, but Nami noticed the expression on their faces. What's with your expression? She asked. Didn't you notice? Asked Zoro. Notice what? Asked Nami instead. That guy was very strong, said Luffy. Strong? That weird guy? Asked Nami. So you were not using your observation hacky? I wonder what Gohan will think about it? Said Zoro with a smile. Nami's expression changed after hearing that. You. If you tell Gohan about this, you will not receive a single berry from now on, Nami threatened him. Why you witch? Said Zoro while gritting his teeth. Nami just smiled in response. Meanwhile, Gohan, Robin, and Chopper were walking back towards the ship. Robin and Gohan were carrying some carry bags. Chopper was wearing his new sunglasses. Gohan. Do I look good? He asked. But before Gohan could reply, someone bumped into Chopper, and his sunglasses fell to the ground. Sorry, said Chopper to the person he bumped into and was about to pick up his sunglasses. But that person crushed his sunglasses underneath his foot. My sunglasses. Cried out Chopper. You should be careful, kid, what if you got crushed by accident, said Jesus Burgess with a laugh. But just then, he was kicked by Gohan. His eyes bulged out as he flew back at high speed. You are lucky that you guys are useful for now, thought Gohan. Comment. 7 Comments. Vote. 0 Left. Chapter 40, Isn't it good to be alive? Burgess flew out like a bullet and disappeared from their view. Let's hope you don't die from the fall, thought Gohan. Stop crying, Chopper, I have another one for you, said Gohan as he gave another pair of sunglasses to Chopper. Really? Thank you, Gohan, said Chopper. Meanwhile, Van Auger was shooting the birds when he saw Burgess flying towards him. Hmm. Burgess. Said Auger in shock. He jumped up and caught him. Who could have done this to him? Muttered Auger when he saw Burgess's sorry state. With the straw hats, after a few minutes, everyone got back on the ship. Robin told everybody about their findings, and they started their journey towards Cricket's home. But a little far away from the port, they encountered Masura's brother, Xiaojo. What's with all these apes? Asked Usopp, while looking at Xiaojo's crewmates. We are humans. Shouted one of the crewmates. Are you related to that Masura guy? Asked Gohan. Yes, he is my brother. Do you know him? Asked Xiaojo, looking surprised. Not really, we met him on our way to Mock Town. Then we encountered a big turtle, and your brother ran away, replied Gohan. Xiaojo frowned after hearing Gohan. But Nami interjected between their talk. I think we should get going. We have to find that cricket guy, she said in a hurry. You guys are going to meet Cricket San. Why do you want to meet him? You are not after his gold, are you? Asked Xiaojo suspiciously. No. We just want to ask him about Sky Island, explained Luffy. Masura started smiling after hearing him. The Sky Island. Then you are going to the right person. Let's go, I'll take you guys to him, said Xiaojo. Do you know that cricket guy? Asked Usopp. Yes, me and Masura are his followers, he is a great man, said Xiaojo. They followed after Xiaojo's ship. When they reached the place where Cricket lives, they saw a big palace which turned out to be just a board. They started to doubt their decision to come to meet Cricket. Looks like Cricket San is underwater, let's wait for his return, said Xiaojo. As they were waiting, Nami found a storybook on Liar Noland. Sanji then told them that it was quite a famous story in the North Blue. Nami started reading the book for everyone. A city of gold? No wonder nobody believed him, commented Vivi. No. The city of gold exists. Noland was not a liar. Shouted Xiaojo. Stop shouting, Xiaojo, said a man as he came out of the water. Xiaojo looked towards the man and said, Cricket San. We Saruyama Alliance believe that Noland was not a liar, argued Xiaojo. But Cricket didn't say anything and dropped to the ground. Cricket San. Shouted Xiaojo as he ran towards Cricket. Everyone got close to him, and Chopper started to do a checkup. He has decompression sickness, it happened to deep sea divers, said Chopper. Meanwhile, at the bar where Bellamy and his crew were sitting, everyone had a somber look on their faces. Bellamy, we don't have to get depressed because of that. We lost because she used some underhanded tricks, said one of the crew members. He is right. I think that girl is a devil fruit user, and her ability should be related to speed. If we can restrain her, then she will no longer be a threat to us, said Sarquis. Next time I see them, they will be dead, declared Bellamy. After a few seconds, some people came in. What? He found gold. Said one of them. Then they started talking about Cricket. Bellamy and his crewmates heard them and decided to pay a visit to Cricket's house. On the straw hat side, Masura also came to Cricket's house. Luffy and the monkeys were getting along quite well. After a few minutes, Cricket woke up. 
Chopper asked him the reason for his diving in the water. Cricket then told them about the theory of the city of gold being under the water and how he found some gold by diving. Luffy asked him about the Sky Island. Cricket started laughing after hearing that. So, there's still some people who believe that the Sky Island exists, said Cricket. We already know it exists. We just want to find a way to get there, said Nami. How are you so sure that it exists? Asked Cricket, surprised by her confidence. Because I can sense people living up there, said Gohan. Cricket's eyes widened. You can sense people up there, how? He asked. Let's say, it's my special power, replied Gohan with a smile. Cricket didn't ask any more questions and told them about the knock-up stream. Is this knock-up stream very powerful? Asked Gohan. Yes, it is, replied Cricket. Can this stream push a part of an island to the sky? Gohan asked again. Cricket's eyes widened after hearing his question. You mean? Yes, you are looking at the wrong place. The city of gold should be on Sky Island, said Gohan with a smile. Luffy looked at Cricket with a smile and said, Why don't you come with us, old man? You can see for yourself if that city of gold exists or not. Everyone turned towards him in shock. Chopper started doing all kinds of check UPS on him. This is the second time he sounded intelligent. Is my influence working for him? Said Gohan with a smile. Narcissus thought everyone while looking at him. You should go with them, Cricket said. Leave the rest to us, we will take care of your home, said Masura, and Xiaojo nodded his head as well. Cricket started thinking about it. Stop thinking too much, after confirming about the city of gold, I'll drop you off at your house, said Gohan. Cricket got confused and asked, how are you going to do that? Can you fly? Yes. Replied Gohan. Cricket stood up in shock. You can fly. Then why don't you take them by flying? He asked. What's the fun in that? Said Gohan. Yes. That's boring, exclaimed Luffy. Cricket looked at them and thought are these people crazy? But he decided to help them and agreed to go with them to see if the city of gold exists or not. He told them about the time of the knock-up stream, he and the Saruyama alliance decided to help in upgrading their ship. When Gohan asked about the location of the knock-up stream, Cricket told them about the south bird. I'll stay here to help them, while the rest of you go and find that south bird, said Gohan. Luffy and others left to find the south bird while Gohan started helping the Saruyama alliance. Gohan told them not to worry about strengthening the ship, as it was unnecessary. After a few minutes, he sensed some people coming towards them. Those idiots decided to come after all, he thought. After Bellamy and his crew got close to their location, Cricket and others also noticed them. Stop. This is Saruyama Alliance territory, what are you guys doing here? Asked Xiaojo. Shut up, monkey. We are Bellamy pirates, there's no place in Jaya where we dare not go, said Sarquis. We heard Mont Blanc Cricket has found some gold from the sea. Give that gold to us if you guys want to live, said Bellamy with a crazed look. Gohan sighed while looking at them and said, looks like Nami didn't beat you guys enough. He started walking towards Bellamy and his crew. Sarquis looked towards Gohan and said, aren't you death demon Gohan from the straw hats? What are you doing here? You better stay out of our business. Gohan smiled and got in front of Sarquis and slapped him. His head turned backward, and he fell down. Nobody could comprehend what just happened before them. Why did you force me to kill you? Isn't it good to be alive? Then why did you guys come here to die? Asked Gohan with a smile while looking at Bellamy and his crew. Comment. 5 comments. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 41, Unfortunate Doflamingo. Sarquis. Muttered Bellamy in disbelief. Gohan then looked at Bellamy and got in front of him. Bellamy wanted to get away from him, but before he could move, Gohan grabbed his neck and lifted him up. Bellamy started struggling to break free from his grip, but it was useless. You know I wanted to kill you too but I changed my mind. Now I want you to tell Doflamingo that his death will be very painful because you guys annoyed me, said Gohan with a chilling smile. Bellamy's eyes widened in horror, but before he could say anything, Gohan knocked him out. Gohan then looked towards his crewmates. Bellamy's crewmates were already trembling after witnessing the state of Sarquis. When Gohan looked towards them, they wanted to run or beg for mercy, but they couldn't move at all. All they could do was tremble in fear. Is that why he is called the Death Demon? It feels like we are being watched by death itself, thought one of the Bellamy pirates. Gohan threw Bellamy before them and said, you guys only have 10 seconds, take these two and get lost. They somehow moved their bodies and picked up Bellamy and Sarquis, then ran away. Gohan turned around and saw that Cricket and others were looking at him nervously while sweating. He gave them a sunny smile and said, let's get back to work. Young people these days are so powerful. You cannot judge the strength of a person by their age, thought Cricket while looking at Gohan. They got back to working on the Mary. After a while, Luffy and others returned with the South Bird. Meanwhile, at Mock Town, pirates were drinking and having fun at the bar when suddenly a man came running into the bar in panic. 
we are in big trouble, he shouted in fear. Then he showed everyone the wanted posters of the Straw Hats. Everyone got horrified by the bounties of the Straw Hats crew. Thank God we didn't offend them, said one of the pirates. Yes, but Bellamy and his crew are in big trouble now, said another one while everyone else nodded their heads. Blackbeard also got the chance to see their bounties. Those guys have such high bounties. They'll be perfect for my plan, muttered Blackbeard. At Mary Giosa, there was a meeting being held to discuss the demise of Crocodile. Sengoku and Vice Admiral Tsuru were there. Doflamingo, Kuma, and My Hawk were also present in the meeting. When Lafitte showed up in the meeting hall and recommended Blackbeard as the replacement for Crocodile. The people there stated that nobody had ever heard about him, but Lafitte stated that they were presently working on a plan to change that. Doflamingo suggested giving them a chance. Luffy and his crew finally set off for the knock-up stream, led by the Saruyama Alliance. When they reached the right place, they saw a huge whirlpool. I wonder, what would happen if we fell inside that thing, said Gohan with a smile. Don't say that. Cried Usopp and Chopper. Just when they were about to fall inside, the whirlpool disappeared. Nami told them that the knock-up stream was coming any moment. But before that, the Blackbeard pirates showed up on a raft. Zay ha ha ha. Straw hat Luffy. I have come to collect your bounties, said Blackbeard with a laugh. That guy. Said Luffy with a serious expression. Oh. You are already up? Do you still feel like a champion? Asked Gohan while looking at Burgess. Burgess had bandages wrapped around his torso. You. He shouted while looking at Gohan. Was he the one who did this to you? Asked Blackbeard in surprise. Burgess nodded and said, he is very fast. I couldn't even use armament to defend myself. Blackbeard pirates looked towards Gohan with a serious expression. Poisonous tongue Gohan. 120 million berries, muttered Blackbeard. But why can't I sense his hacky? Does he have a way to hide his hacky, thought Blackbeard. Sorry, we don't have time for you guys right now, so goodbye. Said Gohan as he sent a small key blast to destroy their raft. Before the Blackbeard pirates could react, their raft got destroyed by the key blast, and they fell into the water. What was that? Asked Doc Q. He fired an energy blast with his finger just like Kizaru, answered Van Auger. Help me! Shouted Blackbeard as he started sinking. While the Blackbeard pirates were busy saving their captain's life, the knock-up stream finally burst out from the water. Mary started to sail upwards with the knock-up stream. Luffy started shouting in joy, but Sanji said, at this rate, we will be sent flying. They saw a sea king falling from the knock-up stream. Everyone started to panic. Vivi, make sure that nothing collides with Mary, said Gohan. Yes, replied Vivi as she started utilizing her sand. Gohan then looked at Nami and said, Nami. Look, we have the sea and the wind, what else do we need to sail? Nami got the point and started to give out orders. They unfurled the sails, and Mary started to fly upwards. Everyone started to get excited. Look, Gohan, Mary is flying, shouted Usopp and Chopper as they hugged Gohan in excitement. Gohan had a big smile on his face as he thought, this is the reason I came to this world, to experience these kinds of things. Gohan then noticed something unusual. Hmm. Where did the key go? I did cover Mary with my key. Who took it? But it was not time to think about it, so he covered Mary with his key again. They burst through the clouds and landed on the sea of clouds. Whoa. Look, we are sailing on the clouds, said Usopp. Everyone else was also looking around in excitement. You guys should concentrate on your breathing, warned Gohan. Everyone was confused, but they suddenly started to feel weak as it was difficult to breathe because the air was too thin. When they were trying to recover, they got attacked by a man who was skating on the clouds. Look, he is skating on the clouds, and he also has a bazooka, said Gohan. A shandion, thought Gohan. The man started attacking them, he kicked Zoro and Sanji away and jumped towards Gohan to kick him as well, but Gohan dodged his attack with ease. Not very friendly, are you? said Gohan and flicked him away. The attacker got blasted away and disappeared in the clouds. After that, an old man came riding a bird. He was wearing night armor, he introduced himself as the knight of the sky. But Gohan's attention was somewhere else. There he is, I wonder if we will be able to collect his fruit too, he thought with a smile. Comment. Six comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 42, A Frog in the Well. Gohan stopped thinking about the devil fruit and looked at Cricket, who was looking emotional. Your ancestors were not liars. Sky Island exists, and I am pretty sure that the City of Gold also exists, Cricket nodded his head with a smile. Ganfall was having a conversation with the others. He gave them a whistle to call for him if they were to get in a tricky situation. After Ganfall left, they started looking for a way to get to the Sky Island. Look. There are some weird clouds, said Chopper while looking toward a certain direction. Everyone looked toward the direction where Chopper was looking and found a waterfall of clouds. Let's go there, said Zoro. They started sailing toward the waterfall, 
but after a short distance, Nami told them to stop because there were some strange clouds blocking their path. Gohan jumped on one of the clouds. Wow. These are really soft and bouncy. I have an idea. Why don't we take some of these with us? It will be useful for betting and other stuff, said Gohan. Luffy and Usopp also jumped onto the clouds and started to play. But we don't have a lot of space, said Nami. Gohan looked at her as if she were an idiot and said, they have very low density, we can fit a lot of these clouds in a small space. After upgrading the Mary, we can make betting for everyone with them, said Gohan with a smile. Everyone got excited about it. Upgrading Mary? Asked Luffy. Yes, our crew is getting bigger, it's getting too crowded here. And Mary wasn't made to sail in these kinds of environments. So when we reach Water 7, we will hire some top-notch shipwrights to transform Mary into the best ship in the world, declared Gohan. Yosh. Mary will be the best ship ever. Shouted Luffy. What's Water 7? Asked Vivi. That's an island which has the best shipwrights in the world. If we want to get a shipwright as a crewmate, that's the right place for that, said Gohan with a smile. But we will need a lot of money to upgrade Mary, said Nami. Yes, and we will get it here in Sky Island. There's literally a city of gold in this place, said Gohan. He looked towards Zoro and said, Zoro. Give me one of your swords. Why do you want a sword? Asked Zoro. Obviously to cut these clouds, replied Gohan. Zoro gave him the sword. Gohan took the sword and thought, this is the first time that I am holding a sword. Yes. That's it. He started smiling and raised the sword over his head. By the power of Grayskull. I have the power. Gohan shouted as the sword started shining. Luffy, Usopp, and Chopper started clapping and praising, while the rest of the crew looked at him weirdly. What are you doing? Asked Zoro as his face twitched. I always wanted to do that. That was a very famous ritual from my world, said Gohan with a smile. After having his fun, he started cutting the clouds. They squeezed all the clouds in a big box and continued to sail towards the waterfall. When they got near the waterfall, they saw a big gate named Heaven's Gate. There they met a woman named Amazon, she told them that they have to pay 1 billion extals per person to enter Skypea. How much is that in berries? Asked Gohan. Amazon looked annoyed by his question and replied, 100,000 berries. That's still very expensive, said Vivi. You can enter without paying as well, said Amazon. Really? Then let's go. Shouted Luffy. But how do we get there? Asked Nami. Then suddenly, a big shrimp grabbed Mary and started climbing the waterfall. This thing is so fast. Said Sanji. Everyone grabbed onto something to save themselves from falling over. After a few seconds later, they saw an entrance. Once they got through the entrance, they saw an island before them. So beautiful. Said Vivi. So that map was real, said Robin as she looked at the name of the island. Skypea, that means that ship really fell down from here, said Nami. Luffy and Usopp jumped down and started playing on the beach. This place is amazing, thought Gohan. Everyone started jumping down, Cricket also joined them. After a few seconds later, they met Konis. She helped Luffy in making a hole in the fruit, which looked like a pumpkin. Nami wanted to get some information about Skypea, but they were interrupted by the arrival of Konis's father, Pegaya. What is that thing? Asked Nami while looking at the waiver. That's a waiver, replied Konis. Cricket's eyes widened after hearing that. This is the waiver that Nolan saw, he said. Pegaya collided with the tree but luckily didn't get hurt. Konis told him about them, and he invented them. Nami asked while inspecting the waiver, how did it move without sails? Pegaya then told them about dials while Luffy tried to drive the waiver and failed miserably. Konis and Pegaya told them that it is very difficult to ride a waiver, but Nami was able to drive it pretty easily. Luffy became jealous of her and started shouting, but Sanji kicked him for shouting at Nami. But suddenly, he looked up with a serious expression. Did you sense him too? Asked Gohan. Luffy nodded and said, he can sense us too. Yes, he can, but it doesn't matter. He is just a frog that doesn't know how big the world is, said Gohan with a smile, while everyone else looked at them in confusion. What are you guys talking about? Asked Zoro with a confused look on his face. It's nothing important, replied Gohan. Pegaya then invited them to his house. Everyone left with Pegaya and Konis except for Nami, who was busy riding the waiver. Pegaya told them about how the different types of clouds are formed and how they use them on the way to his house. Sanji offered to help him in cooking while Konis showed them the different kinds of dials. Can you show us where we can buy these dials? Asked Gohan. Konis agreed to take them to buy dials. Sanji came with the food, while they were enjoying the food, Sanji looked out of the balcony and asked, where's Nami-san? She's outside, replied Usopp. She's not there, said Sanji. Don't worry. She is fine. I can sense her, assured Luffy. But Pegaya and Konis were still worried and told them about the upper yard. They told them that it's forbidden to set foot on the upper yard, 
and God Enel will punish anyone who tries to go there. After eating, they returned to the Angle Beach as Luffy wanted to go. To the upper yard. But the wind was blowing in the opposite direction. After a few minutes later, they were approached by White Berets who crawled toward them. Who are these guys? Asked Luffy. They look like weirdos, commented Usopp. Hesso. They greeted. Hesso. Wah. Replied Pegaya and Konis. So, you guys are the ones who came from the Blue Sea and entered Skypea illegally, said McKinley while looking at Luffy and others. He then told them that they would have to pay 10 billion extals per person as punishment for entering illegally. Luffy and Usopp tried to argue, but he kept upgrading their crime level. Gohan looked at McKinley and asked, Oi! Can you fly with those wings on your back? Why do you want to know that? Let me tell you asking irrelevant questions is also a crime, said McKinley. Gohan smiled and appeared behind him. Then show me if you can fly or not, Gohan said and threw him away. He then looked towards the remaining white berets and asked, Do you guys want to swim in the blue sea? White berets started backing away. You don't know what you have done. Now the priests themselves will punish you guys, said one of them. Suddenly, multiple arms emerged from their bodies and broke their necks. Comment. Five comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 43, Sand Phantom Lily. The white berets ran away after hearing Gohan's words. What have you done? Now you guys have to face the wrath of God Enel, said Pegaya in despair. The Straw Hats didn't seem to care about that as they got back to the things they were doing. Gohan looked at Pegaya with a smile, but before he could say anything, Nami returned. Everyone. There are some people who want to kill us, and they work for some god, said Nami. Then she told them about what she saw on the upper yard. Interesting. I wonder if my blades can cut a god or not, said Zoro in anticipation. Yosh. Let's kick their ass, shouted Luffy. Actually, you are not going to fight this time, Captain, said Gohan. What? But I want to kick that god's ass, complained Luffy. No. You have a more important work to do, said Gohan with a mysterious smile. What kind of important work? Asked Nami, as she didn't believe that Luffy was able to do anything important other than fighting. Gohan looked towards Sanji and asked, Do we have some fruits on the ship? Sanji looked confused by the question, but he replied, Yes, we have. Then give a basket of fruits to Luffy, said Gohan. This made everyone more confused. What do you want to do? If you want him to eat while we fight, then a basket of fruits is not enough, said Sanji. It's not for him to eat. I want to test a theory about devil fruits, said Gohan. What kind of theory? Asked Robin with intrigue. I think that this Enel guy is a devil fruit user. So when one of you defeats him, I want to check if the devil fruit are ESP ons in a random place or in the nearest fruit, said Gohan with a smile. Everyone got surprised by this theory. This is too important. If the world government finds out about this, then. Said Robin but didn't finish her sentence as everyone knew what would happen when the world government got wind of it. That's why I want to try it here, as there's no chance of the news getting out from here, said Gohan. He then turned towards Luffy and said, You better not eat those fruits, or you will be served the same amount of food as Robin for a whole week, said Gohan with a smile. The Straw Hats were shocked by this. But Robin eats the least amount of food compared to everyone else in the crew, said Chopper with a shocked face. What? No way. I will die. Shouted Luffy in panic. But why does it have to be Luffy? Isn't it better if someone else keeps it? Asked Zoro. No. It has to be him because he is the luckiest person in the world, said Gohan, while everyone else was taken aback by this. How are you so sure that he is the luckiest one? Asked Vivi, as she felt that what Gohan said was not logical at all. Gohan smiled and said with confidence, that's because he has me as his crewmate. You cannot get any luckier than that, he said and thought also, his grandfather is a big shot, his father is a big shot, both of his brothers are successors of the big shots, and even his mentor is a big shot. Everyone's face started twitching, and they had the urge to beat him down. Then who's going to fight him? Asked Usopp. Zoro will decide that, you, Zoro, Sanji, Nami, Chopper, and... Shit. Gohan remembered something when he looked towards Vivi. What happened? Asked Vivi in confusion. Everyone else also looked towards him in confusion. We forgot to decide a name for her. Her disguise will be useless if we keep calling her by her original name, Gohan said in frustration. He looked at everyone and asked, nobody has called her by her name in public, right? I think so, replied Nami. Okay. Let's decide a name for her. Do you have any suggestions? He asked looking towards Vivi. Vivi nodded and said, how about Lily? That's a great name, Lily San said Sanji. Everyone except Zoro and Gohan liked that name. But is it suitable for a person with an outfit like that? Asked Zoro. You are right, we have to add a moniker. How about Sand Phantom Lily? Suggested Gohan. That's such a cool name. Said Nami. So cool. Gohan. 
Me too. I want a cool name too, said Chopper in excitement. Gohan looked at Chopper and started thinking, hmm. How about Gentle Beast Tony Tony Chopper? He asked. Oh. You are quite good at this, commented Sanji, while Chopper was over the moon as he loved Gohan's suggestion. Don't forget to announce your name with the moniker before Marines if you want it to be on your wanted posters, Gohan reminded them. Now, let's continue with the planning. Zoro, Sanji, Nami, Chopper, Usopp, and Lily will do the fighting. Luffy will also go with you guys. Chopper. Lily. I want you two to have a one-on-one -on -one battle against the priests. Zoro will choose your opponents, said Gohan, while Chopper and Lily nodded their heads with a serious expression. Zoro. You will decide the opponents for everyone, including yourself. But remember one thing, our goal is to defeat that god and his followers. Don't fight the locals, if they attack you, just knock them out, said Gohan. Wait. Why do we have to follow this moss head's orders? Shouted Sanji, feeling indignant. Because he is the vice captain, said Gohan. Now that you said it, he should be the vice captain. After all, he is the first mate, said Nami with the look of realization. Even Sanji stopped protesting after hearing that. What are you guys going to do? Asked Zoro. Me, Robin, and Cricket San are going to search for the City of Gold, replied Gohan with a smile. Nami's eyes started to shine after hearing that. You better find my City of Gold, she said. Everyone sweat dropped and thought your City of Gold. But before we go, we have to take Konis and her father to a safe place or that god might try to hurt them, said Gohan. You guys don't have to worry about them. I will protect them, said Ganfall as he came flying towards them on the air. Ganfall landed on the clouds and asked, but are you guys confident that you can defeat Enel? Gohan smiled and replied, he is just a person with a devil fruit ability. My friends can defeat him with no problems. Ganfall was shocked by his reply. In that case, the people of the Sky Island will forever be grateful to you guys. He said. But then they felt something and looked up. Oh. Looks like someone is mad, said Gohan. Pegaya and Konis dropped to the floor in despair while everyone else looked towards the sky with a serious expression. A beam of light fell toward them, but Gohan jumped up and swatted the beam away with his hand. Be a good boy and wait for my friends. They are coming for you and your people. If you are afraid, you can run away too, said Gohan while looking towards the direction where he felt Enel's presence. You want to hunt an almighty god. Then come, I will show you guys the real power of a god, said Enel with a confident smile. Comment. Six comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 44, Have Some Candy. Gohan looked towards Ganfall and asked, Do you know the way to get to that god Enel? Ganfall nodded and told them about the Milky Road. When they were about to go, Gohan remembered something. Ganfall san, can you hide our ship in a safe place as well? Make sure that no strange creatures attack it, requested Gohan. Don't worry, I will make sure to keep it safe, replied Ganfall. Then how are we going to get to the upper yard? Asked Zoro. You guys can take the dial boat to go to the upper yard, interjected Konis. Everyone went to get the dial boat. After they took the one which Luffy chose, they started their journey towards the upper yard, while Ganfall took Pegaya and Konis away. Meanwhile, at the god's shrine, Enel was meeting with the priests. Why did you call us here, god Enel? Asked Om. I want you guys to take care of those blue sea dwellers. You don't have to wait for them to enter your trial area. I want every one of you to work together to take them down, said Enel with a smile. What? All four of us? Are they that powerful? Asked Satoru in worry. Don't worry. No matter how powerful they are, they are no match for a god, said Enel with a confident smile. After a few minutes, the straw hats reached the entrance to the upper yard. They saw a jungle before them with some huge trees. They continued to travel on the milky road, which goes through the jungle. On the road, they encountered some traps, but they destroyed those with ease. They were getting attacked by some huge creatures constantly, which made them very annoyed. This place is getting on my nerves, said Luffy, feeling irritated. After a few minutes, they came across four tunnels, trial of swamp, trial of iron, trial of strings, and trial of balls. Which one should we pick? Asked Sanji. None. Just destroy them, let the enemy come at us, said Gohan. Zoro smiled and was about to attack, but Luffy stopped him and said, let me do this, I want to try something new. Everyone got interested as Luffy stepped forward. He put his thumb in his mouth and started blowing. His hands started to get bigger, everyone's eyes widened after seeing his hand. Luffy pulled his hand back and called out, Gum Gum. Gigantic pistol. And just like that, he destroyed the tunnels. What the hell? Shouted Cricket, while everyone else was smiling after seeing their captain's show of strength. That should be enough to get their attention. Well then, it's about time we split up. Good luck, guys, said Gohan. He grabbed Robin and Cricket and jumped towards the jungle. Okay. Make sure to find the City of Gold, 
shouted Nami as Gohan and the others disappeared into the jungle. They are here, said Luffy, and after a few seconds, four people, a big and a huge dog showed up. For causing the destruction in the god's land, you are now upgraded to class 1 criminals, said Shura. You will get annihilated for your crimes by us priests, said Ohm. But the straw hats just ignored them and started discussing among themselves. Chopper, take care of that dog and the bird, Vivi, you will be fighting that guy with the lance, Usopp, take care of that round guy, I will be fighting the one with the sword, while Love Cook will take care of the remaining one, instructed Zoro. Who are you calling a Love Cook, you moss head? shouted Sanji. What did you say? asked Zoro, and they started arguing. Nami punched them on the head and asked, What about me? Who should I fight? Don't worry. There's a whole army coming here. We can have a good time too, said Luffy with a smile. Hmm. So you guys can also use mantra? Asked Ohm. Mantra? You mean observation hacky, yes, we can, replied Usopp. Zoro looked interested and asked, can you guys use armament too? Armament? What's that? Asked Satori. How many types of mantra can you guys use? Asked Sanji. Types of mantra? Asked Ohm with a confused face. Zoro sighed in disappointment and said, beggars can't be choosers. Let's get started. Meanwhile, with Gohan and others, they had only walked for a few minutes and already encountered some weird creatures which they took care of easily. Man, this place is a mess, commented Gohan. But suddenly, he sensed something and said, you two wait here for a minute, I will be right back. Before Robin and Cricket could reply, Gohan disappeared. They looked at each other and sighed. A few hundred meters away from them, a small girl was running in the forest while carrying a small bag. She suddenly stopped and looked behind in worry. The next moment, Gohan appeared where she was looking. Gohan looked at her with a smile and said, Yo. Did you know I was about to appear? Asked Gohan. Isa didn't reply and took out a dagger and pointed it at Gohan. Gohan raised his hands and said, Hey. Don't be nervous, I'm not going to harm you. Here. Catch. Said Gohan as he tossed a candy towards her. Isa caught the candy and looked at it weirdly. What is this? She asked. Gohan took out a similar candy and put it in his mouth. That's a candy. Why don't you try it? He said. Isa hesitated, but after looking at Gohan's face, she put the candy in her mouth. Immediately, a blissful smile formed on her face. Gohan smiled and took out a bag of candy and gave it to her. This time, Isa didn't hesitate and took the bag. So what are you doing here? I am sure you can sense all those bad guys and dangerous creatures, right? Asked Gohan. I was here to take something. But I should be the one asking you that. You are the one who is not from here. Why are you guys fighting Enel's army? Asked Isa. That's because he wanted to kill us, so my friends are going to teach him some hard lessons, replied Gohan with a smile. As they were talking, a big crocodile jumped at Isa. Since she was busy eating candy, she didn't notice the crocodile. Just as the crocodile was about to bite her, it got obliterated by Gohan's punch. Isa's jaw hit the ground in shock. Gohan looked at her with a smile and said, I have answered your question. Now it's your turn. Comment. 5 comments. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 45, Clash of Powers in Upper Yard. Isa looked at him in surprise and asked, Can you guys really defeat Enel? Gohan smiled and replied, Yes, today is the last of his life. You guys used to live here, right? Gohan asked. Isa nodded her head and looked down in sadness. Gohan crouched down and looked at Isa's face, saying, Don't worry, you guys will be able to live again in the upper yard from today onwards. He patted her head with a smile after saying that. Isa was surprised and hopeful at the same time. Okay, let's get going, said Gohan as he grabbed Isa and disappeared before Isa could react. He appeared before Robin and Cricket with Isa. You are late, said Robin. Sorry, I was caught up in something, replied Gohan, while Isa was surprised by the change of scenery. Who's this child? Asked Cricket. She is one of the locals from here, they used to live in the upper yard before Enel came, said Gohan. Did you kidnap her? Asked Robin, looking at him doubtfully. No, do I look like that kind of person? She was running around alone in the forest, so I decided to bring her with me. And since she's a local, she might know something about the City of Gold, said Gohan. City of Gold? Asked Isa in confusion. Yes, we are searching for it. Have you heard of it? Asked Gohan. No, what's gold? She asked instead. Robin and Cricket shook their heads while Gohan looked embarrassed. Anyways, you will know when we find it. Let's get going, said Gohan, and they finally continued their search for the City of Gold. Meanwhile, with Luffy and others, the fight between the Straw Hats and the priests has already started. When is that army coming here, Luffy? Asked Nami. They will be here any moment, replied Luffy as they looked at the fights happening in front of them. 
Sanji vs. Satori asterisk asterisk. Sanji was dodging some balls made out of clouds. He could sense that some of them had living creatures inside them. Suddenly, Satori tried to attack him with his palm, but Sanji dodged. Do you have some kind of weapon in your palm? Asked Sanji as he could see that Satori was constantly trying to attack him with his palms. Sanji disappeared and appeared behind Satori and kicked towards the back of his head, but Satori dodged his attack and created some distance between them. Oh. You are quite good at using observation hacking. Looks like I have to increase my speed, said Sanji and took out a lollipop and put it in his mouth. Satori looked at him weirdly and said, You are weird. You are the one who looks weird, Sanji shouted back. Sanji could feel that everyone else was also giving him weird looks. That bastard exchanged all the toothpicks with lollipops. Now I can't even enjoy fighting because of him, thought Sanji as he gritted his teeth. He unleashed his hockey and appeared before Satori. Sorry, round bastard, but you can only blame him for this, said Sanji as he kicked him in the stomach. Satori saw the kick coming but couldn't dodge it because he was not fast enough. He got shot into the milky road. Other priests looked shocked. He got defeated with just one kick. Said Shura in disbelief, the other two also had a serious expression. But they didn't have time to think about Satori as the straw hats were already upon them. Lily vs. Shura asterisk asterisk. Shura dodged and started attacking Lily. You are not as strong as that blonde haired guy, are you? Even though you can turn into sand, you dodged my lance. That means you will get hurt by the flame dial, said Shura as he kept attacking her. No. You are wrong. I just don't want my clothes to get damaged, she thought and kept dodging. Let's try this, thought Lily and started controlling sand particles around the area. Shura was attacking her as she kept attaching some of the sand particles to his body. Shura didn't notice it and kept attacking her. For how long are you going to dodge? You are going to make a mistake sooner or later, he said as he licked his lips. But after a few seconds, he started to slow down. What's going on? She's getting faster and faster by the minute. Or. I am the one who's getting slower, he finally noticed that something was wrong. He gritted his teeth and asked, when did you? I am doing it for a while now, replied Lily. Now, I don't have to worry about you dodging my attack. Sand. Coffin, she said as Sand started to cover Shura's body, and only his head was visible in a couple of seconds. The giant bird wanted to save him, but Chopper kicked it away. Sorry, but you have to defeat me first if you want to go to help your partner, said Chopper. I hate violence, but the people of this island have suffered because of you guys. Sorry, but you have to pay for it. Sand. Burial. No. A -a 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 -a. Shouted Shura in pain as his body got crushed by the sand. Lily let go of him, and his body hit the ground. You are quite cruel, said Zoro. I love the cruel Lily San, said Sanji with his trademark dance. What did Gohan do to make you like this? Asked Usopp as he was freaked out after witnessing Shura's fate. Are you too done with your opponents? Asked Lily. Zoro looked disappointed. That guy with the sword thought that just because his cloud sword was as hard as steel he could defeat me. I can already cut steel, he got cut in just one slash, he said. Lily looked towards Usopp. My opponent. He forgot to breathe and passed out on his own, said Usopp as he still couldn't believe what happened. Now only Chopper was fighting. Everyone is already done with their fights. I have to hurry up then, Kong point. Chopper shouted, and his body started to get bigger. After a couple of seconds later, he transformed into a 20 meter tall gorilla. Amazing. Shouted Luffy as his eyes started to shine. I didn't know he could turn into something like this, said Sanji. Must be a new transformation, commented Usopp. Chopper caught the birds and threw him at the dog. The bird collided with the dog, and they both passed out. Chopper turned back to his normal form and skipped towards them. Everyone. Did you see that? He asked happily. Great job, Chopper, said Nami. That was amazing. Can you turn into more things now? Please turn into a robot and shoot lasers, said Luffy with excitement. He looked towards Nami and said with a smile, Look, Nami, our opponents are here. Around 700 people came into view. One of the soldiers shouted, Blue Sea Dwellers, you have committed blasphemy. Now, you will face the wrath of the Divine Squad. Yosh. Nami, let me take care of half of them first, then you can take care of the remaining half, said Luffy as he started walking towards the Divine Squad. Take out the dials, shouted a man who seemed to be the leader of the Divine Squad. They took out all kinds of dials, big and small, and pointed them at Luffy. Just as they were about to attack, they felt a shockwave passing through them, and they rolled back. One by one, members of the Divine Squad started falling. Zoro and others also felt that power. Conqueror. Said Zoro as his eyes widened. More than half of the Divine Squad passed out. What happened? Why did everyone fall like that? Did that guy do something? They started talking among themselves as they were horrified by what transpired before them. 
Luffy walked back towards his crewmates and said, Sorry, Nami. It looks like I took out more than half of them. I need more practice to control my conqueror Haki. But his words only made everyone annoyed. Comment. Four comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 46, The City of Gold, Shandia. Humph. Show off. Said Nami, irritated. She stepped forward and started making clouds with the help of the Klim attacked. The remaining Divine Squad was already trying to escape. Get away from here. She is planning to do something bad to us, shouted one of them. Nami stopped creating clouds and shouted, Thunderbolt tempo. Raining thunder. All of a sudden, the Divine Squad got attacked by multiple thunder strikes. Run away. Triple A. The Divine Squad got obliterated by those thunder strikes. Yosh. Let's go. It's time to kick that god's ass, shouted Luffy. But how do we find him? Asked Usopp. Luffy smiled and said, I know which way to go to find him. He is in that direction. Everyone looked toward the direction he was pointing at. Didn't Gohan and the others leave in that direction as well? Said Vivi. Then we better hurry up, or we might not be able to fight that god, said Zoro. Meanwhile, with Gohan and the others, Isa was crying while grabbing her head. Are you alright? Asked Robin. The voices. So many voices disappeared, said Isa with a shaky voice. Voices. Asked Robin with a confused look. She's talking about lives. She can use observation hacky, and I think she can sense everyone on the island, commented Gohan. What? That's impossible. She's just a child, said Robin in disbelief. Gohan crouched down in front of Isa and said, they were Enel's people. If you guys want to get your home back, then Enel and his men have to go. Do you understand? Isa still looked sad but nodded her head. Good. Then stop crying like a baby, said Gohan with a smile. I am not crying. Shouted Isa. Robin and Cricket also smiled when they saw their interaction. Let's get going, Luffy and the others are already done with their opponents. Now, only Enel and some weaklings are left, said Gohan. After a few minutes, they started seeing stone pavements. How is this possible? Said Cricket in shock as he stood before an old house. There was only half of the house present. Isn't that the front part of your house? Asked Gohan. Cricket didn't reply but kept looking at the house. So this upper yard was part of Jaya, said Robin. This place must have been brought here by the knock-up stream, said Gohan, while Isa was looking at them with a confused face. They started finding some homes which were almost swallowed by the forest. A lot of people are coming here, said Isa in panic. I know that already. Don't worry. They are just some weaklings, said Gohan with a smile. Let's wait here for them, we can't allow them to destroy this place because of our fight, suggested Robin. Cricket agreed with her as well. Okay. But I am not fighting. Robin. You are going to take care of them, said Gohan. Robin sighed but nodded her head. After a few minutes, around 50 people came running towards them. Their leader was a large man. He looked toward Gohan and others and shouted, By the order of God Enel, I, Yama, commander of the divine soldiers, will punish you for all the heinous crimes you have committed. One of the soldiers jumped on top of the house, and because of that, cracks started to form on the house. Robin lowered her head after seeing that and clenched her fist. Air started blowing around her, and her hair turned spiky. Looks like you guys made our archaeologist mad, said Gohan. Oh. Her hairstyle changed. How cool. Said Isa in amazement. Robin appeared before Yama and crossed her arms. Unforgivable. She muttered and kicked his stomach. At the same time, every divine soldier got kicked the same way by the legs that popped out in front of them. Yama and the divine soldiers got lifted from the ground. But Robin got closer to Yama and continued to kick him in different body parts. Every single soldier was also getting hit exactly the same way. Gohan, Cricket, and Isa were amazed by this. Wow. What a combo. Said Gohan with an amazed look. There are so many legs. Said Isa in shock. Robin kicked them into the sky, and multiple arms popped up on their bodies. Crutch. Muttered Robin as the divine soldiers fell down. Great job. Said Gohan as he gave her a thumbs up. How did you do that? It was so cool. Said Isa. Let's continue our search operation. I can sense that Luffy and the others are coming towards our direction, said Gohan. Why are they coming here? Asked Cricket. That's because Enel is in the same direction we're going, replied Gohan. What? We are going towards Enel. Shouted Isa in shock. No. Zoro and the others will take care of him, said Gohan. They continued their search for Gold City. Suddenly, Gohan sensed something and stopped. We have a guest incoming, said Gohan. Who is it this time? Asked Cricket in annoyance. Just as he said that, a huge python appeared before them. Oh my! Said Robin with an amused smile. Cricket and Isa started to tremble. The python started hissing at them and opened its mouth to swallow. 
but Gohan flew towards it and stopped it with his hand. Oi! Don't be angry. You are Nola, right? Nola's eyes widened after hearing his name from Gohan's mouth. If you give us a ride, I will let you hear the ringing that bell you are wanting to hear, whispered Gohan. Xalala. Nola made a happy noise after hearing that. Hey guys. This snake will give us a ride, said Gohan. What? Shouted Cricket and Isa. Nola brought his head closer to the ground so that they could climb on his head. Don't worry, he is a friendly snake, said Gohan with a smile. Cricket and Isa were speechless at his words, but they had no choice as Robin was already on top of Nola's head. They continued their journey. When they came out of the jungle, they saw many ancient-looking buildings buried in clouds. Hey Robin! Doesn't it look like there's a city below this cloud? Said Gohan. Gohan, go towards that stone, said Robin while pointing at a stone slab. They got down from Nola's head and got near the stone. Robin started reading the ancient texts. After she was done, she said, Gohan, you are right. The city of gold is right beneath us. Gohan smiled and looked towards Cricket and asked, Do you have the dagger? Yes, here. Cricket gave him the dagger, and Gohan started cutting the clouds and made a big hole. Let's jump down, said Gohan. But, before anyone could say anything, Nola dived down. Gohan smiled and put Isa on his shoulder and grabbed Robin and Cricket. Hold on tightly, he said and jumped down. Aaaa! Screamed Isa as they dropped towards the ground. Once they got to the ground, Gohan put Isa down and started looking around. Amazing! He said. Is this? Shandia, our home! Muttered Isa. So this is the place that Noland was talking about, the city of gold, said Cricket with tears in his eyes. Yes, this is the city of gold, Shandia. Said Robin. Comment. Seven comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 47, You are slow. But where's the gold? How can it be called a city of gold if there's no gold in here? Asked Cricket with a bewildered face. Why don't we ask our guest? You know where the gold of the city is, right Enel? Asked Gohan with a smile while looking towards a building where Enel had appeared. Enel frowned and said, That's God Enel for you, Blue Sea Dweller. Gohan just smiled at him, which irritated Enel more. Enel was about to attack him, but suddenly Luffy's voice rang out, Gohan. Everyone looked up and saw Luffy looking at them with a grin. Zoro and the others also came towards the hole. What are you guys doing down there? Asked Zoro. Yo. Did you run all the way here? Asked Gohan instead of answering Zoro's question. It's all Zoro's fault. He made us run all the way here in fear of not being able to fight that god Enel, complained Usopp. Gohan looked towards Vivi and Chopper in surprise and asked, You two can keep up with them already. Chopper and Vivi smiled awkwardly, I didn't run, Sanji carried me while he was running, said Chopper. I didn't run either, I just turned my body into sand and flew here, said Vivi. Gohan nodded in understanding. It's good that all of you are here. Now I can take care of you all at once, then I can finally go to the fairy Verth, said Enel with arrogance. Fairy Verth. Everyone except Gohan was confused. And where is this fairy Verth? Asked Gohan while trying hard not to laugh. Do you also want to go there? Don't even think about it, only a god can live there. But I will tell you where it is, said Enel, pointing towards the sky and continued, it's there, you will be able to see it when the sky turns dark. Gohan couldn't help himself and started laughing, ha ha ha. You dare to laugh at me? Shouted Enel and appeared beside him, punched him, but his fist phased through Gohan's body. What? thought Enel as Gohan in front of him disappeared. Man you are so impatient, said Gohan as he appeared behind Enel and grabbed him by the back of his neck. Even though you're a lightning man, your reflexes suck. Hey captain. Catch. Said Gohan and threw Enel towards Luffy. Luffy was confused but caught Enel by grabbing his neck anyway. You dare to mock a god. Elthor. Shouted Enel and electrocuted Luffy. Luffy. Shouted Nami. But Luffy just blinked in confusion. Enel's eyes widened and he started attacking Luffy again and again. Why are you keep flashing lights at me? Asked Luffy in confusion. Oh yes. He is rubber. Lightning won't affect him, commented Nami. Hey you guys take him away from here if you want to fight him. We don't want you guys to damage the city, said Gohan while looking towards Zoro. Wait a minute. Did you find the city of gold? Asked Nami in anticipation. Yes, this is the city of gold, replied Gohan. What? But I don't see any gold said Nami in panic. It's because that guy took it all, said Gohan while pointing at Enel. Nami immediately turned towards Enel and shouted, what did you do to my gold? Everyone, including Enel, sweat dropped after hearing her words. You guys make sure to ask him about the gold after beating him, said Nami in frustration. You guys better leave now if you want to fight him and don't forget the fruit basket, reminded Gohan as he sensed people from Shandia entering the upper yard. Luffy, Zoro, 
and Sanji took away Enel with them while Nami and others stayed behind. After a few minutes later, he sensed some people around the hole. Isa! Shouted a woman while looking through the hole. Riki! Isa shouted back. One after another, warriors from Shandia started jumping down. Gohan looked at the warriors in front of him. In the front was a tall man who was carrying a bazooka. He looked towards the city with wide eyes and started walking forward. Whipper, stop. I will talk to her, shouted Riki in worry as she saw Whipper walking towards Isa. But Whipper wasn't looking at Isa. He was looking at the city behind her. This is our home, Shandia. He muttered in shock. The other warriors also looked at the city with wide eyes. Are you guys the original residents of this city? Asked Cricket. Cricket's question brought Whipper out of his shock. You guys. From the Blue Sea, how dare you set foot on this sacred place? Said Whipper in anger. Wait, Whipper. They defeated Enel's army and found our home. Big Brother Gohan said that his friend will defeat Enel, then we can live in the upper yard again, said Isa in an excited voice. So, these guys defeated those priests and soldiers? Asked Riki in shock. It doesn't matter. This is our fight. These people have no right to interfere in it, said Whipper. Why is everyone so stubborn in this world? Can't you be happy that you guys don't have to fight anymore? Asked Gohan. We don't need your help. We will fight our battles with our own strength. I will take care of you guys after I take down Enel, said Whipper. Gohan sighed after hearing him and started walking towards him. Wait. Please don't hurt Whipper. Pleaded Isa while grabbing Gohan's leg. Gohan's face twitched. How did I become a bad person again, he thought while looking at Isa. Don't worry. I am only going to talk with him, said Gohan with a smile. Isa sighed in relief and let him go. Gohan got in front of Whipper and said, Look, man, we are here to find some gold. We don't care about your city or your battle. My friends are fighting with that god Enel. After they're done with him, you guys can live in the upper yard again, and we will get some gold from that bastard. You guys don't have to die too. It's a win-win for all of us, said Gohan with a calm tone. What did you say? You think we can't defeat Enel? Do you think we are weak? Why don't we test it? Said two of the warriors. Gohan just smiled and said, Do you guys know that physical attacks won't work on Enel? He is a Logia user, a lightning man to be precise. Why don't you try whatever means you have prepared to defeat him on me instead? Said Gohan as he spread his arms. What? You arrogant bastard. Who do you think you are? Shouted Kamakiri. Whipper raised his hands, and everyone stopped shouting. Do you really think we don't have a way to defeat Enel? Asked Whipper. No. You guys are too weak to defeat him, said Gohan with a straight face. The straw hat sighed in defeat, while Isa looked horrified. Whipper gritted his teeth in anger and pointed his bazooka at Gohan's face and said, Then as you wish, die. Boom. Gohan got hit right in the face, and smoke filled the area around him. Cough cough. Do you want to kill Enel by suffocating him with the smoke? In that case, you need a lot more smoke to achieve that, mocked Gohan. When the smoke cleared, everyone could see that he was perfectly fine. The warriors became shocked by the outcome. Not even a scratch, muttered Riki. Whipper was also surprised by this, he took out a dial from his pocket and put it against Gohan's chest and said, let's see if you can survive this. What are you doing, Whipper? That's a reject dial. You might die too, warned Kamakiri. But Whipper didn't respond and shouted, reject. Whipper got flung backward because of the backlash. Whipper! Shouted Kamakiri as he ran towards Whipper. The warriors looked at Whipper in worry, but suddenly Gohan's voice rang out, so that dial hurts the user as well. Everyone except Straw Hats froze, no. It can't be. Whispered Riki as she looked at Gohan. How is this possible? Muttered Whipper as he saw Gohan perfectly fine after getting hit by the reject dial. Are you guys satisfied now? Let's just wait for my friends to finish Enel. Meanwhile, you guys can look around. Don't be shy, this is your city after all, said Gohan with a smile. Comment. 7 comments. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 48, Divine Duel, Zoro vs. Enel. Is this guy some kind of monster? Thought the warriors of Shandia. What should we do now? Asked Riki with nervousness. Whipper looked down as he mulled over Gohan's words. Riki. Isa came running towards them. Isa. What were you thinking? Do you know how worried we were? And why are you with those guys? Asked Riki while reprimanding her. Isa's expression changed, and she replied with an awkward smile, I came to Upper Yard to collect some verth. What? Shouted some of the warriors in shock. Isa nervously looked towards Whipper and saw that he was also looking at her with an angry face, so she quickly hid behind Riki. That's not important. When I was collecting the verth, I sensed someone approaching from behind. When I looked back, suddenly Big Brother Gohan appeared before me. I have never sensed anyone as fast as Big Brother Gohan, said Isa with an amazed look on her face. 
everyone looked towards Gohan in fear. He told me that his friends were going to defeat Enel and his army and that we can live in Upper Yard again. He even gave me candies, said Isa as she showed them the bag of candy. Riki looked at the bag of candy, and just as she was about to touch it, Isa hid it behind her and said, This is mine. Everyone's sweat dropped after hearing her. Why are you traveling with them? Asked Riki. Big brother Gohan said that it was dangerous for me to be alone in this place, so he took me with him. They were trying to find some city of gold. That's how we ended up here. But you won't believe what happened after we arrived here, said Isa with an excited face. What happened? Asked Riki, perplexed by Isa's enthusiasm. Enel showed up, he wanted to attack big brother Gohan, but big brother Gohan grabbed him like a chicken and threw him towards the captain guy, who also caught him with ease. Then they took him somewhere else. It was so awesome. Said Isa in excitement. Shandians were dumbfounded after hearing that. Enel got treated like a chicken. Muttered Riki. So, he was right. We really are weak, said Whipper as he stood up. Whipper. Said Kamakiri in worry. That means we have to become stronger to protect our home, said Whipper with determination. Meanwhile, with Luffy and others, this should be a good place to fight, said Zoro. They looked towards Enel, who was hitting Luffy with his trident, but it wasn't working. What is your body made of? Shouted Enel in frustration. Luffy looked towards Zoro, who nodded his head. Luffy released Enel from his grip. Just as he got released, Enel created some distance between Luffy and himself. You have made a big mistake by releasing me, said Enel while rubbing his neck. He was about to say more, but Zoro cut him off. And now you are going to make us pay, right? Let's get to the point and start the fight. I hope that you won't disappoint me, Mr. God. Said Zoro as he unsheathed two of his swords. Do you think just because you guys can touch me, you will be able to defeat me? I can sense from my mantra that you guys are not that strong. There should be some kind of tricks that you are using to touch me, but now you are going to witness the true greatness of the power of A. But Enel couldn't finish his words as he had to dodge a flying slash. I told you, it's time to fight, said Zoro with a smile. Enel's cheek had a small cut because of the slash. You insolent bastard! Shouted Enel as lightning started to dance around him. Sanji gave the fruit basket to Luffy and said, If you touch even a single fruit, I will tell Gohan about it. Luffy pouted but took the basket. Zoro appeared before Enel while dodging all the lightning and tried to cut him into two pieces, but Enel turned into lightning and dispersed. Since Enel's observation Haki was a lot stronger than Zoro's, he was able to dodge Zoro's attacks. Suddenly Enel touched Zoro's shoulder. Release. He shouted and electrocuted Zoro. But Zoro only felt a little shock. Is this your best shot? Mocked Zoro. Enel frowned and shouted, 1 million volts. Thunderbird. Zoro got hit by a bird of lightning. He felt a burning sensation all over his body but only gritted his teeth. That hurts, you bastard. Shouted Zoro. It was supposed to hurt more than that. Enel shouted back. Oi. Mosshead. Why aren't you using armament hacky to protect yourself? Asked Sanji. Because my opponent can't use it. I am only going to use it to attack him, since he is a Logia user, replied Zoro without looking at him. Just then, Enel appeared in front of him and attacked with his trident. Zoro crossed his swords and stopped his attack. Enel then started attacking him with trident in high speed. What happened? You were acting tough just a few minutes ago, and now, you are only defending. Is this how you are going to defeat me? Enel started mocking Zoro. Zoro stopped his trident with his swords but Enel attacked him with his lightning. 10 million volts. Elthor. Shouted Enel. Shit. Acknowledge. Zoro got hit by Enel's attack and got down to his knees. Dumbass. Muttered Sanji. See. You guys are not strong enough to defeat a god, said Enel. Zoro stood up and unsheathed his Wado Ikimanji. A strong opponent at last, I can finally go all out, said Zoro and gripped Wado Ikimanji with his teeth. He unleashed his haki. His hair turned spiky as he was surrounded by a greenish aura. Three sword style. Vanishing swordsman, said Zoro and appeared before Enel. Enel defended himself with his trident but got sent flying 50 meters away. His strength and speed have increased so much, thought Enel. Enel looked towards Zoro but didn't see him there, but suddenly Zoro's voice sounded beside him. Where are you looking at? Said Zoro and slashed at him. Enel tried to dodge but he was a little late. Both of his earlobes got cut from Zoro's attack, and he started to bleed. Look, I cut your ears to normal size, mocked Zoro. Enel gritted his teeth in pain and anger. An insane amount of lightning started to dance around him. His body turned into lightning, he got bigger, and his trident also got covered in lightning. Hundred million volts. Wreath of God. Shouted Enel as a huge beam of light fell onto Zoro. Boom. A huge explosion rang out. When the smoke cleared, Zoro was standing inside a huge crater. Smoke was coming out from his body, his clothes were tattered, and there were burnt marks all over his body. 
Suddenly his swords dropped to the ground, he vomited a mouthful of blood, and fell to the ground. Comment. Four comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 49, Birth of a King. Moss head. Shouted Sanji just as he was about to go towards Zoro. Enel attacked him and Luffy with his lightning, but both of them dodged his attack. Looks like I have to beat you up. Said Sanji. Just as he was about to attack Enel, Luffy stopped him and said, The fight is not over, Zoro hasn't lost yet. Ha ha ha. What did you say? That guy who is lying there has not lost the fight? He's done. And you guys are next, said Enel with a big smile. While they were talking, something else was going on in Zoro's mind. Even though I am training harder than you, I still can't defeat you, Kuana, said Zoro in frustration. Kuana sighed and looked at Zoro. You will never be able to defeat me, Zoro because my ambition is greater than yours. But we both have the same ambition, to become the world's greatest swordsman, argued Zoro. It doesn't feel like that whenever you spar with me. You only think about defeating me, while on the other hand, I don't care about defeating you because you are not my competition. In your mind, you think that after defeating me, you will be able to become the world's greatest swordsman, but Zoro, I am not the world's greatest swordsman, said Kuana and walked away. Zoro looked at his hands and started muttering, No you are wrong. You are wrong. You were right. Suddenly, a heavy pressure descended upon Enel. Everyone turned towards Zoro and saw him slowly standing up. What is this power? That can make even a god tremble, said Enel while looking at his trembling hands in disbelief. Isn't that? Conqueror Haki. Said Luffy with a smile, while Sanji looked annoyed. Zoro held Wado Ikimanji. You were right, Kuana. I never wanted to become the world's greatest swordsman, it was your dream. Now, for you, I will make Wado Ikimanji the greatest sword in the world, while I will be the greatest to ever hold a sword, he said and held Wado Ikimanji with both of his hands and raised it over his head. What are you rambling about? Have you gone crazy because of all those shocks? But it doesn't matter. I am tired of you guys getting in my way. Now I will disintegrate you all along with this place, Enel started going up in the sky and condensed thunderclouds to create a big sphere. Rigo! Shouted Enel, and the black sphere started to come down. Zoro didn't even look up. Green mist started to come out from his body as he muttered, King of Hell. What the hell is that? Enel's eyes widened as he looked towards Zoro. He saw a silhouette of a giant skeleton with green pupils and wearing a crown behind Zoro. The skeleton then raised a big sword over his head as if mimicking Zoro, his sword started burning with green flames. The same thing happened with Zoro's Wado Ikimanji, and his pupils also turned green as he said with a bored tone, Netherworld Slash. Both Zoro and the skeleton brought down their swords. Before Enel could react, he got cut right down the middle along with Rigo. Even the clouds behind them got cut. Enel disintegrated along with Rigo, and Zoro dropped to the ground again. Zoro! Shouted Luffy as he and Sanji ran towards him. Luffy gave the fruit basket to Sanji and started checking on Zoro. Oi Zoro! Are you with me? Asked Luffy as he started slapping Zoro. He is already passed out, you idiot. Let's take him to Chopper, said Sanji. Meanwhile, Gohan was looking towards the direction where Zoro and Enel were having their fight. What are you looking at? Asked Robin. Gohan looked at Robin and replied, Birth of a king. Birth of a king. Asked Robin in confusion. Gohan smiled and said, Forget it. Did you find something useful? Yes, there was information about a golden bell. It was very important to the people of Shandia but it looks like Enel took the bell along with all the gold. Now, we can only hope that Luffy and others can force out some information about it from Enel, said Robin. Gohan smiled awkwardly and said, I don't think that's possible. Robin looked confused, so he explained, Zoro killed that god Enel a few minutes ago, and now there's nothing left of him to extract information from. Robin's eyes widened. Mr. Swordsman killed him. Let's hope they asked him about gold before killing him, or Miss Navigator will not be happy, she said with a smile. Gohan sighed after imagining the tantrum Nami would throw. It can't be helped. You guys wait here, I will go and try to find that golden bell and the gold that Enel took, said Gohan and flew away. Everyone else saw him flying. Did that guy just fly away? Asked Kamakiri in disbelief. Hey Robin. Where did Gohan go? Asked Usopp. He has gone to look for the gold, replied Robin. But where is he going to look for it? Luffy and others are not here yet. We don't know where that god Enel has hidden all the gold said Usopp in confusion. Robin was about to say something, but Whipper, who heard them talking, interjected, Did you just say Golden Bell? Yes, do you know about it? Asked Robin. Yes, it's called the Light of Shandia. According to the great warrior Kalgara, the bell was created to tell the world that we are here, showing their ancestors the way back to their island, as well as to signify to intruders that they are not afraid of them. It represents the days of the Shandians' past glory, said Whipper, feeling emotional. We have to find the bell so that we can fulfill our ancestor's promise to his friend, 
said Whipper with determination. What kind of promise? Asked Usopp. Cricket also joined them to see what's going on. Around 400 years ago, when Shandia was part of the Blue Sea, a sailor came to our land. He saved the lives of our people and became a close friend of our ancestor, the great warrior Kalgara. He found our island from the sound of the golden bell. That's why our ancestor started to ring the bell every day in the hope that when his friend returned, he would be able to find his way to Shandia, said Whipper. Eyes of the straw hat pirates widened in shock, while Cricket started trembling. That friend of your ancestor, was it Mont Blanc Noland? Asked Robin. Now it was Whipper's turn to be shocked. How did you know that? He asked. Cricket stepped forward and said, because I am his descendant, Mont Blanc Cricket. Comment. Seven comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 50, Golden Bell and Gold Hunt. You are Noland's descendant. Asked Whipper in shock. Cricket nodded his head and told him about what happened to Noland after he left Shandia. The Shandians were heartbroken by Noland's fate. Whipper then told Cricket about the stories of Kalgara and Noland. After a while, Gohan returned with the Golden Bell. Everyone was amazed after seeing the Golden Bell. The Light of Shandia. Said Whipper with teary eyes. Where did you find it? Asked Robin. I found it on top of that giant beanstalk. It must have taken it up when the island landed here, replied Gohan. Chopper. Where are you? Zoro is injured, suddenly Luffy's voice rang out as he and Sanji came running towards them while carrying an unconscious Zoro. Huh? Zoro. What happened to him? Someone call a doctor. Chopper started to run around in panic. You are the doctor. Shouted the straw hats. While Chopper was treating Zoro, everyone else was admiring the golden bell. So much gold. Said Nami with a crazed smile. No. Don't even think about it, warned Gohan. Nami sighed in disappointment, but she suddenly remembered something and ran towards Luffy. Luffy. Did you guys find out where my gold from that god Enel? Asked Nami in a hurry. No. Zoro killed him before we could ask about the gold, replied Luffy. What? He killed that guy without asking about my gold? How could you guys let it happen? Now what will happen to my gold? Shouted Nami as she grabbed Luffy's neck and started shaking him. Gohan ignored them and looked towards Sanji and said, Sanji. Give me that fruit basket. Do you want to check it now? Asked Sanji as he gave the basket to Gohan. Yes, let's see if my experiment worked or not, said Gohan. Luffy and the others also surrounded him to see. Gohan started to take out fruits from the basket and found the fruit he was looking for. He held the fruit in his hand and said with a smile, Look. My theory works. Everyone else was shocked by the revelation. It really works. What are we going to do with it? Sell it? Asked Nami while looking at the devil fruit closely. No. It's way too important to just sell for some berries, said Gohan. Instructor San is right. This is one of the most powerful devil fruits in the world. It would be a waste not to use it for ourselves, said Robin as she got back from reading the text written on the golden bell. Instructor, thought Gohan, his face twitched. What did you find that made Cricket and the Shantyon so emotional? He asked. It tells the location of one of the three ancient weapons, Poseidon, and that it has served its purpose. That's why they are happy, replied Robin. But why is Cricket San emotional too? Asked Sanji. That's because the Shantyons have decided that Cricket San and Whipper are going to ring the bell for obvious reasons and start a new era for the people of Shandia, replied Robin. After a few minutes later, Cricket and Whipper rang the bell. Nola came near the golden bell and started dancing to the sound of the bell. Moments later, Ganfall came flying towards them on his bird, Pegaya, and Konis were also with him. The Shandyons raised their weapons after seeing him, but Gohan stopped them. He is not here to fight. The war between the people of Shandia and Skypiea is over. Right, Ganfall. Said Gohan. Ganfall jumped down from the back of his bird and said, Yes. That sound of the bell was the signal to end our war. But for how long? Someday you guys will try to take our land again, accused Whipper. I have a solution for that. You guys just have to give a small part of the upper yard to the people of Skypiea for farming. They will not be allowed to live here. But since you guys are in the Sky Island, you have to give them something too, said Gohan. The Shandians agreed after thinking for a while. Yosh. Now it's time for a party. Shouted Luffy. But Nami slumped down in disappointment. What's the reason to party? After all the troubles, we still didn't get any gold, she said while crying. It was all that Mosshead's fault, shouted Sanji. You were also there, said Usopp. But I know where the gold is, said Gohan. But they didn't realize what Gohan said and continued lamenting over the gold. But suddenly Nami's eyes widened, and she appeared in front of Gohan. You know where the gold is? She asked in anticipation. Gohan nodded his head. Then why didn't you tell us earlier? She shouted in anger. Because it was funny looking at your disappointed faces, replied Gohan. Everyone started attacking him, 
but he dodged them easily, so they hit each other instead. Gohan looked towards Sanji and said, Give me one of Zoro's swords. Sanji got confused. What? You want to fight us with a sword? We were just joking. Said Usopp in panic. Do I need a sword to beat you guys? I want to cut the gold with it, said Gohan. Cut the gold? Asked Vivi in confusion. Yes, that bastard Enel has used all the gold on his ship. So I am going to take some gold that Mary could carry, said Gohan. Robin clenched her fist and said in anger, that was more than just gold. Yes, that bastard ruined ancient relics. It would have been way more expensive than just simple gold, said Gohan. What? I will get less money because of that bastard. Shouted Nami in anger. Everyone just ignored Nami's outburst. Okay. I will be right back, said Gohan as he flew away. A few seconds later, he landed on the Ark Maxim. Now which part should I cut? Said Gohan as he looked around. Let's cut this golden face along with this throne. Mary should be able to carry this much weight, he muttered and cut off the face and throne from the ship and flew away with them. Comment. Six comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 51, Mary's Transformation, Crew Surprise. When Gohan got back, the party had already started. The straw hat saw him and came running towards him. Nami was in the front, she spread her arms and shouted, My gold. She hugged the gold and started rubbing her cheeks against it. Isn't that too much? Asked Vivi. Yes, can Mary carry that thing? Asked Usopp. Even if she's able to carry it, it's too big to fit anywhere on the ship, said Sanji. I will take care of that. Usopp, let's go. You will be buying some dials. Don't worry about the money and buy all kinds of dials. The bigger, the better, said Gohan. He picked up the gold and told Usopp to sit on top of it. He had to take Nami with him because she refused to let go of the gold. Hey Gohan, we forgot to ask the location of Mary from Pegayasan and Konis, said Usopp in worry. Gohan smiled and said, I already know where Mary is. Usopp and Nami were confused, but Gohan didn't say anything else. They found Mary in front of a small house. This should be Ganfal's house, said Gohan. Usopp, go bring some crates, said Gohan and started cutting the gold into small cubic shapes. Usopp brought the crates and started putting the gold inside. They only had four crates available, so Nami decided to keep the remaining gold inside the girl's room. After they were done with that, Gohan said, don't disturb me for a while. He sat down cross-legged on the deck and started sending his key to Mary. Nami and Usopp could feel what he was doing but didn't know why he was doing that. Oh. It looks like you are quite hungry, thought Gohan and continued to provide Mary with his key. After a while, unbelievable. She ate almost 50% of my key, thought Gohan in shock. After a few seconds later, Mary stopped absorbing the key. Looks like you're finally done, thought Gohan. It feels weird to have a body. Suddenly, Gohan heard the voice of a child. He looked back and saw a small girl with short blonde hair sitting on the railing. Gohan stood up and smiled. Gohan. We heard a child's voice. Hmm. Who's this little girl? Asked Usopp, as he and Nami looked at Mary. She's. Usopp. But before Gohan could explain, Mary jumped towards Usopp and hugged him. Usopp got surprised by this. Wait. What? Who are you, little girl? How do you know my name? Hmm. You look familiar, have we met before? Asked Usopp as he looked at Mary's face. I also think she looks familiar. What do you think? Gohan. Asked Nami. Gohan looked at Mary's face but didn't remember seeing anyone like her. No. I don't remember seeing anyone like her before, said Gohan. Hmm, that's weird. But anyways, do you know who she is? Is she related to Ganfall? Asked Nami while looking at Mary, who was holding onto Usopp with a smile. No. She's not. Actually, she's Mary, said Gohan. Mary. Asked Nami in confusion. Yes. She's going Mary replied Gohan with a smile. Nami and Usopp's eyes widened in shock as they both looked at Mary. Mary raised her head and said, Yo! And smiled like Gohan. Nami and Usopp's sweat dropped after seeing her smile just like Gohan. Now that I think about it, she looks like Kaya, said Usopp. Nami also looked at Mary's face closely and agreed with Usopp. But how did it happen? Did you do this, Gohan? Asked Nami. Yes and no. I just provided her with my key when I noticed she was absorbing my key, said Gohan. Can you leave to travel away from your original body? Gohan asked Mary. Yes. Now I can travel with you guys on the land too. I don't have to wait on the shore, said Mary in excitement. Usopp put Mary on his shoulder and said, Okay, Mary. From now on, Captain Usopp will take you on all kinds of adventures. We will fight dangerous monsters, fight bad guys, and find treasure. Declared Usopp while trying to look cool. Okay. Let's go. Shouted Mary as she raised her hands. 
Let's go back before the party ends, said Gohan. He grabbed Usopp and Nami while Mary sat on his shoulder. When they got back, there were a lot more people in Shandia. Some Shandians were dancing around the fire, and everyone else was having a good time eating and drinking. When everyone saw them coming, they welcomed them with a smile and offered them food and drinks. Luffy and the others noticed the presence of Mary and asked, Who's this little girl with you guys? Ask Sanji. You didn't kidnap another one, did you, Mr. Instructor? Asked Robin with an amused smile. Gohan's face twitched at her question. No. Look closely. Doesn't she look familiar? Asked Usopp. Everyone got closer to Mary and observed her face. She looks like Kaya, said Zoro. Yes, Luffy nodded his head with a smile. Yo. Greeted Mary while smiling like Gohan. Everyone turned towards Gohan, and Gohan just shrugged his shoulders. You didn't tell us that you have a child, Mr. Instructor, said Robin with a smile. How can I have a child? I am just 18, said Gohan in annoyance. Usopp started grinning and said, no. She's not Gohan's child. She's our crewmate who's been sailing with us since I joined this crew. Luffy started to smile, while the rest of them were confused. He ran towards Mary and picked her up. Mary. Shouted Luffy in delight. Yes. Captain, said Mary. Comment. Eight comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 52, Things are about to get interesting. Mary. But how? Zoro asked, confused. We should ask Mr. OK Instructor about it, said Robin. Gohan then started to explain, but while they were talking, people from the Sky Island were giving them weird looks. What's wrong with these guys? Did someone mix something in their meal or drink? Everyone started to discuss among themselves. Isa ran towards the straw hats and asked in worry, Big Brother Gohan. What happened to your friends? They are acting weird. Gohan looked around and realized that only the straw hats can hear Mary. Don't worry. They have always been like that. You know they are a little weird. Do you understand what I am talking about? Whispered Gohan and winked at Isa. A look of realization appeared on Isa's face, and she nodded her head. It must be hard for you to have crewmates like that, said Isa with pity. Yes, but it doesn't bother me that much because I am strong, said Gohan with a smile. Isa nodded her head with a smile but sighed afterward. She looked at Gohan and said with a sad expression, it would be great if I could become strong like you. Then I could protect our land. I was so scared for everyone, but I couldn't do anything, said Isa with teary eyes. Gohan put his hand on her head and started sending ki inside her body. Isa felt warmth in her body. Suddenly, a powerful aura burst out from her. Everyone stopped what they were doing and looked towards Isa. Before her haki could harm anyone, Luffy suppressed it with his own haki. Isa opened her eyes and looked at Gohan in surprise. What was that? She asked. Your power. Didn't you want to become strong? So I gave you a chance, said Gohan with a smile. Isa's eyes widened, and she jumped at Gohan and hugged him. Thank you, big brother Gohan. Don't thank me so early, you will have to work hard if you want to be able to protect this place. In fact, I want you to be able to protect the whole Sky Island, said Gohan. He said while looking towards Sanji and Luffy, Sanji. Help her with armament Haki, and Luffy. You will help her with Conqueror Haki. In fact, explain those things to Whipper and Ganfall as well. This would be helpful for the people of Sky Island, said Gohan. Luffy and Sanji nodded their heads and started explaining them about armament and conqueror hacking. Well. Sanji was explaining, but the same could not be said about Luffy. Where are you going? Asked Nami when she saw that Gohan was about to walk away. To eat. What else? You guys have been enjoying the party for a while. It's my turn now, said Gohan without looking back as he walked away. While Gohan was enjoying the food, Straw Hats were having fun with Mary as they took her to different places on the Sky Island. Two days later, Straw Hat saw everything the Sky Island has to offer. Gohan, Sanji, and Luffy also helped the people from Shandia and Skypiea in training. On the next day after the battle, Nami asked Gohan about the remaining gold and what they would do with that gold. Gohan told her that he already had a plan for that. The next day, Gohan found Nola and took the snake toward the Ark Maxim. He took all the gold from the ship and said to Nola, Nola. I want you to hide all that gold inside your stomach. You have to protect our treasure, do you understand? Asked Gohan. Nola nodded her head and swallowed all the gold. After that, Nola went away to hunt, and Gohan returned to Shandia. When Luffy and others saw him return, Nami asked, Did you hide it properly? Yes, Nola is going to protect our treasure for us, replied Gohan. But what if someone strong came here and took my gold? Asked Nami. Don't worry. Nola is going to be a lot stronger in a few months, said Gohan with a smile. Sanji's face twitched, Don't tell me, you. Yes, I did it, said Gohan while still smiling. You bastard. You are going to destroy this world if you go on like that, said Sanji, annoyed by Gohan's actions. 
but Gohan just ignored his nagging. Usopp, did you buy the dials? Asked Gohan. Yes. Mary and I bought everything we need, said Usopp, while Mary nodded her head. Now I will be the best pirate ship in the world, she said with a grin. Everyone looked at Luffy, then Mary, and thought, now she's acting like Luffy. Gohan looked towards Cricket and said, let's go, Cricket-san. I will drop you off at your house. Actually. I have decided to stay here. I don't have anything to do down there anyway, so it's better for me to stay here, said Cricket with a smile. Then what about Masura and Shaojo? Won't they be worried about you? Asked Luffy. I have already told them before coming here. Whether or not I find the City of Gold, I will be staying here on the Sky Island, replied Cricket. Since everyone's ready, let's get going, said Gohan. But shouldn't we first bring Mary's main body near the upper yard? Said Sanji. Don't worry about it, my main body is already outside the upper yard, said Mary. Who brought you here? Can you control your main body? Asked Usopp in shock. Of course, I can control it, that's my body after all. You are so stupid, Usopp, said Mary while giggling. Everyone started laughing after hearing her. Big Brother Gohan. Please come back soon, said Isa. Keep training and become strong. I will check on your progress when I come back, said Gohan with a smile. They left with Konis and Pegaya. When they reached Cloud's End, Konis called for the octopus balloon, which grabbed their ship and started their slow descent. Gohan looked at the octopus and said, you better not get deflated before reaching the surface of the sea, or... The octopus started sweating after hearing his warning. Our journey is about to get very interesting. Thought Gohan as he enjoyed the scenery. Comment. Four comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 53, Fohuhuhu. It took a long time for them to reach the surface of the ocean. Look. This guy got so small, said Luffy while showing them the balloon octopus. Gohan took the octopus from him. You did a good job. Now you can go back, said Gohan, and he threw him towards the direction of Sky Island. Okay. Everyone, time to get back to your training, said Gohan, and everyone sighed in defeat. Meanwhile in Jaya, Bellamy. I am quite disappointed. You have harmed my reputation. Now I want to hear a reason to allow you to live, said Doflamingo as he grabbed Bellamy's hair and lifted him up. I am sorry. But please give me another chance. We got beaten because that guy was too strong, said Bellamy with a nervous voice. Then it's your fault for offending him. I don't need people who don't know their limits, said Doflamingo with a smile. We fought him because he said that he's going to kill you, said Bellamy in desperation. Doflamingo let go of him and covered his own eyes with his hand and started laughing. Fuhua, huhu ha 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 ha. His conqueror Haki got unleashed upon everyone present. People started dropping down, but Doflamingo kept laughing loudly. Gohan. You have my attention now. I will be waiting for you, so don't disappoint me, he said and jumped towards the sky and disappeared. After a while, the straw hats reached the long ring long land island. Wow. It's a plane said Luffy. It's more than a plane, look closely, said Gohan. Those trees are so tall, said Usopp. Look, everyone. There's someone walking, said Chopper. Usopp looked closely and said in surprise, that's a bear. But why is it so tall? Let's go find out. This place looks interesting, said Luffy as he jumped down and started running away. Wait for me, shouted Usopp and jumped down as well. You guys go ahead, I will come after taking care of some annoying people, said Gohan as he looked towards a certain direction. Annoying people? Who? Is someone coming to cause trouble? asked Vivi. Gohan nodded his head and said, yes, but they are just a bunch of weaklings. So you guys go ahead. Everyone left the ship to explore the island except Gohan and Mary. Why didn't you go with them? asked Gohan while looking at Mary. I have never watched you guys fight against other pirates, so I want to see you fight, said Mary with anticipation. Gohan smiled and thought, well, it's not technically a fight. After a few minutes, they saw a large ship sailing towards them. Let's go, Mary, I don't want them to reach the island. It will be troublesome if they started running in different directions, said Gohan as he picked her up. On the foxy pirate's ship, Captain, there's a pirate ship ahead, said a man. Silver Fox took the binoculars from that man to have a look. Isn't that the famous straw hat pirates? Finally, I can get some strong crewmates, said Foxy with a smile. Some of the people on the deck started sweating from his remarks. But Captain Foxy, they have killed hundreds of people. There's a rumor that even they themselves don't remember how many people they have killed, said one of the men. Foxy got nervous but said with an awkward laugh, we don't have to worry. It's not like we are having a war with them. We are going to challenge them to a Davy backfight. Even if they are ruthless, they can't be that unreasonable. Right. But suddenly Gohan's voice rang out, and what if we are that unreasonable? Everyone turned their heads and saw Gohan sitting on the mast. Mary was sitting beside him. Poisonous tongue, 
Gohan. Stay away from him yes, even his breath is poisonous. Everyone started backing away, some people even thought about jumping into the water. Gohan's smile froze, he gritted his teeth and muttered, Smoker. You guys. I just wanted to have some fun with you, but now you have offended me, said Gohan. He appeared before Foxy and knocked him out with a punch. Captain Foxy, shouted Foxy Pirates. Gohan started the beatdown of the Foxy Pirates. You guys are lucky that Mary is here, or you would have died because of that bastard smoker, muttered Gohan in frustration. He left some people so that they could sail away. I don't want to see you guys in the Grand Line again. Do you get it, warned Gohan. Five men who were lucky to not get knocked out by him nodded their heads in fear and started sailing away. Gohan and Mary appeared on the island. Now, where should we go, asked Gohan, but Mary didn't reply. Gohan looked at Mary and saw that she looked upset for some reason. What happened, Mary, asked Gohan in confusion. It was no fun at all. We got there, and you made everyone sleep. Fights are supposed to be exciting, full of drama and emotions, said Mary as she was indignant. Gohan's face twitched, and he asked, who told you that? Usopp told me. He also told me that you like to spoil the fun for everyone. He was right. You are no fun, accused Mary with an angry face, but her expression made her look even cuter. Gohan bent down and pinched her cheeks. Sorry for ruining your fun, but I promise you that the next fight you will see will be the best fight ever, said Gohan with a smile. Oof. I will believe it when I see it, said Mary with a pout. Suddenly Gohan sensed someone. Hmm. So he's on his way here, said Gohan. Mary looked towards the direction where Gohan was looking and asked, Who's that? That person feels strong. He is way stronger than the captain. Gohan got surprised by this and asked, You can sense him. Mary nodded her head. What else can you do, asked Gohan. I can control my main body and protect it by covering it with ki. I don't know if I can do anything else, said Mary with a thoughtful look. That's great, said Gohan. Yes. I am great. The great going Mary, said Mary while looking proud of herself. Looks like I will have to talk with Usopp, thought Gohan. Okay. Let's get going, we have to welcome our guest, said Gohan with a smile. Comment. 8 comments. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 54, Why Should I Fear You? Gohan put Mary on his shoulder and started walking towards Luffy and the others. On the way, they saw some weird looking animals. Everyone looks so funny, commented Mary. Hmm, it looks like everything is elongated on this island, said Gohan. After a few minutes, they saw Luffy and the others. They were talking to an old man who was sitting on a tall horse. Gohan. Mary. We were waiting for you, said Luffy. They started telling him about Tanjit and his horse, Shelly. Gohan, can you take Tanjit San and Shelly to meet their tribe? If you take them, they will be able to meet their friends in no time, requested Usopp. No need for that. Someone is coming to help him, said Gohan while looking towards the sea. Everyone else looked towards the sea and saw nothing, so they got confused. But Usopp looked closely, and his eyes widened in shock. Someone is riding a bicycle on the water. Said Usopp in confusion, as he couldn't believe what he just saw. What? How can anyone ride a bicycle on the water? Asked Lily, Vivi, in disbelief. They started walking towards the shore and started to see a silhouette of a person riding a bicycle. Amazing. Someone really is riding a bicycle on the ocean, said Chopper with stars in his eyes. Just when they got a clear view of the person who was cycling, Robin started to tremble in fear. After seeing her state, Gohan sighed. He got beside her and whispered, Why are you shaking like a leaf? Are you trying to embarrass me by acting like a coward? Looks like you need some extra training. Robin stopped trembling and looked at Gohan in horror. Mr. Instructor. You are misunderstanding. I was just feeling a little cold, she tried to explain. Gohan sighed and said, don't worry. He is not a threat to us. Even if all three of them come here, it won't make any difference, said Gohan with an assuring smile. Robin couldn't close her mouth after his statement. Aokiji stopped a few meters away from them and asked, are you guys going somewhere? But before anyone could say anything, Luffy ran towards him and asked, hey mister. How did you do that? Can you teach me? Asked Luffy in anticipation. Aokiji sweat dropped after witnessing Luffy's behavior and said, No. It cannot be taught. Luffy got disappointed with Aokiji's answer, but when he noticed how tall Aokiji was, he asked, You are so tall, mister. Are you also from this island? Hey, Tanjit san Is he one of your friends? Asked Luffy. Tanjit looked at Aokiji for a few seconds and replied, No. I don't remember seeing him. He is one of the three admirals of the marines, Admiral Aokiji, said Gohan with a smile. Everyone except Robin got shocked by the revelation. So that's why he feels so strong, said Luffy with the look of realization. Everyone except Gohan and Luffy started sweating with a serious expression. Tanjit-san. 
You can ask him to help you, he is a marine, after all, said Gohan, but Aokiji could feel the sarcasm in his tone. Tanjit hesitatingly looked at Aokiji and asked Gohan, but isn't he an admiral? They are so important. Is it all right to waste his time on such a small matter? Gohan's smile widened as if he was expecting Tanjit to ask that. Don't worry. He is not a god or a noble. Look. He is breathing the same air as us. And marines like to portray themselves as the savior of this world. Helping you is his duty, said Gohan with a mocking smile. The straw had started to sweat even more after hearing Gohan's sarcastic remarks. Aokiji frowned after hearing him and said, it looks like your new moniker does suit you more than the previous one. Suddenly, the whole atmosphere changed after Aokiji's words. Anyone could tell that the straw hats were trying hard not to laugh, while Gohan was trying hard not to kill Aokiji. Gohan gritted his teeth and said, two times. The expressions on the straw hats' faces changed for the worse. It was not our fault. We didn't even laugh this time, argued Sanji. Gohan didn't look at him and said, three times. Sanji wanted to argue more, but Robin closed his mouth with her devil fruit ability. By that time, the others had a look of despair. Tanjit mustered up some courage and asked Aokiji for help, and Aokiji froze the sea so that Tanjit could reach the island he wanted to go to. After Tanjit left, Aokiji turned his attention towards the straw hats. He looked at them with a confused face and said, I have heard of your accomplishments, but I am confused. You guys are powerful by the standard of East Blue, but the report said that you guys defeated Crocodile and destroyed the Baroque works, which is impossible with the strength you guys possess. He creased his eyebrows and said, even after knowing my identity, only half of you have a look of fear, while some of you are just nervous or full of anticipation for a fight. What's even more surprising is that I don't feel a single ounce of fear from your captain and you, poisonous tongue Gohan. Gohan started smiling again and asked, why do I have to fear you, Mr. Admiral? There it is again, the same tone. I can sense that you are the weakest among them. So you must have eaten a very special devil fruit for you to be so arrogant. But let me tell you. Devil fruit abilities are nothing in front of the true power, said Aokiji with a bored look. Gohan looked at Luffy and asked, What do you think, Captain? Do you want to test the strength of an admiral? Luffy started grinning and replied, Of course. Oi oi. Are you kidding me? Do you have a death wish? Asked Aokiji with a bewildered face. But Luffy started walking towards him without any hesitation. Is it okay for you to let the captain fight this man? What if something happened to the captain? Asked Mary in worry. Don't worry. Since it's not a fair fight for Luffy, I won't let our captain die, said Gohan with a smile. Everyone turned their heads towards him in surprise. Gohan looked at their surprised faces and asked, Why are you guys looking at me like that? I care about my friends too. Do you guys think I am some kind of demon? Everyone nodded their heads immediately, but shook them afterwards. Bastards, muttered Gohan with an annoyed face. Comment. 15 comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 55, This is Bullshit. Captain. You don't have to hold back, go all out. Show him our true strength, said Gohan. Luffy nodded his head and continued to walk towards Aokiji. Listen, boy. I respect your grandfather, but I will not go easy on you for his sake, warned Aokiji. Luffy frowned but didn't say anything. This guy knows Luffy's grandfather. Said Yusuf in confusion. He must be someone important to be known by a marine admiral, commented Lily, Vivi. Everyone else nodded their heads. Luffy suddenly appeared before Aokiji and attacked him with a punch. He's very fast. His strength has increased by a lot. Now he should be around a rear admiral level, thought Aokiji in surprise and crossed his arms to protect himself. Boom. Luffy's fist connected with Aokiji's arms, and he got pushed back by almost 30 meters. His physical strength is better than a rear admiral, and he can use armament hacky. Then it should be safe to assume that he can also use observation hacky too. But the real question is how the hell he is able to hide his strength from my observation hacky? And how can a boy who is sailing for less than six months know hacky? I have to get the answers to these questions from him, contemplated Aokiji with a serious expression. Stop spacing out, mister. Suddenly, Luffy's voice sounded next to him. Gum gum. Hammer. Shouted Luffy as he attacked Aokiji like he was holding a hammer. Aokiji blocked his attack with his hands, but his legs got buried under the icy floor. Luffy wanted to attack him again, but Aokiji used his ice to freeze his arm. Luffy jumped back and looked at his frozen arm. He clenched his fist, and his arm got free from the ice. Do you really think just because you know some basic hacky, you can hurt me? Asked Aokiji with a smile. Luffy also smiled after hearing him and said, I know this much is not enough. He clenched his fist and gritted his teeth. His strength is increasing again, thought Aokiji as his eyes widened. Luffy's body started to turn reddish, and his hair turned spiky. His body also started to turn a little muscular. Ham HAAA! Shouted Luffy, and shockwaves started to spread from his body. Oi oi! 
What the hell is this? A devil fruit transformation that took his strength to a vice admiral level. Muttered Aokiji in disbelief. He looked towards the rest of the straw hats and saw that they were not surprised by their captain's strength. These guys should be hiding their real strength as well. How troublesome, now I have to take them seriously, thought Aokiji while feeling troubled. Luffy took the fighting stance like Vegeta. Let's have fun, said Luffy with a smile. Gum gum. Muttered Luffy and suddenly appeared beside Aokiji. Bullet. Before Aokiji could even turn his head, he got punched by Luffy. He got sent towards the seawater, but before his body could touch the water, he froze it. He stood up and wiped the blood that was coming from his mouth and thought, he is way faster than a normal vice admiral. As for his physical strength, he is Garp San's grandson, after all. Aokiji appeared before Luffy and kicked him. This time it was Luffy's turn to fly. After flying for a few meters, Luffy dropped in front of Gohan and others. He stood up while rubbing his chest in pain. That hurts, he shouted. But Aokiji wasn't looking at him. He was looking at his leg in surprise. Even if his haki got a boost after his power up, it's not at the advanced level. So why do I feel pain when I kicked him? Thought Aokiji in shock. But he didn't have much time to think about it as Luffy was already upon him. Gum gum. Super bazooka, shouted Luffy as he attacked Aokiji head on, but Aokiji also punched forward. Boom. The sound of an explosion rang out, and the ice beneath their feet started to crack. I am not done yet, shouted Luffy and attacked again. Gum gum. Super Gatling. Aokiji didn't back down and fended off all of Luffy's attacks. Luffy stopped attacking since it was not working. Straw Hat Luffy. You are very strong, but your hacky is not strong enough to face a person like me. Let me show you what advanced hacky feels like, said Aokiji. He appeared before Luffy and punched towards his head. Luffy dodged his fist narrowly but suddenly got sent flying away and dropped to the ground. Everyone was shocked by this. He dodged it, right? Asked Sanji. Everyone else nodded their heads. That bastard, thought Gohan and clicked his tongue. Everyone turned towards him. Do you know what happened just now? Asked Zoro. He pushed his hacky from his fist to hit Luffy, said Gohan. What? Then isn't it like a key blast? Asked Usopp in shock. No. I think it's more complicated. Don't worry. I will try to find out everything about it later, assured Gohan. Everyone nodded their heads and turned their attention towards the ongoing fight. Now the fight was dominated by Aokiji. Luffy was getting punched left and right and couldn't defend himself. How does it feel? This is the peak level of hacking. You know I was just here to see Nico Robin, but I changed my mind. Now I will send you guys to impel down because you guys are too dangerous, said Aokiji and punched Luffy hard in the gut. Luffy grabbed his stomach and vomited a mouthful of blood. Luffy. Shouted Chopper in panic. Mary also grabbed Gohan's clothes in worry. Zoro took out his swords while Sanji took out his toothpick. But just as they were about to go after Aokiji, Gohan said, Stop. You guys are not his opponents. I will take care of this. But just as he was about to step forward, Conqueror's Haki burst out from Luffy. Aokiji jumped away from Luffy. Are you kidding me? This guy also has Conqueror's Haki. He shouted in disbelief. Even though I don't have advanced Haki, it doesn't mean I don't have the strength to fight you, said Luffy as he stood up again. Hmm. H-A-A-A-A-A-A-A. He shouted towards the sky. Then the ice floor started to crack, and small blocks of ice started to levitate. Gohan was trembling as he looked at the form in front of him in disbelief. He pointed his index finger at Luffy and muttered while gritting his teeth, what's the meaning of this bullshit, dot. Comment. 8 comments. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 56, Beast Man. Gohan was burning with jealousy. Doesn't that transformation look like Super Saiyan 4? Who the hell is the real Saiyan here? He thought while gritting his teeth. But no one noticed his frustration, everyone was marveling over Luffy's new transformation. Luffy looks so different now, said Vivi in surprise. That bastard has gone beyond hockey mode, said Zoro with a grin. That means we can also go beyond it, commented Sanji with a smile. Wow. Captain became so strong. Said Mary. Hockey mode too. Beast man. Announced Luffy as he took a fighting stance. Aokiji was so shocked that his eyes were almost about to pop out. His strength has reached an admiral's level. What the hell is wrong with this guy? I have to end it quickly. There's no way we can allow this guy to sail any longer, he thought with a serious expression. He appeared before Luffy and threw a punch at him, but Luffy just grabbed his fist. Aren't you using that hacky technique anymore? Asked Luffy with a confused look. Aokiji was shocked by how easily Luffy had stopped his punch. It was my mistake to show you that technique. Now, I finally understand how dangerous you guys are, so I will not be showing any more of the advanced hacky techniques, stated Aokiji. Luffy got disappointed after hearing that, while Zoro and Sanji clicked their tongues. Luffy then pulled Aokiji towards himself, 
but Aokiji raised his hands to protect himself from the possible punch. However, Luffy gave him an uppercut and sent him flying into the sky. He is faster than me. How is that possible, thought Aokiji while still in the air. On the ground, Luffy looked at Aokiji's figure descending to the ground and pulled both his hands back. Gum gum. Supersonic Gatling. Shouted Luffy. Luffy's hands disappeared, and Aokiji started getting hit by invincible punches all over his body. His punches are too fast for me to dodge, and even though I am using advanced armament hacky, it hurts like hell, thought Aokiji. Luffy's hands disappeared, said Chopper in shock. No, they didn't disappear, he is attacking so fast that it looks like they have disappeared, commented Usopp. Everyone turned towards him. Can you see his hands, Usopp? Asked Sanji, as he and the others couldn't see Luffy's hands. I can only see some blurs occasionally. I have never seen anyone move that fast before, replied Usopp. But the most shocked one was Robin. He is holding his own against an admiral. That means. Gohan was telling the truth, he can take them on by himself, thought Robin and clenched her fist in excitement. Suddenly, Gohan frowned as he looked at Luffy. Just then, Luffy's attack stopped, and his body started to shrink. What's going on? Asked Vivi in worry. Looks like he hasn't mastered his new transformation yet, commented Gohan. Luffy's body shrunk so much that he looked like a child. Oh shit. Shouted Luffy in a childish voice. Aokiji finally landed on the ground and took a deep breath. His clothes were damaged because of taking all those punches. You scared me a little there, but it looks like you haven't mastered that form yet. Anyways, it's about time to end this, said Aokiji and threw a punch at Kid Luffy. But suddenly someone grabbed his hand. You marines sure like to abuse kids, said Gohan as he had appeared beside them and grabbed Aokiji's arm. How did he appear here without me noticing him? Even Kizaru can't get near me like that. How fast is this guy, thought Aokiji in fear. He tried to pull his hand back, but he couldn't get free from Gohan's grasp. So he tried to use his devil fruit ability, ice. But Gohan didn't let him and let out a burst of ki which pushed Aokiji away. Aokiji landed a few meters away from Gohan. What kind of power is that? It was so strong. Hmm. I can't sense it anymore. Who exactly are you, Gohan, thought Aokiji as he now felt hesitant to continue the fight. That was a great showing. Captain. Even I am jealous of your new transformation, said Gohan with a smile, and Luffy just grinned in reply. Hey, Mr. Admiral. Why don't we end this here? You were not here to fight us anyway, said Gohan. Aokiji frowned, but after thinking for a bit, he let out a sigh and replied, fine with me. I was just here to see what Nico Robin was up to after joining you guys. But let me warn you, she'll betray you guys like all those people she has been with in the past, said Aokiji while looking towards Robin. Robin bit her lips and her face turned pale. Gohan started grinning and walked towards Aokiji. Straw Hat started to sweat since they knew that Gohan was angry. When you are an eight-year-old child and the whole world is after your life, you don't really have a choice, do you? You, of all people who had witnessed a genocide and didn't do anything to stop it, have no right to question her morals, said Gohan. Aokiji's expression changed. How did he know that? He thought in anger. You. He tried to say something, but Gohan appeared before him and punched him in the gut. Aokiji's eyes widened, he grabbed his stomach and vomited a mouthful of blood. What? He thought and dropped to his knees. It was just a punch. So why do I feel so powerless, thought Aokiji and tried to raise his head, but he was not able to do that. If you say even a single word now, it will become the last word of your life, warned Gohan and started walking towards the crew. Aokiji didn't try to say anything because he was sure that Gohan would kill him for sure. Okay, everyone. Say thank you to Mr. Admiral for entertaining us, and let's continue our journey said Gohan while walking towards them. Everyone's sweat dropped after hearing that, but Chopper asked, should I treat his wounds? No need. He's just a little shaken, that's all, said Gohan. Everyone got on board and started waving their hands towards Aokiji. Goodbye, Mr. Admiral. Please take care of yourself, shouted Chopper. Aokiji finally was able to look up and wanted to cry after hearing that. Take care. You guys are the reason that I am in this state, he thought with a resigned look on his face. Comment. 17 comments. Vote. Zero left. Chapter 57, Troublesome Grandson. Straw Hat started to sail away from Long Ring Long Land Island. Was it alright to humiliate that guy like that? Asked Sanji while looking at Gohan. Yes. What if all three admirals decided to come after us? Asked Usopp. Gohan looked at them with a smile and replied, Do you think they will want anyone to know about this incident? For the world government and marines, their reputation is above everything. This is only the first half of the Grand Line. What do you think will happen if anyone knows about the defeat of an admiral by a rookie pirate crew? Asked Gohan. But what's that got to do with the admirals coming after us? Asked Lily, Vivi. Gohan replied, 
all three admirals going after a single pirate crew is a major event. The whole world will turn upside down after knowing about that. If Morgans knows about it, then the marines will be in big trouble. And they can't send all the admirals to this part of the Grand Line anyway because they need an admiral to maintain the power balance in the new world, explained Gohan. Who is Morgans? Asked Nami. Gohan replied, Big News Morgans is the president of the World Economy newspaper and one of the emperors of the underworld. I don't know anything else about him. Anyways, that's why I don't think the marines will send all three admirals after us. Everyone sighed in relief after hearing that. Robin stepped forward and said, Luffy. Gohan. Thank you for protecting me. I don't think I would have survived today if not for you guys. Luffy started grinning and said, You finally called us by our names. Everyone else had a smile on their faces as they looked at Robin. Looks like someone is finally ready to join our crew, said Gohan. Welcome to the crew, Robin. Said Nami as she hugged Robin. Robin started tearing up and returned the hug. Yosh. Let's party. Yes. Shouted everyone, but Gohan interrupted, wait. There's something important to do before the party, he said. Boo boo. Usopp, Chopper, and Mary started booing in protest. Gohan ignored them and threw something towards Nami. Nami caught it and asked in surprise, Devil Fruit? Isn't this the Rumble Rumble Fruit? She asked. Yes, do you want to eat it? Asked Gohan. Nami got shocked, isn't this thing super rare? Wouldn't it be a waste to eat it? And why me? Why not let Sanji eat it? Asked Nami. Because you are the most suitable one, and you also get the least amount of time to train because of all the navigation work. This will give a boost in power, and you already like to electrocute your enemies, so it's perfect for you, replied Gohan. Nami looked at everyone else, and they nodded their heads in approval. She took out a knife and cut out a small piece of the devil fruit and swallowed it like a pill. The rest of the devil fruit users of the crew were dumbfounded by this. Nami looked at their expressions and said with a smirk, only an idiot would want to taste that thing. Why didn't I think of that? Cried Lily, Vivi, feeling depressed. Nami started releasing lightning from her fingers with a smile. Meanwhile, on Long Ring Long Land Island, Aokiji finally started to feel better. He took out a Denden Mushi and called Sengoku. Sengoku speaking. Who is this? Asked Sengoku. It's me, Kyuzen. Replied Aokiji. Did something bad happen? Asked Sengoku in doubt. How did you know that? Asked Aokiji. Because whenever I am having a discussion with Tsuru, all I am hearing is bad news. So tell me what happened. Asked Sengoku in irritation. What an unlucky duo, thought Aokiji and replied, I had an encounter with the Straw Hat Pirates. Those guys again. I've had enough of them, send them to Impel Down. I will take care of Garp, you don't have to worry about him, said Sengoku in frustration. Aokiji felt the pain in his gut after hearing that. That bastard. I didn't even have the time to use armament Haki to protect myself, he thought and said, they're not here anymore, they have left. What? You didn't catch them. Are you being lazy again? I am warning you, if you didn't catch those pirates, I will send you to Marijoy's, shouted Sengoku in anger. Calm down, Fleet Admiral, I tried to catch them, but I failed, said Aokiji. You failed. Do you think I am a fool? If you really wanted to catch them, it would have been impossible for them to run away, stated Sengoku. I didn't say they ran away, Fleet Admiral, said Aokiji. Sengoku froze after hearing that, while Tsuru's eyes widened in shock. What happened? Tell me in detail, ordered Tsuru. Aokiji then told them about everything in detail. Sengoku started sweating after hearing about the battle. How is this possible? They are just rookies, to have that kind of strength is illogical, he said in disbelief. But they do have that kind of strength, and I have tasted it firsthand, commented Aokiji. But it doesn't feel right? And the ability to hide their real strength and being able to unleash it at will. It's hard to believe, said Sengoku. From my observation, I think they found a new way to practice Haki or someone has taught them that method, said Aokiji. But that's just your speculations, and what about Gohan? What kind of power did he use to beat you with a single punch? Asked Sengoku. I don't know, Fleet Admiral, but he is very fast, and he can hide his power so well that it feels like he is just an ordinary person. He knew my identity and wasn't afraid of me at all, as if he knew I was not a threat to him, said Aokiji with a serious expression. Okay. Come back to headquarters, and remember you didn't meet the Straw Hats. Nobody is allowed to know about your defeat, said Tsuru. Aokiji agreed and cut the call. What do you think we should do, Tsuru? Asked Sengoku. Tsuru thought for a bit and replied, We can't do anything about it right now. Let them cause trouble again so that we can raise their bounties. Then those so-called emperors and their followers will take care of them for us, said Tsuru. But what if they cause trouble for us? Asked Sengoku. Just tell the marines in the paradise not to engage in any kind of conflicts against the straw hats. 
Once they reach the new world, they will either get eliminated or take down an emperor for us, said Tsuru. What if they join one of them? Asked Sengoku in worry. He is Garp's grandson. Do you think he will listen to anyone's order? Asked Tsuru with a smile. Sengoku nodded his head in agreement. But suddenly got angry and shouted, It's all that bastard's fault. He didn't teach his grandson properly, and now his grandson is causing trouble for me. Tsuru ignored Sengoku's outburst and left his office. Note, hey guys. Someone suggested me to create Patreon account, but I don't think my writing quality is good enough for that. But I leaving my PayPal ID below, any kind donation will be appreciated. PayPal ID, kai.sensai0123 at gmail.com P.S. Book will be continued even without any kind of donations. Comment. 11 comments. Vote. 0 left. Chapter 58, Sea Train, Frog, and a Cat. The Straw Hats returned to their usual routine after the small incident. After an unknown amount of time, while Luffy was eating with Chopper and Usopp, he shouted, There's a big frog swimming freestyle. How can a frog swim freestyle? Usopp asked in shock. Yosh. Let's catch him. Said Luffy. They were about to chase the frog, but Gohan stopped them. Wait. There's something coming, he said. Everyone turned their heads toward where Gohan was looking and saw something approaching. What the hell is that? That ship is moving so fast. Commented Usopp and Lily. That frog is standing in its way, pointed Mary. Everyone turned their heads toward the frog. Oi! You idiot frog, get away from there! Shouted Sanji. But the frog stood up and spread his arms to stop the sea train. Just as it was about to get hit, Lily used her devil fruit ability to push the frog away from the track. Everyone sighed in relief. Good job, Vivi, said Luffy, but Gohan punched him on the head and said, It's Lily. When are you going to understand? What was that ship? It didn't have any sails, but it was moving so fast, said Usopp. There was smoke coming out of it, added Chopper. While everyone discussed the strange ship, Mary was still looking in the direction where the sea train had gone. She turned around, raised both her hands, and declared, I have decided. I want to look like that ship. Everyone stopped talking and looked at Mary in surprise. Gohan sweat dropped after hearing her declaration. He walked towards her and said, No. You can't look like that. Mary started to tremble after hearing him. She pointed her finger at him and shouted, Gohan. You want to ruin my fun again? I will fight you. She ran towards him and started hitting him with her small fists. Everyone looked awkwardly at her while Gohan's face started twitching. We can't let you become like that because it's not a ship, said Gohan with a sigh. Mary stopped hitting him, looked at him, and said, I don't care. I want to look like that, stated Mary. Gohan looked towards everyone else for help, but they turned their heads away. How about this, if you forget about looking like that thing, I will teach you how to fly, said Gohan with a smile. Really? You're not lying, right? Asked Mary. No, I promise, replied Gohan. Yay. I am going to fly. Mary raised her hands again and started running around in delight. That's cheating. I want to fly too. Shouted Luffy with an angry face, but he got ignored by Gohan. Let's go toward that lighthouse, said Gohan. Hmm. Why is there a lighthouse in the middle of nowhere? Commented Nami with a confused look on her face. When they were about to go towards the lighthouse, they saw that the frog from earlier was swimming towards them. Is he coming to thank us? Asked Chopper. I don't think so, said Zoro. The frog was about to tackle the ship, but Luffy knocked him out. Yosh. Let's barbecue him, said Luffy. No way. Shouted Nami and Lily. Chopper, treat his injuries, said Nami. Chopper started treating the frog as they sailed toward the lighthouse. Just as they got close to the tower, they saw a house. There's also a house here, said Sanji. Gohan, do you know about that strange ship? Asked Usopp. Yes, that strange ship we saw earlier was a train. My world also had those, but they run on the land in my world. And those are way more advanced than that train we saw, replied Gohan. As they were talking, a small girl walked out of the cabin and started staring at them. Everyone looked at her silently, then suddenly the girl shouted, Granny. Pirates. What? Really, chimney. All right. Hold on. Said an old woman and started to call for help, but she was too drunk and forgot why she had made the call. Straw hat sweat dropped after witnessing that. Kokoro suddenly noticed Yakazuna, who was unconscious. Yakazuna. What have you done to him? She shouted in anger. We stopped him from colliding with that train, so he was angry and wanted to hit our ship. That's why our captain knocked him out, replied Gohan with a smile. Oh. That's okay then, said Kokoro as her expression returned to normal. Excuse me. I have noticed that there are lots of scars on his body. This is not the first time he tried to collide with that train, right? Asked Chopper. Yes, he has been doing it for many years, 
replied Kokoro. Yes, he is trying to test his strength against the sea train. He is very troublesome, said Chimney with irritation. Anyways, I am Kokoro, and she's Chimney, introduced Kokoro. And this is my cat Gom, said Chimney. Everyone looked at the rabbit introduced as a cat and sweat dropped. I am Luffy, and I am going to be the Pirate King, Luffy introduced himself. After that, everyone else also introduced themselves. Where are you heading to? Asked Kokoro. Our log post points west, replied Nami. That means you are going to Water 7, the train you saw actually came from there. That place is called the City of Water and is famous for its shipbuilding, said Kokoro. We know that already. Gohan told us about it before we entered the Grand Line, said Sanji. Do you know someone who can help us upgrade our ship? Asked Usopp. Yes, let me write a letter of recommendation. Just give that letter to the guy named Iceberg, and he will help you with your ship, said Kokoro. She then gave them a letter and a map of Water 7. It takes about one week for the rest of the log post to reset, so you guys can take your time and see the city, informed Kokoro. What should we do with him? Asked Chopper while pointing at Yakazuna. Just leave him here. Me and Chimney will also go to Water 7 soon, so if we meet, I will take you guys to a nice bar for a drink, said Kokoro. They said goodbye to Kokoro and Chimney and started to sail toward Water 7. One week. That's a problem, thought Gohan. Comment. 13 comments.